big outfield. It's, uh, the pitch is cut about two thirds, as we look at it, away from the centre of the very large square here at the Upton Steel County ground. So the short boundary is on the meat side of the ground, so to speak. I would say it was probably about 60, 65 yards on that side, something like 80, 85 on t'other. In goes Carvela, some bowls to Patel, who leans forward, drops it out into the offside, sees that Pajara has got a little bit of ground to make up to his left, calls for the quick single, and the batsmen cross and make their ground comfortably. Well, good to see Eric Carvelos in the side. He was the leading wicket taker for Sussex last season in the championship, took 35 wickets. Um, and delighted for Harry because um, he's become a dad for the first time. So I think, uh, uh, correct me if I, I think his uh, young child is called Lola, saw her last week. So many, many congratulations to, uh, to, uh, to Harry. The new dad comes in and bowls to Harris, full. Harris doesn't exactly dig it out, just walks into it and pushes it back up to mid on. I believe we are now connected on stream and hopefully uh, coordinated as well. So if uh, it is for the first time that you're hearing us, a very, very good morning to you from the Upton Steel County ground. Richard Ray and Adrian Harms from BBC Radio's Leicester and Sussex, your commentators for the game. Carvelas with his shirt hanging out of his trousers, comes in and bowls, tucks up Harris a little bit as he steps across, and Harris, again, looking to turn it down too long, leg thumps into the pad, doesn't get anything on it, trickles out towards sort of leg gully, running around is John Simpson, Sussex's new skipper this mm. se this season. Bit of experience and... Yeah, um, and uh, with all due canny, respect... Canny man. Yeah, with all due respect to Ollie Carter, I think Sussex needed a change behind the stumps. Which was something Paul Farber is clearly right. Not to say Carter won't be a good wicket keeper in time. Cavellas is in. That's a straight delivery. Again from around the wicket. Harris just again a little bit of movement forward as he blocks it back down the pitch towards Carvelas, who picks it up and uh, lobs it to his skipper to do a bit of polishing. He does a little bit with the ball, Eric Carvelas. He's just a little bit quicker than he looks. Um, and does you know does nip the ball around? Whether he can get this kookaburra ball to nip around is is, is another issue. Yeah, the early overs crucial. Everybody's been telling me with this kookaburra. Carvelas is in, drops a little bit short, and again Harris on the back foot, comfortable enough, turning it off his legs out towards deep-ish backward square. Seals, who was down there for the first delivery, then went across to point. I'm not quite sure who that is coming into field. Does so successfully. I think it was Danny Lamb. Who Danny ran, Lamb. Who ran up. They all look very similar with their caps on the Sussex lads. Very um, smart they look as well. Oh, they do. Na Navy caps. Ex-Lancashire, of course, Danny mm. Lamb. End of the second over. No alarms as yet for the Foxes openers. Rishi Patel has five. Marcus Harris has a couple. Leicester Sharp, two overs, seven without loss. Yes, I was just going to say exactly the same. I mean, it looks a, it looks a decent track. Um, from a Sussex perspective, there would have been a debate, I guess, about who would replace Ollie Robinson in this game. Uh, they've gone with Eric Cavalas. Sean Hunt is here with the team and would have been in consideration, the tall left arm. And that was the only thing that I was thinking, that Sussex's attack is, uh, you know, four seamers, all right armers. Well, Seals is quick around the wicket bowls and Clip there's a lovely looking shot by Marcus Harris. That's gonna race away towards the boundary. It may go for four. Yes it does. That's beautifully timed. Just slightly over pitch from Jaden Seals and fine player Harris just clipped the ball away through mid wicket for four runs. Nothing Pujara could do about that. Um, so I wonder what they might have gone with Hunt. I might have gone with two seamers and perhaps left one of the spinners out, but you know we're gonna leave James Coles out the way he's playing. So the only possibility might have been Jack Carson. So it's always difficult with these early season matches to, to juggle your attack, but Sussex settled on Carvelas um, to replace Ollie Robinson. Jaden Sills coming around the wicket to the left-handed Harris, who waits and is solidly fought a ball of good length. Sills fills off his own bowling, and there is no run. Imp impressive stats last year, Eric Carvelas. I say he was the leading wicket taker at 35 wickets at 22 was very respectable. It's a good return, isn't it? Yeah, did it he, is. Did he play most, obviously, most games, most championship yeah, games? Yeah, well, he, he played eight. That's so he only played, he only played just yeah. over half. Um, 
I mean, Sussex have got a, a revolving door, as as most counties has, of sort of overseas during the uh, during the season. Now, what's happening here? Um, somebody's wondering if we've got a new bat. Is going to be Marcus Harris. I wonder if his bat's just uh, cracked or s or something. Yes, yes it is. Oh, and, it <laughs> and it comes a selection Already. of bats. Brought out by Sol Budinger. And this is just twelfth man for the Australian Harris. And, and, and Danny Lamb and uh, three of the Sussex lads, James Coles, Tom Clark, they're talking to Rishi Patel about his bat. They're probably saying, oh, that looks a nice bit of timber. Of course, uh, bats very much in, in the news at the moment because of what happened at uh, Essex. I um, don't know what the fallout, has that, uh, fallout from that has been, but one of the Essex players came out with a too big bat. I missed too, that. Too wide. Well, they see that in uh, the game this week. That in the game with which they won right. uh, last week against Nottinghamshire, and there was some suggestion that they might actually lose points. So I haven't actually heard what happened from that. Uh, in comes Seals round the wicket, bowls to Harris, who's right in behind this pace down the offside of the track. There is no run fielded by uh, Seals. We've become used to seeing the umpires sort of use their, their sort of um, gauge to, to run up and down the bats to make sure that they're yes. the right size. And apparently, one of them at Essex wasn't. But uh, serious repercussions were threatened. And did uh, did said batsman make any runs, or did they find out before I, I, he? I'd have to check. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll keep an eye on that. Um, as Seals, in his second over, runs towards us. Harris has got a change of bat, and he Ooh. tries beautifully through the covers for four. Nice He's bat. Su <laughs> such an elegant batsman is. Uh, uh, Marcus Harris and he didn't need to thump that he just timed it beautifully through the covers and as Richard was saying it's a it's a big outfield here at Grace Road and it was beautifully played away Seal was just over pitching and uh, you're off to a decent start here 15 without loss into the third over Harris goes into double figures he's on 10 yeah, famous last words but everything looks so neat about Harris mm. just sort of compact and doesn't try and over hit anything this is his second spell here, Richard. It is, it is. You're, you're right. He had a very, very good spell three years ago. He did th th four centuries, certainly three. Mm. Could have been four. Seals again around the wicket bowls, and Harris is four players into the offside. He thinks about a single and then does decide there is a single, and there was a comfortable single uh, to mid off. He goes to 11, the total to 16. Uh, well, I mean, he's sort of in around the Australian squad. I wonder, with sort of David Warner's retirement from Test cricket, whether he's, you know, whether he's next in line, Marcus Harris. Well, weight of runs will make his case. He knows that. Obviously, had a couple of years at Gloucestershire, but I think he's pretty pleased to be back at Leicestershire, albeit for a brief period. He too is a new dad, actually, and little Max has come with him, and uh, and and of course, uh, Mrs. Harris. Mm. They have accompanied him to Europe. The UK. Seals comes over the wicket to Rishi Patel, who drives without timing. He just shakes his right hand. I think that rather came off the bottom of the bat. But the end of the over, and Leicestershire, having been asked to bat this morning by Sussex, are 16 without loss. Marcus Harris is on 11. Rishi Patel is on 5. Lots of ways of getting through to Richard and I. You can uh, tweet at foxcoms, C O M S 24. You can email foxcoms24 at gmail.com or Sussex supporters will be familiar with Sussex Cricket at bbc.co.uk or you can tweet at BBC Sussex Sport. One way or t'other, your messages will get through. It'd be love to have your company uh, over the next four days. Usually, a pretty good game between these two yeah. sides. It's been a, an awful lot to talk about in, in recent years, one way or another. Hopefully, it'll be the same again over the next few days. Four slips go down as Carvelas is in over the wicket now to Harris who just leans forward and off stump blocks it back past the bowler very straight up towards mid off where Jaden Seals is the fielder slightly feisty last year wasn't it in that game down it, at Hove just before you won the one day cup correct yes it was uh, very near Leicestershire made a record fourth inning score for the county and very nearly chased down the yeah, 500 that they were set 486 finished on. Carvelas is in full and uh, Yorker length. Just looped a little bit, oddly. Sort of swung in to Harris, who didn't try and do anything spectacular with it. Just blocked it back down the pitch to Carvelas, but it did get quite feisty as some of the younger, one or two of the younger Sussex yeah, players yeah. rather lost their heads slightly. And it, I think it's fair to say that, because in the, f the following game 
Mr. Farbrace dropped three of them, didn't he? And and did made you? it clear why he'd done it he as did. well. He and not not yeah. Yeah, and Sussex lost points as well, a twelve point mm. deduction for disciplinary, which is a culmination of things throughout the season. Carvelas is in on off stump. Harris just leans forward, pushes it out towards extra cover seals. There isn't an extra cover, has to move to his right from mid off to field. Harris jogs a single. There was something actually at the uh, the pre season press day. I did ask John Simpson about um, being the skipper of the side. There were two things for Sussex last year ill discipline on the field uh, and slow over rates. Uh, and, and, and John was saying, well, you know, obviously there's a fine line between over exuberance and, and you know, crossing the line. Cavalas bowls to Patel, Above. leans forward and is beaten on the outside edge. Made just a little bit of movement away, perhaps just held its own in a little gesture from Patel for the first time. Just a, a smidgen of, of away movement, perhaps, as the, as the lacquer mm. starts to come off. They, they were taught actually, sorry, I'll let you finish no, your no, point no, in no, a second, no, but sure. lacquer on the ball, apparently that is different as well with these kookaburras. Um, it comes off more quickly for some reason. As Carvelas is in and bowls full, goes for the drives and appeal for a catch behind, looked to, to miss it. And I think the appeal was, didn't look like it was one that was entirely convinced that he'd actually hit it. I thought it pa almost passed the bat on the full. Bounced up high, taken by Simpson. Good bounce, wasn't there? And there was no appeal really from Carvelas as such. Slips went up, but he's beaten Patel in consecutive deliveries. Slips rubbing their hands in anticipation. Mm. Standing quite close, aren't they? Carvelas is in outside off stump. A little bit too wide on that time. And he raises his eyes to the heavens, cross with himself for not making Patel play the final ball of the over, the fourth over of Leicestershire's first inning. 17 with that loss. Patel, troubled by Carvelas in that over, is on five. Harris is on 12. Interesting to see there John Simpson running between the overs. I mean, I, I, to be honest, getting punished for a slow over eight, I think, is inexcusable in my book. Um, so I'm really pleased to see Sussex getting a move on between overs. And it was very noticeable last week that you know, some of this business of bringing out helmets or that sort of thing. You know, they seem to be a lot more organised, which was good to see. But the, di the discipline is, 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 is a tricky one, but I think there was no question some of the Sussex lads crossed the line against Leicestershire last year. And, you know, lesson learnt, you know, nothing wrong with enthusiasm. And But, um, you know, let's hope there's not a repeat of that. Jaden Seals is coming in around the wicket to bowl to the left-handed Marcus Harris. He's in and bowls. Harris defends onto the onside. There is no run. A couple of early emails in. Bob Pook's been in touch down in Hastings. Hello, Bob. Lovely to hear from you. He says, let's hope for another exciting game like last week's encounter with Northamptonshire. Or indeed, like the Sussex v Leicestershire thriller at Hove last September when the visitors very nearly chased down an unlikely target of 499. It was a superb game of cricket. And for so long, it looked as if Leicestershire might get there. It, w it really was a terrific game. And Leicestershire went on from that to, to win the one-day cup. I was saying to you earlier, Richard, you know, lest you were in all sorts of trouble. I remember listening to that and thinking, oh, poor Richard, you know, this, this, this is going to be over <laughs> by about one o'clock. It, it felt that way. <laughs> Seals, bowls to Harris, who lets that go outside the off stump taken by Simpson, no run. Yes, uh, match saving, well, ultimately winning, I suppose, innings from uh, Harry Swindles, mm. a century. That uh, at least enabled us to post a vaguely competitive target. And Hampshire should have, they were in control all the way mm. until the last over. And do you see, Harris Willis didn't have a contract, or was he out of contract? He was, yep, and it's got him another contract. I think it's probably fair to say that. Although, Ben Cox, who played against Sussex, I think it possibly was his first game. Seals in bowls, Harris lets that go again, taken by Simpson. No run. Lively, wasn't yeah, it? just woke up ahead of steam. Yeah. Yeah. Coming down the... Uh, the Grace Road slope, but Ben Cox obviously is, is, is the first choice wicketkeeper, so Harry still, unfortunately from his point of view, sec second choice. They've also got Lewis Hill, but he, he doesn't keep anymore. Save his hands, the, the skipper. He's not short of wicketkeepers who can bat the Foxes. Seals again in his third over. 
17 without loss Leicester and again he lets that go outside of the off stump taken by Simpson um, and there is no run in this game last year remember Josh Hull played he played very well in that final as well what's the he's just started the, the season with a slight injury he's, he's now bowling again out in the middle came to Headingley had a few sort of um, loosening spells if you like in, in between um, uh, during the intervals and he's going to play in the second team game starting on Monday and hopefully then will be available for selection if required at Derby next week well he's certainly getting some good press isn't he is Josh Hull seals Wicked bowls to Harris, who's right in behind this, plays it onto the onside. There is no run. I saw a tweet from, I think, Wisden Cricket Monthly. And there was an interview with Josh suggesting that he might be picked for the 2025 Ashes. Mm. Yeah, I will that. Very yeah. early. <laughs> well, and it's interesting, and it, 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 it's sort of interesting as well with, you know, r relating that to Ollie Robinson, because Ollie has got a central contract, but it's only for a year, so that'll run out the end of this year. And there are some young bowlers snapping at heels. I'm thinking of. Hull, I'm thinking of Atkinson, Potts at Durham, I think is a super bowler. Yes, um, he is, you know, yeah. Really, really, I, th I think he's quite underrated, Matt Potts, to be honest. So there's lots of competition. Seals in bowls, and Harris plays this um, to square leg. There is no run. End of the over, 17 without loss. Harris is on 12, Patel is on 5. Yes, they have a serious attack this year. Well, they have a serious side. Durham, who have taken two Leicestershire players, who played... Um, Actually, Callum didn't play, did he? Callum Parkinson didn't play in that game at Sussex. Colin Ackerman, of course, uh, yes. did and made 100, as, a, as, a, as I recall. But uh, Scott Boland has his first game there this this time round, in this round of games. So Boland and Potts isn't a bad opening. No. <laughs> I, tell what I, li I tell you what I liked about Potts. I, I watched him up at Durham last year. You know, every ball, he gives it 100%. You know, he was running in hard. It was a track that wasn't giving the seamers an awful lot. But I was, I was just really, really impressed by Potts. And he seems to stay fit as well, which is good news for a quick bowler. Carvelas over the wicket to Rishi Patel. No, he uh, aborts the run up about three quarters of the way in. Patel drops his bat, walks away, goes through his little routine, just uh, undoes the Velcro straps on his gloves, then refasten them, walks back into place. The four slips go down as Carvelas in. Bowls, a little bit short. No, says Patel as he gets up on his toes and just drops the ball off, off stump out towards point. Gully comes uh, running in to field. Jack Carson, well, not, he is just about Gully, I think, Carson, rather than fourth slip. Yeah, I would say. It's a fine line between a fourth <laughs> slip and a gully, isn't it? But, uh, not much in it. Uh, Teddy Wormsley's been in touch. Hello, Teddy. He says a good first test away at Leicestershire will tell us a lot. I've got the stream on with the commentary, says Teddy in Lewis. Thank you, Teddy. Good morning, Teddy. Carvelas in. Bowls. Good length, but not the right line. Just a little bit too wide. Patel stretches forward and uh, lifts his bat over the line of the ball. 17 for loss. Without loss remains the score. The hospitality marquee, the semi-permanent marquee that's been there a few years now. Has a party in there today. Yeah, it does. Gentleman yeah. with a very bright orange turban, a couple of Sikhs o over there. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot Splendidly of people. Splendidly attired. Carvelas is in bowl. Drops a little bit short and whipped away by Patel, who saw that early. Mm, very early indeed. It sat up nicely on his hip, and uh, Risty player, one of his favourite shots, middled it beautifully through the vacant square leg area out to the boundary. He moves on to 9.21 without loss. The pitch is already looking pretty decent. One here. It is. No, it is. And, uh, and there's a good bounce in it as well. But, I mean, uh, Patel absolutely whipped that one away um, for four runs. Beautifully played. He's strong on the leg side. Very, very strong on the leg side. Carvelas, chastened perhaps, is in and bowls. Again, just a... a Fraction short on off stump this time. Better line. Patel, everything neatly together as he blocks it back down the pitch to Carvelas. Picks it up and throws it to his skipper. Yeah, I mean, one or two, you know, new faces. I mean, not new faces in county cricket, but Liam Travaskis, who's made the, you know, the, the trip down the A1 to from Durham. Uh, ben Cox, as you say, played in that game last year at Hoban. And, and Ben Mike returning to, to, to Leicestershire. I'll ask you about that in a minute. 
Silas Bowles, outside off stump Fuller, but again too wide, and once again, Patel is not required to play, and doesn't. Yeah, Ben had a wonderful first game of the season up at Yorkshire, his former county. Went up there last year, having signed a three-year deal. Didn't get many opportunities, played just the one first-class game. And uh, Yorkshire agreed to let him come back to Leicestershire. Released him. Carvelas bowls straight again and grunt of effort from the seamer, but no great movement, a little bit short, and up on his toes is Patel dropping it out towards point end of the sixth over. Carvelas three overs, none for eight. Not too much loose, but just that one on the little bit short on the leg stump, which uh, Patel seized on. 21 without loss after sixth. Leicestershire. Yeah, John Simpson just running across and having a word to Eric Carvelas. One thing I liked about uh, John Simpson's captaincy last week was that he was um, always very keen, if nothing was happening, to change things around. And he was just a long I mean, Eric Carvelas has only bowled the three overs. Um, but I just wonder whether he, he might be thinking about you know, changing things around while the ball is hard. The, the Sussex attack, the other seamers would be Hudson Prentice and Danny Lamb, possibly a bit of Tom Haynes, but in comes Jaden Sills, bowls to Marcus Harris, that's a super shot. I mean, that's a quality shot from a quality player. It was over-pitched by Jaden Sills, and you know, there's no criticism of that. You know, you've got the new ball, you want to pitch it up, but slightly over-pitched, and Harris just eased the ball away through the covers for four runs. Beautiful shot. He goes to 16, looks a quality player, 25 without loss. It's so pleasing. I know he's a left-hander and an international left-hander, but there's something really aesthetically beautiful about shots like that. There was no great crack, was there? It just sort of melted yeah. away off. Beautifully the played, wasn't it? Right right out the middle of the bat. Um, the Sussex persisting with the three slips in a gully, which is, you know, that's the right thing to do at this early stage, but certainly these two putting down a little bit of a marker in the opening Half hour, better go do my update in a minute. Half hour or so. As in comes uh, Seals running towards us. Bold. And Harris is at it again, and that could well be four more. It's drilled away into the offside. They're in hot pursuit. The ball is rolling towards the boundary. It won't quite get there as Danny Lamb overhauls the ball a couple of yards inside the fence. But uh, comfortable runs for uh, Marcus Harris. Three more. He goes to 19. Leicestershire to 28 without loss here on BBC Radio Sussex. B are you BBC Radio Leicester or BBC, BBC Radio Leicester? Yeah, yeah. Uh, everything seems to change uh, in local radio. Um, myself, Adrian Harms, alongside Richard Ray. Always a great pleasure to come to Grace Road. People always say people are very friendly on the gate at Sussex. Sam Wheeler and the guys down there who do a great job. I, I always find the same here at Leicestershire, to be honest. Always very welcoming and called me young man that helped as well as I drove through the van. <laughs> Yeah, if only you knew. <laughs> but uh, so it's al always a pleasure to come here. Good. Uh, Seals in a game bowls, and Patel is forward and plays that to backward point, fielded by Hudson Prentice, and there is uh, no run. Good morning to Springsteen Cricket. Good morning, Richard. LCCC signing Ben Cox means Harry Swindles is third behind Cox and Hanscom. I don't know, Springsteen, whether whether Peter was that keen to keep this season. He kept last season, obviously, and sort of freed up another place in the side as a consequence. But I don't know sort of the, the background of that, whether he perhaps didn't want to keep it. I'm not quite sure. Seals. Uh, in and bowls. And so up at his toes and plays it to back. Well, point, there's a good bit of fielding there by Hudson Prentice, who prevents, uh, well, prevents a boundary, really, diving low to his... Uh, left hand side. Patel remains on nine. Uh, Leicestershire at 28 without loss. Morning to David. David Popple. Always a pleasure to hear the comms again. David. At, uh, the lovely Burley Park Cricket Club over in Stamford. Hoping their first get promoted to the Lincolnshire Premier League. Mm. A little league start this weekend, don't they? Mm. Seals in again and bowls and good shot by Vitelli. He's up on his toes. Hasn't quite got his line of length right here, Jaden Seals. He was up on his toes and he's played that very firmly through backward point for four runs. I can see Paul Farbrace, the Sussex coach, is walking around the outfield and he just called one of the players over. I think that's Danny Lamb 
he's just called over there from from cover so perhaps trying to get some instructions onto the outfield but four runs and a very good start here by Leicestershire 32 without loss Mattel to 13 and elsewhere in the second division um, Northamptonshire 12 for one at home to Middlesex Justin Broad the man out uh, and Yorkshire 13 for one down at Bristol against Gloucestershire poor old Derbyshire didn't play last week and no play so far today in Cardiff against Glamorgan in comes Seals bowls but oh, let's that one go outside the Ostrom it's the end of the over I need to disappear briefly Richard and I shall return thank you Adrian yeah the run rate 4.6 healthy as far as uh, Leicestershire are concerned Patel 13 off 21 Harris 19 off 21 so both face the same number of deliveries no extras as yet, all runs off the bat. A change already then, so Carvela's just the three overs, none for eight. And it looks as though he's going to be replaced by Lamb. Who, as I recall, is a sort of bustling seamer. It's been a while since I've seen him. He picks up uh, Carvela's marker and moves it a good three or four yards uh, closer to the crease and he is going to have just the three slips so a little bit more cover in the covers mid off extra cover and uh, point for Lamb who is in and bowling to Harris down the leg side Harris flicks at it doesn't get anything on it taken by Simpson also has a long leg mid wicket and mid on around to see if he has any cover on either side in terms of uh, boundary riders not as yet one would hope not as yet certainly Lamb number 10 on his back he too favors the shirt out of the trousers as he comes running in and bowls Harris straighter delivery this time Harris covers up blocks it a big stride blocks it on the back foot almost out towards mid on Pajara claps his hands at mid on, the straightness of the delivery. There was a um, little bit of doubt about Pajara, who's had uh, back issues in, in recent weeks about his availability. Sussex will be delighted to see the skipper out there. Lamb is in and bowls a little bit short this time and on leg stump, so Harris can just go back, turn his wrists on it, push it out towards Long Leg, who comes jogging in to meet the ball. Harris and Patel jog a single Harris on to 20 now 33 without loss a few people in this morning already which is good to see it's supposed to be the warmest of the four days um, weather wise not a bad forecast at all for the next four days I think Monday is uh, one or two question marks over but today Saturday Sunday all pretty good can't vouch for temperatures, but hopefully dry. Lamb is in, drop short, looking to pull, clothed by Patel in the air, back over Harris's head, very straight. He was trying to put that somewhere over the meat, and it could easily have lobbed up to uh, mid on or mid off. It went straight back over Lamb's head, dropped about eight, ten yards behind him, and uh, fielded. I think it was Seals running back from mid on who fielded, and Patel picks up one. Little bit fortunate, so to do first really false shot when the bat has connected with the ball 34 without loss lamb is in bowls to harris onto his legs again harris turns it but this time more or less straight to jack carson who is sort of trying to cover both square leg and mid wicket didn't really get up too much hasn't been too much there for the bowlers so far for the sussex bowlers lamb the third of them it's the three from Carvelas. Just just bowled a little bit short, perhaps. Perhaps that was a message from Farbrace. Simpson quick to make the change. Lamb is in. Bowls and goes past the outside edge. Deliver that's better. Just held its own of the pitch. And uh, for the first time, Harris is beaten outside the off stump. End of the over. 34 without loss. That's probably what they're gonna have to do. Patience is mm. the word I keep hearing with the Cookaburra ball, Adrian. Yeah. And actually, there's going to be a double change here because I think Jaden Seals is coming out of the attack, and Eric Carvelos is going to bowl. Is that the Bennett end? Did you say? It is. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. 
Um, How many years you've been coming here? I know. I should. <laughs> I, I, I know. I should know. Really. I, I always. I always get Northampton, and Leicestershire confused for some reason. I don't know. Um, so Jaden Seals out of the attack, and Eric Carvelos is going to bowl from the Bennett end. So maybe that was the change that Paul Farbrace was wanting. Um, but certainly, Sussex have has not been wasteful with it. I haven't quite got their lines and lengths right here this morning. And Marcus Harris in particular has been very quick to take advantage of that. So bowling with four slips is Carvelos, who's running in and bowls. And Patel, oh, that's a beautiful shot. Too short from <laughs> Ari Carvelos. And up on his toes, and Rishi Patel just punches that one away through the covers of Horan. That was a little bit of a gimme, to be honest. And Leicestershire off to a good start here. 38 without loss, Patel on to 18. And um, John Simpson is persevering with his attacking field, but um, he may have to change that fairly soon because Leicestershire, as I say, are going along very nicely. It is tricky for the bowlers because from up here, it looks perfectly flat. It isn't no. out there yet. From the pavilion end, there is a marked slope up and, and obviously the other way from, from, from the Bennett end. So it just might take Carvelas a few deliveries to adjust. Well, here he comes Sussex's leading wicket taker last season. Look at the wicket bowls and flipped away by uh, Patel. It's gone through mid on. Uh, Pujara is in hot pursuit, but not before Patel comes back for a couple more. He goes to 20, the total to 40 without loss. I was saying, Adrian, while, while you were next door, you, you mentioned that he'd had one or two sort of question marks about his back in terms of availability. And he doesn't actually look to be moving that comfortably. Pujara, no, Pujara, I, would I know agree. he's not that sort no. of athletic anyway, but no. he, he just looked a little bit tentative yeah. there across the ground. No, I would agree. Carvelas in the game. Bowls and Patel drives nicely through the offside. More runs here for uh, Rishi Patel. Tom Haynes is in hot pursuit. He's going to pull that up just inside the boundary. They think about a third, but it wasn't really on. But Patel adds two more. And as you said, 242 without loss. Rishi Patel to 22. It's been a fine start this by. Uh, Leicestershire were only in the ninth over, so they are rattling along the best part of five and over here. Uh, and now John Simpson does have to make the change, so he's taken out his four slip stroke gully, Jack Carlson, who's gone into the covers. So Sussex just with the three slips now, as in comes uh, Carvelos Bowles, and Patel is forward to a good delivery for Mary Carvelos. Forward comes Patel, plays into the offside, and there is no run. Morning to Hamish from uh, Aberdeen. Unfortunately, wasn't able to get the train down for the first home game of the year. He's hoping to make the long journey soon. Sussex have a supporter, Steve Harris, who lives up in Aberdeenshire. Okay. He lives in um, Stonehaven, which I think is not far from Aberdeen. They could come down together, couldn't it's they? It's a long way to Brighton from there, to home. It, from it there. is, and he was here. He was there last week. In comes Cabela's Bowles to Patel, too short, and absolutely thrashed away by Rishi Patel. Open mid wicket for four. It rather sat up. And Patel just smashed the ball over way over mid wicket and Leicestershire are approaching this a little bit like a one day game. Patel goes to 26. He's faced 27 balls and off to a flyer. Leicestershire 46 without loss. We saw last season, this is how Rishi Patel tends to play. Harris is usually regarded as more circumspect. He's just picked it off, really, hasn't he? He's played a couple of glorious drives, but the balls have been there to hit. It has. Um, so Carvalis isn't getting it right at the moment from that Bennett end down the slope. So Sussex so needing to stem the flow of runs here, but more importantly, they need to take some wickets. Carvelas in bowls, Patel up on his toes and punches that into the offside. There is no run. End of the over. And Leicestershire are 46 without loss. Patel is on 26, Harris on 20. You're listening to live cricket on BBC's. Radio Leicester and Sussex Adrian Harms, Richard Ray uh, with you uh, throughout this match. If you've just joined us, Sussex winning the toss. Uh, no Ollie Robinson for Sussex. He was left behind in Sussex, England, clearly um, decreeing he can open. Well, they've, they've said he can only play five of the seven opening games. So electing Sussex not to pick him for this game. Ari Cavalis has come in for him. Chetish Bajara in for Ollie Carter. Uh, Sussex winning the toss, electing to bowl, but let's cheer off to a really good start. Lamb is in, bowls nice and straight to Harris, with that sort of trigger movement, the left hander sort of back and then presses forward, drops it out towards 
Pajara intercepted en route by Jack Carson running it across from mid wicket and there's no run. Yeah, it does look like a track, doesn't it? And actually, I mean, groundsmen around the country have done an amazing job. Um, bowls a little bit short, thumps into the thigh pad, I suspect, of or top of the pad of Harris as he stepped across there. Umpire turns to the scores and raises an elegant left knee. Umpire Pollard, I think, is the taller of the two umpires. Umpire Middlebrook is uh, at square leg. The first half of the game, when the bowling is from the pavilion end here. Always difficult to tell the ground. umpires, isn't it? They're not dissimilar when they're no. wrapped up under similar hats. Lamb is in to Patel who edges but along the ground he leant forward slightly angled back and he may pick up four. It's yeah. running through around about four slip down to the third man boundary. That is four to Patel and that is the Leicestershire 50. We are only in the 10th over. Patel on to 30 at a runner ball. 30 off 29 balls. He's been slightly loose is the probably wrong word. Troubled one or two or twice uh, more often than Harris at the other end. But he is such a dangerous player. One of the points, though, Lewis Hill made was that every batter got in against Yorkshire and not every batter went on. And he said that was a message we, we tried to get across. So these two will want to really make it count. Lamb is in to Patel, who is all care and attention as he stretches forward, everything very close together, and blocks that out into the covers where Carson is the fielder. I saw Jack Carson warming up. Um, now, uh, uh, as I say, John Simpson isn't scared of making changes. And one thing that the spinners did say last week was uh, suddenly James Coles, he picked up six wickets. But um, he, he, he found the Kookaburra ball a little easier to bowl with. So you, you never know. We might see some spin. Lamb is in to Patello. Again, is leaning forward. This time playing it out to point where Finn Hudson Prentice, who's also been doing a few stretches. Yeah. Is, uh, is the fielder. And another right arm seamer is Finn. This was my, uh, uh, driving up there this morning, I was thinking, what will Sussex do? And just because of the angle of attack from Sean Hunt, I just wondered, um, and it must have been a, you know, a bit of a dilemma for um, Paul Farbrace. I, I think Sean was probably very close to being picked. Um, bold. Patel is reaching oh. for it and steering it away. Again, a little bit loose, but he got plenty of bat on it. Bat was a long way from the pad, steers it away behind Hudson Prentice, who can only turn and jog down to the wide third man boundary. Patel picks up another four, moves on to 34. Ten overs have gone. Leicestershire put into bat by John Simpson. And I'm not entirely certain... Lewis Hill might not have done the same if he yeah, if he'd sure. won the toss on the basis that if there is going to, was going to be any life in the pitch or a bit of movement, it, it would be early. However, Simpson decided, well, it's April, there's a bit of green about, it should do a bit early. It hasn't really, but they haven't bowled brilliantly. 55 without loss after 10. Uh, they are playing in Cardiff now, which will please Derbyshire, who missed out completely last week. I saw a photo on social media of the Derbyshire lads, or the commentators, I should say. In comes Carvalho's bowls, and forward comes Harris, and just plays that very nicely through mood on effortless, really. And it's going to race away towards the boundary. It's going to race away for four runs. He barely seemed to hit that. That was beautiful, wasn't it? I mean, it's like a four defensive. But it's so beautifully timed by Marcus Harris. He goes to 24 and Leicestershire to 59 without loss. Yes, our colleague Dave Fletcher and Dave Griffin were enjoying a pint in a pub in Cardiff last night, so um, I think you're there next week. Yorkshire in trouble against Gloucestershire, uh, 19 for two, uh, with Lythe and Bean both already back in the pavilion. Carvelas in bowls, and that's a good bit of fielding at backward point by Danny Lamb, because that could easily have been another boundary. That stung a bit. Yeah, I bet it did. He's just, yeah, and he's wringing his hand. Is it, I wonder if it's his shin as well. He's just pulling up his left trouser leg, is uh, Danny Lamb. Uh, Northamptonshire, 26 for one. He's, it, he's yeah, got a bloody knee. Yeah, he's hurt himself, Danny Lamb. He's, he's waving, waving towards the physio, so John Morelli, the physio, is going to have to come on. He's hurt his knee, or cut his knee. He's got his trouser leg rolled up, as Danny Lamb. 
They're not going Sussex's way at the moment. In comes Carvelos. Bowls to Harris, who is caught behind. And Harry Carvelos gets the breakthrough that Sussex desperately needed. Much better delivery. Pitched up. Harris feeling for that one outside his off stump. And John Simpson does the rest behind the stumps. And boy, did Sussex need that wicket. But um, a fine innings for Marcus Harris comes to an end. He's on out for 24. Maybe as Richard said, that one or two Leicestershire batsmen last week getting a start. And you can see Harris is furious with himself for playing at that delivery. But he's on his way. And Leicestershire are 59 for one. Yeah, be bitterly disappointed because he looked in absolutely prime form out there. Marcus Harris, and uh, having gotten through the first sort of 40 minutes or so, it was a good delivery, though, from Carvelas. We'll have a look at the replay, see if it did just uh, seam away, or whether he held his bat out, rather, whether he, he poked at a, a slightly wide one. He's still furious with himself, Marcus, as he walks off. He'll feel, here's, a, here's the replay, so. Let's just see if that one uh, held its own a bit. Moved, I think it did. I think it, moved, I think it moved away a little bit and maybe bounced a touch and um, a decent delivery from Mario Carvelas. That's the length anyway. Yes. And uh, he'll learn from that. He'll be lifted by that as well because Harris, an international wicket, a good, good one to have. 59 for one. And as Adrian said, visitors needed that one just, just to give everybody a lift. Another wicket or two now and... Uh, It'll all feel very different. Running repairs to Mr. Lamb's knee ongoing. Yes. Uh, Sean Hunt is out there, the twelfth man with bottles of water and a big coat on as well. It's a it's a it's a you know, the, the the sun is out, so we mustn't complain, but it is a it's a chilly breeze, which I think is meant to get worse as we go into Sunday. The forecast for the weekend, I think tomorrow is really nice. But I think by Sunday we're gonna get a cold blast. Uh, and that's a little way off. John Morelli, who's got a bobble hat on, the Sussex physio, comes walking off, having tended to Danny Lamb, who looks like he's OK. And Eric Avellas is going to come into bowl to uh, Louis Kimber. Uh, four slips are now back in place. In comes Carvelos, and Kimber is forward, plays down the track. Carvelos fills off his own bowling, and there is no run. So interesting switch around from John Simpson. Harry Carvelos started off from this, the pavilion end, and then switched to the Bennett end. He's picked up a wicket. Four slips, a point, mid-off, mid-on, mid-wicket, uh, and a fine leg. Jaden Seals just down below us here. And Carvelas in again, bowls, and the tell is forward, plays to mid-on, and there is no run. So there's playing all uh, all the games in Division 1, Essex, 45 for 2 against Kent at Chelmsford. Hampshire, 22 for 1 at the Aegeus. I don't think it's called the Aegeus Bowl anymore, is it? Um, 22 for one, I get confused. Is it, is it back to being the Rose Bowl, or have they got another sponsor? I, th I think they've got another sponsor, right. yeah. Uh, Notts, 40 for two, just up the M1 against Worcestershire. Somerset, 38 for one at the Oval and Warwickshire, 51 without loss against Durham at Edgbaston. In comes Carvelos Bowles, and driven beautifully uh, by Kimber, overpitched by uh, Ari Carvelos, and drilled away through extra cover. That was a lovely way to get off the mark. Uh, with the boundary at the end of the over, the end of the 11th over. And Leicestershire are 63 for one. They've lost the wicket of Marcus Harris, who was caught by John Simpson of the bowling of Ari Carvelos for 24. I think I left my my 2024 cricketers who's who up at Headingley. Oh, I no. usually leave one somewhere, oh, but, um, but first game of the season, that's a bitter blow. <laughs> that really is. Yes. <laughs> Annotated everything like yeah, that. Yeah, no. Did it all. No, that is really annoying. But anyway, whether I'll, I'll ever see it again, who knows? So Rishi Patel getting ready to face Danny Lamb. Can Sussex make a double breakthrough? Lamb is in, drops a little bit short outside of stump, <laughs> but Patel is careful, lets it go through. Um, Susie Griffiths. Hello, Susie. Uh, she's a listener over in Strasbourg, where she says it's 20 degrees uh, today. Last week, Susie got in touch. It was 30 degrees in Strasbourg, can you believe? Um, so it's warmer where you are, Susie, is here. She said, well, that was the opposite of the commentator's curse. She says, keep up the good work. I must have said something in the lead up to that wicket. Um, elbows jutting, runs in and bowls straighter this time. Turn of the wrist from Patel as he blocked it out into the leg side off uh, around about middle and leg 
Seals claps his hands, having moved to his right to field. Again, there's no run. Oh. My colleague Andrew Rayburn is touched. Hello, Andrew. Uh, it's now called the Utili Utilitia Bowl. Utilitar. Yeah. Is that the power? Whatever. Yeah, it probably is. It's Let me just see. Uh, the, the, the text just went off my screen, so I'll try and find that again. Lamb is in. Bowls. Straight again, probably. Middle, middle and leg. This time, sort of back foot defensive push. Firm push from Patel. Out towards Seals. Yes, Utilita. U T I L I T A Utilita Bowl. So sounds like a sort of a utility company, doesn't it? But anyway, th they're the new spot. Thank you, Andrew. Hope you're think, well. Don't think we go there this year. Obviously, play in the One Day Cup, but they tend to play on, on, on club grounds. In goes Lamb outside of Stump, allowed to go through by Patel. We're going to one or two out grounds in the. Um, 50 over cup. We're going to York, which I'm quite looking forward to. I don't know what the cricket. I've, I've played been to there. York. You played there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you? Played at York, yeah. Is it inside the city walls or is no. it? No. Right. Okay. No, no. But it sounds nice. Does it? Yeah, there's not much room inside the city walls. <laughs> well, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, walk, I've, I've walked all around the city Beautiful walls. I don't city. remember. S yeah, it is lovely. Lamb in. Bowls. Patel wristily turns it out towards mid wicket. This time. It's fielded by Tom Haynes, one of the many Toms in the Sussex side. That's like many. There's only three of them, aren't there? Yeah, the top three are all Tom. This is uh, Clark, Haynes, and Alsop. Yeah, they in are. That order. And you have a Tom as well, Tom Scriven, who Tom Scriven, uh, yeah. I think is a terrific cricketer. I really enjoyed watching him at great, Hove last great year. Great prospect. Yeah, really good. All rounder. As Lamb is in two, Patel grunt of effort again. He's bowling on that middle and leg line and Patel back foot blocks it out towards sort of square leg mid wicketish where Haynes is again the fielder 63 for one was that a maiden was that the very first maiden I'm not quite sure yes it was I believe it Good was the first of the of the match 63 for one then of 12 rest of the shot yes had a weekend away in York last year thoroughly enjoyed it got the train up from uh, was it King's Cross or Euston? King's, King's Cross. Cross. Yeah, York. T t two hours, really quick. Uh, had afternoon tea. That sounds very sort of uh, <laughs> English, doesn't it? At Betty's Tea Shop, which is a famous tea shop in the middle of York. Absolutely is, yeah, very. And um, was also, the, also Harrogate and Ilkley. Oh. I believe Betty's. Right, those okay. three. Right, there you go. But very, very, very famous. There was a pianist. I mean, I have to say, it it, it, it was nice to go and you know, nice sandwiches and scones. I mean, it wasn't the cheapest, Richard. But I mean, it's one of those things when you're in York, you thought, well, we better do it, really. So we did. Absolutely. Uh, I made sure I had plenty of, of scones or scones, whatever you call them. In comes a uh, change of bowling, actually, which I should have spotted. Finn Hudson Prentice into the Sussex attack. So a change of bowling after a wicket, which is an interesting change. And Hudson Prentice bowling his right arm. Um, he's a little bit more than medium, Finn Hudson Prentice. And there is no run. Oh, you hit the can of worms there, scones or scones. Mm. Or <laughs> yeah, for me it's scones. Um, so, uh, Betty's have a, a, a special sort of semi-rock cake with lots of fruit in it called the Fat Rascal. <laughs> really? Mm. <laughs> And Prentice in bowl. Oh, and he knocks out the off stump. So that's a terrific bowling change by uh, John Simpson. And no better sight for a bowler than seeing an off stump knocked clean out of the ground and going cartwheeling towards the boundary. So Finn Hudson Prentice, with just his second delivery, removes uh, Louis Kimber's off stump. And all of a sudden, uh, Leicestershire is 63 for two. Yeah. Add two to the two wickets to the score. And. Uh, and you judge, let's see if that one came back at Kimber a little bit. Did a touch, but it was a slightly loose shot from, from Louis Kimber at this stage of his innings, at, at that stage of his innings, very early. One glorious cover drive for four, but now he's lost his off stump. They've um, they decided to give Louis Kimber a chance at three. He just had the one innings up at uh, so far, obviously, this season, like all the other Leicestershire players. Got into the 20s up at Headingley. I have seen him lose his off stump a few times over the last year or two, and uh, it is something he needs to tighten up on, especially if he's going to bat at three. Let's have another look at that. It did come back, but 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 not by as much as it should have done. It shouldn't have gone through 
the gap between bat and uh, pad. So Sussex, after a tough first ten overs, have struck back in some style. 63 for two. I was looking up Paul Farbrace, who went for a wander around the boundaries. I, I would imagine that he was none too happy with the way Sussex bowled in the opening sort of half hour, 45 minutes, and had gone for a wander, sent some instructions out. He'll, he'll be a little happier now as he makes his way round the boundary edge. Yeah, agreed. Foxy Phil has been in touch. He's not sure Louis Kimber is a number three. Hmm. What well, skipper is in now? Lewis Hill. It, it, it's a big playing area at Grace Road, and you always see someone at the Bennett end sitting right in the corner, about as far away from the action as you get. And there's a gentleman over there today in the orange seats. In fact, there's a couple of them over there. Uh, yeah, nothing wrong with 20 yards away he from He must the be. I mean, he could sit a lot nearer if he wanted, or he or she. Hudson Prentice in. Bowl. Oh, and there's another wicket. Knocks the off stump of Lewis Hill back. And two in two for Finn Hudson Prentice. And all of a sudden, Leicestershire, having been 59 without loss, are 63 for three. A change of bowling from John Simpson. Finn Hudson Prentice picks up a couple of wickets. And Leicestershire now 63 for three. Well, what a change. What a change from 59 without loss, without any apparent worries at all. Lewis Hill implying that that stayed a little bit low, and it might just have done. On, it, it hit off stump, did come back to him a touch, should he have been on the front foot, but unlike the delivery that accounted for Louis Kimber, the off stump stayed in the ground, it which did. implies it hit fairly low. Um, so, Sussex right on top now, and they picked up the first point of the game. Hudson Prentice, wow, two for none from three balls. Yeah. And on a hat-trick. Yes. So you'd have to say a good bowling change from uh, uh, John Simpson. And Peter Hanscom comes out about probably 10 minutes ago. He was probably sitting with his pads off. Wondering what to have for lunch. Yes, for watching, watching Battelle and Harris get tucked into uh, the Sussex attack. And you said you must be, you know, you did say, Richard, well, it takes a couple of wickets and things can change. But I have to say, it did look very straightforward for Leicestershire early on. But, um, well, Finn Hudson Prentice is now on a hat trick. Uh, Peter Hanscom comes wandering out. Um, now, I just wonder here, I mean, in club cricket, you'd have everyone round the bat when you, you'd have sort of, you know, five slips and a silly mid off and a silly mid on. I don't know whether Sussex are going to do that. Um, they've just got the three slips in place. So plenty of encouragement and hand clapping going on. As Peter Hanscom uh, takes guard. So three slips point cover mid off mid on mid wicket and a fine leg Finn Hudson Prentice who is on a hat trick uh, comes running in from the Bennett end to bowl to Peter Hanscom he's in on bowls and Hanscom is right in behind that there is no run and the applause is for Finn Hudson Prentice gave it a chance didn't he he did yeah he could do it straight try to hit the stumps again yeah all you can do Paul Farbrace has virtually completed his circuit of the ground, which is it's, it's a fair old circuit. It's probably more, you know, it's, it's bigger than a 400 metre track. Or well, maybe maybe about the yeah, size about of an, an athletics track. I, get that. I think they have measured it. It's, it's a long way. You won't have to run round there too often. Well, you'd be all right, Richard. In comes Hudson Prentice, bowls and driven away. Oh, and it just bounced in front of Jack Carson at point. I don't think that was far away from Carson, who. It wasn't. Made a good stop diving away to his right-hand side. There is no run. About a foot, foot and a half, something like that. Took it very cleanly, two-handed diving to his right. Mm. Paul Farbrace is now having a chat to Jaden Seals. Um, he's got shorts on, Paul Farbrace, and he's got his Sussex gilet on. Uh, and Jaden is having a natural way to Paul Farbrace. So he'll be in a happier frame of mind than he would have been certainly half an hour ago. Got some Prentice. In and bowls, and Hanscom is forward, placed a bit on. There is no run. So, uh, a double wicket maiden from Finn Hudson Prentice to open up with. And Leicestershire, having been 59 without loss, are now 63 without loss. Or for three. For, for three, I'm sorry. What am I talking about? <laughs> Rubbish. Sorry. Well, Hudson Prentice getting the congratulations from his captain. That's what you want. First over, give your side a double wicket maiden. 
Mr. Seal sports rather a natty sort of beard, doesn't he? A sort of little tufty thing down there below us. But it's going to be Danny Lamb to continue. Can he remove the man in now? Rishi Patel, let's just need him to stay there. 34 of 38, 63 for three. Lamb in to Patel. Again, that middle and leg line, middle, middle and leg line. Patel walks forward into the defensive push, pushing it out two seals at mid-on. There's no run. Coming up to 12 o'clock, so there'll be an update before too long for Leicestershire. Brunty has been in touch about the pronunciation of scone, which he says is of secondary importance. And uh, what is important, Adrian, is whether you put your jam or cream on first. In goes Lamb and Bowles. Thick inside edge. That's a sort of off-stump line. Might just have drifted back in. And yeah, indicates as much. Rishi Patel got a thick inside edge and pad pushing it out. Yeah, Brunty's married to a, a Cornish maid, his words. So on pain of death, he has to stress the correct way is jam first, cream on top. Right. So I hope you did that if you had a scone. I don't think I did. <laughs> Goes lamb and bowls back onto that. Middle, middle and leg line turned out to square leg and suddenly the runs have dried up understandably enough when three quick wickets fall in the space of just four runs. I have to say they were very nice sandwiches at Betty's but they didn't have my, you know, they were sort of nice fillings but they didn't have my favourite, they didn't do Marmite sandwiches. I, I <laughs> no, I don't, I'm not sure Marmite's I don't ever <laughs> been a part of Yorkshire high tea. <laughs> no. I love Marmite. I might have found you some if you'd asked. Mm. Lamb is in and bowls on off stump this time. Patel down on one knee as he stretches forward defensively and blocks the delivery out into the offside. Wind gets up. It's a sort of light, consistent covering of cloud. It's, it's sort of vaguely bluey in the background, but it's, it's a fairly full covering of, of, of light high cloud across the ground. The players are casting a shy, slight shadow, <laughs> careful Richard, as that one is full and turned firmly by Patel as far as seals at mid-on. Slight shadow, have to be very careful how you say that. 63 for three, but it is cold. It is cool. If you can get out of the wind, you might be all right, but those in the um, popular seats between the electronic scoreboard and the meat look fairly well wrapped up, in fairness to them. Lamb in bowls, a little bit shorter this time. Patel defends on the back foot again, indicates there's a, a little bit of movement. And the ball is, after all, only 14 overs old. So Lamb is following up. Update coming for BDC Radio Leicester with a maiden. Four overs, none for 10 for Lamb. Now we might just get this update in between overs. Well they started beautifully going to 59 without loss but then Marcus Harris was caught behind off the bowling of Ari Carvelas. Louis Kimber was bowled by Finn Hudson Prentice for just four and the very next delivery the skipper Lewis Hill also lost his off stump to Hudson Prentice obviously without scoring so suddenly 59 without loss became 63 for three that is still the score. Rishi Patel the other opener still there he's 34 not out off 44. Peter Hanscom the Australian has come out to join him the Foxes need to dig in here after a one Wonderful start. They're under a lot of pressure at 63 for three. And we're back with you online. It's just the one delivery that Hanscom blocked. Hmm. Or let go, I beg your pardon. Yeah. He slips in place. Comes Hudson Prentice, bowls and off on his toes is Hanscom with a high left over, plays it onto the onside. And there is no run. Spent time at at Middlesex, that wasn't a particularly happy time. I got the feeling for Peter Hanscom down at uh, uh, down at Lords. No, uh, indeed, Captain uh, Middlesex, and but it's important for the skipper to be in form, and he, he struggled a little bit. Had a pretty good season for Leicestershire last season. Averaged 45, played 18 Championship innings, 681 runs, two centuries, and four fifties. 
batter to practice in again bowls Hanscom is forward carefully placed a mid wicket there is no run isn't it strange the difference a couple of wickets make because the Leicestershire were going great guns the balls disappearing literally to all parts in the opening three quarters of an hour I'm sure there were one or two in the Sussex dressing room thinking crumbs maybe we've made the wrong decision here to to bowl first and maybe they would have who, who knows but certainly got an element of control back that's a practice again from the Bennett end in the bowls and Hanscom is driving to be on good accurate stuff here by Finn Hudson Prentice he's making Hanscom play at everything and you can't ask for more than that some high level cloud around Grace Road it's sort of milky sunshine really but if you're coming along I would certainly bring a coat because there is a, a, a chilly breeze Prentice wheels around and he's on his way again. Bowls, Hanscom is full to bowl of good length, and he really it's a it's a good well, I, I guess your tail's up when you've picked up, you know, a double wicket maiden in your first over. Yeah, that does wonders for your confidence. And Hudson Prentice is bowling a very good line here to Peter Hanscom. This is a dot ball, I think it's four maidens in a row. Good spot, yes, I think you're right. Um Yes, because Danny La uh we haven't had a scoring shot since Kimber hit his... Hit that, that lovely that fall through the covers. Yeah, yeah his, his, his only scoring shot. That's Prentice in, bowls, forward come hands. Good. Well, that is going to be another maiden. Two overs. Uh, two for none is Finn Hudson Prentice at the end of the over. And Leicestershire are 63 uh, for three with Harris out for 24. Kimber for four and poor old Lewis Hill, the skipper, uh, out first ball. Struggled a little bit, Lewis, up at, at Headingley against Yorkshire. And uh, be anxious in the second innings to, to get in and make, make some runs. Can become tricky for a captain talking about that in relation to Hanscom, won't we? If, if the captain isn't in form. Yeah. Um, four overs, two maidens for him, none for ten. Bowling to Rishi Patel. Waits with bat raised very high as Lamb is in and bowls. Well, there's going to be a run, end of the run of maidens as that one drifts on towards Patel's legs and he turns it calmly out towards wide-ish long leg where Ari Carvelas with a, with a sun hat on optimistically. One of two Sussex players with the, the full Sussex sun hat on also third slip is sporting same everybody else in their smart blue caps lamb is in drops a, a fraction short even so walking forward into the defensive turn of the wrists is hanscom pushing towards mid wicket and there's no run 10 balls for peter hanscom without uh, getting off the mark so far Six firmly on top, though. The game has swung around in the visitors' favour. Um, in outside off stump, left by Hanscom. You might be, I'm, sport, I'm sure those um, watching on the stream will be pleased to know, Adrian, that commentator cam isn't isn't working at the moment. Isn't plugged in in the commentary box. It was a shock at uh, Headingley, where our colleague Jonathan Doidge had been complaining about the size of the TV screen that uh, he'd been provided with to see replays. So the Yorkshire County Cricket Club media team, as Lamb is in two hands, can bounce, good bounce and carry, but uh, a little bit wide and Hanscom can leave again, taken round about chest high to his right by Simpson. Anyway, they wheeled in the biggest television I have ever seen. <laughs> Fast thing. He's obviously got influence <laughs> and uh, and set it up sort of more or less next to us. So when commentator well, commentator Cam came on, it was uh, not a pretty sight. Jonathan and I in in appalling detail, but it was useful for replays. That is for sure. Lamb into Hans Kamu is going to get off the mark. That one was full on onto his legs, just turned calmly as ever by Peter Hans Kamith as a description I'd associate with Hanscom it is calm he just never seems to change the way he bats and push the ball out towards square leg 
and is off the mark with a single 65 for three. into a line of length here uh, as Danny Lamps, one of the Sussex acquisitions during the winter to bring a bit of experience to the side. Lamb is in and bowls nice and line and length on off stump. Patel respectfully leans forward, blocks it back out to mid off and it's the end of the 16th over. 65 is a decent run rate still, it's still over fours however three wickets now down so you would say the very much so far, Sussex's morning. Yeah, interesting, Danny Lamb. I, I, I was quite surprised when I looked at his his stats. He's, he's only 28 years of age. I think most of his cricket he's played up at Lancashire has been really one day and T20 cricket. Because in first class cricket, bear in mind he's 28, um, he's only taken a 50 first class wickets. Well, I say only, but I, I, I don't know. I was, I, I was just a little surprised by that. Uh, an average of 30. Him being involved for Lancashire in an incident against Leicester in in the the COVID season, the Bob Willis Trophy season. Yeah. When Leicester played their first game at Worcester against Lancashire, go figure. But um, remember Dieter Klein, left arm quick, hurling the ball. He played it back down the pitch to him. Stepped out of his crease. Klein hurled the ball at the stumps, but Lamb stood firmly in front of them. They hit them on the pads, and Leicester were in the end deducted a point for was considered an intimidatory action on the part of Dieter Klein, which a, a nicer chap you, you couldn't miss to wish to meet. Hit him almost on the foot, so it was hard to, anyway. Had some prejudices in bowls, let go outside the off stump. I suspect that wasn't far away from the off stump, but you have to say a good leave by uh, Peter Hanscom. We have the red bales on here as well, which we had at Headingley last week, well, so they're, they're clearly a thing. Well, Did you have red bales at Hove last? Do you, know what? Do you know what? I don't know. Isn't that really poor of me? <laughs> I mean, the only excuse I've got is that the wicket was cut. If you look out, think of the commentary box at Hove, we were out towards the Sven Karma Pavilion. Right. But I don't remember them being red bales. I think I'd have probably noticed, or our colleague Andrew Rad may well have noticed. Had some prejudice in again, bowls. Hands come forward, placed a mid wicket. And there is. Uh, no run. Um, Danny Lamb, actually, uh, um, I think it was the season after COVID, we went up to Sedborough School, which is the most beautiful setting for a 50-over game, and Danny Lamb won that game for Lancashire, um, batting at Lancashire, we were in all sorts of trouble, chasing 250-odd, and he made runs in that game. So he's got a bit of a previous against Sussex, but he's now in the Sussex ranks as Hudson Prentice. Uh, is on his way. Bowls. Oh, that kept low. That did keep low, and it was rather dug out by Peter Hanscom. That will be a little worrying on the first morning of the. He's going to get four runs, but my word, that did keep low, and he sort of edged the ball away through the slip cordon for four runs. Hanscom goes to five, and that's just here to 69 for three. But, um, well, he's coming down and doing some gardening, and I'm not surprised. I'll have a look at the replay to see how low it, it did keep. To keep low. Oh. The camera cut off um, just at the wrong moment. What a good day for Yorkshire so far down at Bristol. Uh, Joe Root is out for two. Comes Hudson Prentice, bowls forward. Come Hanscom with a model for defensive. Hudson Prentice fields off his own bowling. Uh, and there is no run. So Yorkshire, many people's tip for promotion. Um, are 42 for three, live bean, and now Joe Root all back in the pavilion. Harry Brook is there on five. You'd have been, well, I don't know if you enjoy, but uh, that was some knock last no, week, you, wasn't you it? You could only admire, really. It was, um, I'd say, he's not a sort of classically correct batsman in the style of, say, say Root, but uh, goodness me, what an eye. Had some printers in bowls and clipped away by uh, Hanscom. Is they led by or are they runs? They are runs, so nicely played by Peter Hanscom. Straying down the egg side was Hudson Prentice and Hanscom helped it on its way down towards the boundary. So two boundaries in the over. He goes to nine and Leicestershire to 73 for three. Shan Masood not out 27. It's not a bad lineup, that is it, really? No. Bean and Lyth at the top of the order. Shan Masood at three, Root at four, Brook at five. Wow. Uh, just down the M1 at Northamptonshire. Hampshire 55 for one uh, against Middlesex. 
comes about to purchase bowls and driven firmly by Hanscom into the covers. There is no run, filled by Tom Haynes. It is the end of the over. Uh, Leicestershire, I've been asked about this morning, are 73 for three. Peter Hanscom is on nine. Rishi Patel is on uh, 35. Two wickets to Hudson Prentice, one to Ari Cavalos. You're listening to live cricket on the BBC. BBC Radio Sussex and Leicester. Adrian Harms and Richard Ray, your commentary team. And just to finalise those other schools in Division 2, because that's what we're interested in, uh, Glamorgan, 31 for 1, down at Cardiff against Derbyshire. Uh, Billy Root, out for 17. So the Root brothers are both back in their pavilion. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, a tight spell. But uh, going back to the arguably slightly more incisive, certainly quicker, Jaden Sewell is going to have a go up the uh, Grace Road slope. It's going to be bowling to Rishi Patel, who raced on to 32-33, but has uh, been a bit tied down since. Seals is in and bowls straight, way back past him. He reaches across to his right, the Trinidadian, Trinidadian doesn't get anything on it but it isn't going anywhere other than bouncing comfortably towards Pajara to straightish mid on 73 for three Hanscom wanders down picks up a few little bits of dirt so one of the three slips four seals just the four overs he bowled early on none for 24 from the Bennett end Goes in and bowls very full. Patel, equal to it, walks forward as he plays the almost Yorker length delivery. Again, out to Pajara at mid on. Danny Lamb wanders down towards umpire Middlebrook and has, has a chat at uh, middle wicket stroke square leg. They will have probably played against each other at some stage, I would think, James Middlebrook. When he actually retired, former Yorkshire and Gloucestershire, I think it was. In goes Seals and Bowles on off stump. Patel, very correct, leans forward, blocks it out into the covers. No run. Was it? Did he go to? I think he went to Gloucester, James Middlebrook, after leaving Yorkshire. He was there for quite a while. I would have to check that. Pollard was um, not 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 yeah, not through and through. Pretty much as I recall. It's uh, being unkind to say he's been retired for rather longer than retired from playing, rather longer than uh, umpire Middlebrook. Both fine cricketers in their own right. Seals is in and bowls outside of some nicely steered away by Rishi Patel. I don't think it's going to go the distance across the lush, and it is lush, uh, Grace Road outfield. It's usually very, very quick, but They've left that extra grass on it because of all the rain. <coughs> Just weren't able to get on it up to a certain point, I don't think, to cut it. But I don't think it's been a bad thing that an extra sort of bit of grass has been left on in terms of absorbency. Anyway, it doesn't quite go to the boundary and Patel picks up a couple, moves on to 37, 75 for three. Seals athletic run is in. Bowl drops a little bit short. That might go the distance because it's short outside off stump and it on his back foot is cracked away to exactly the same place but with that extra bit of power that takes it over the ropes in front of the uh, manual scoreboard and the geary bar alongside it and all Fielder can do is <laughs> it's a long old chase out for him over there. A good 80 yards or so and Patel up and running again, has moved into the 40s, onto 41, 79 for three seals. Just, uh, just pats his thigh with, with annoyance, chastises himself. Yeah, he's frustrated, Jaden Seals. He bowled beautifully last week at Hope. Hasn't quite got it right today. Carson was the chaser. Seals is in again. Two Patel, full toss, and Patel will feel he missed out there. Yeah. It was fairly low when it came to him. He played it firmly, and he's rehearses a shot because he should have put it wide of Pajara instead of hitting it more or less straight to him end of the over 79 for three but it was, it was kind of the point I was making when Carvelas changed ends it, it, 
it is so different bowling from each end here, markedly yes. different, that it, it can take a, a bow just a, an over or two to, to adjust. Okay. Until wanders down to fine look, I would be a bit surprised to see Paul Farbrace. He's, a, he, you know, he's sort of an encouraging coast co coaches, Paul Farbrace. He won't let Jaden sort of stew in the outfield. He'll you know, have a little natter and a bit of advice. In the meantime, Finn Hudson Prentice is going to carry on from the Bennett end, bowling with three slips, 79 for three. The game interestingly poised. Um, Leicestershire consolidating after using those three quick wickets. As in comes Hudson Prentice bowls and Anscombe is well forward, plays down the offside of the track, and there is no run fielded by uh, Finn Hudson Prentice. Yeah, he's just standing with his hands on his hips, is Jaden Sills. He's just right down below us, and he's um, just looks frustrated at the moment. Hasn't quite been his morning. Here is bowling figures uh, in a moment's time. Some Prentice wheels around at the far end and then bowls, hands come up at his toes and steers that one nicely between third slip and backward point. He's going to pick up at least a couple of runs. Jack Carson chasing back. Um, but can't do anything about that. Hanscom goes into double figures. He's on 11. And Sussex to 80. Uh, sorry, Sussex Leicestershire on to 81 for three. Of course, when we were up here last year, uh, Richard. Um, Steve Smith was here, wasn't he? Goodness, yes, I forgot. He was yeah. Briefly. Yes, he was. Three games. He a played. mark, a marklet. <laughs> and I, I remember the quality. You know, yeah, I, I, I remember watching and taking a photograph. Actually, as he comes Hudson Prentice, oh, he gets halfway in and then loses his run to Hudson Prentice. Umpire Middlebrook signals as a dead ball. Yeah, I remember a great crowd of people, I say a great crowd, probably 20 or 30 people hanging around outside the dressing room for him as he came out. And to be fair to C. Smith, he was very good when he was, you know, at Sussex. You know, every autograph, he, you know, and why wouldn't you, you might say. But, you know, he's still got to do it. And I thought, you know, he was a good ambassador for the game. Hudson Prentice in bowls, let go outside the off stump by Hanscom, taken by Simpson in front of first slip. And there is no run. Uh, Jaden Seals has bowled five overs, no wicket for 30, so he's going at six and over is uh, Jaden, which he'll be, he'll be annoyed about. Where is he now? He's just standing down below us. I thought we might have seen one of the Sussex backman stuff maybe coming out, or I don't know, perhaps you think, it's probably a fine line, isn't it? Do you go and offer advice, or do you um, just, sometimes you want to be just left on your own a little. In comes Hudson Prentice, bowls there, that kept low as well. Rather dug out there by Peter, that's the second one from that end that's kept low. Well, if Hills did as well, Arguably, it's the third. Mm, interesting. So, good point. yeah. I mean, as I say, we're, we're not attaching any blame to ground stuff. I mean, it's just been the, the 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 dickens of a job for ground stuff up and down the country, just trying to get wickets playable. Goodness only knows what it's like at club cricket around the country. As that's apprentice in again, bowls and Hanscom is forward, plays to mid on. Interesting there that Peter Hanscom was very keen to get forward. I wonder if that might be the key here, if. The ball is keeping a little low. You don't want to find yourself getting trapped on the back foot by one that that comes through low. It hasn't been every ball. I mean, there's, uh, early on, we thought there was some very good bounce. Um, so just one or two have kept low from that Bennett end. Got some practice back to his mark. Still three slips in place. He's in bold and played firmly away by Hanscom, fielded at mid-wicket by Danny Lamb. There is no run. It is the end of the over. 81 for three. Hotel 41, Hanscom uh, on 11. Um, two wickets for Finn Hudson Prentice. He's bowled four very tidy overs, four overs, two maidens, and has taken two for ten. Yeah, you were mentioning club cricket starting in some areas uh, this weekend. I know in Yorkshire they were saying last weekend that they decided that the various leagues, and it's a very serious business up there, to scrub an entire weekend and start the following week instead. Quite how that squares, I suppose. You could just move everything a, a week up, but in terms of planning and everything like that, but apparently that's what they did. Right, interesting. It was just too wet to, to get out there. Obviously, Lost an awful lot of uh, cricket at, at Headingley. Seals.
orange soles to his boots as he runs in and bowls again full and driving firmly as Patel but straight back at Seals who puts down his right hand and manages to save either mid on or mid off or both a chase back towards the boundary I suspect he's very athletic is uh, Jaden Seals for, for a tall man he reminds me in sort of build and run up if not delivery of Kemar Roach a little bit that's interesting yeah um just in terms of his sort of, sort of athletic run in, the beard is uh, splendid. Now he's decided he wants his square leg mm. to go how far back all the way, says Lamb. Do you want me back all the way? He says behind square on the boundary. So he's telling Rishi Patel, I'm going to bounce you, whether he does or not. In he goes and bowls, a little bit short on off stump, Patel up on his toes just calmly blocking it out to point no run really interesting Morley's cricket isn't it, it is, Le yeah. Leicestershire off to a real flyer Sussex fighting back and now these two are getting their heads down yeah. I mean Rishi Patel raced away didn't he he was a runner ball, run ball. 32 wasn't it yeah he's been made to work rather harder since hmm. working hard now Seals is in and bowls again full. Rishi Patel waits for it and clips it nicely out to mid wicket. Before, you know. It's a long wide chase for Lamb. Should get there, does get there just in front of the meet before Pajara gets his throw away. But Patel should pick up three and indeed does. He's fuming with himself, Jaden Seals. He, he Before he walked back to his mark, he was kicking away at the crease. Just can't, can't quite get it right at the moment. Raises a hand of almost of apology to Lamb. Patel on to 44. 84 for three. Gentleman in front of the meet in, in just the Leicestershire shirt. He must be a uh, must be warm there. In goes Seals and bounces hands. Can we just ducks slightly? Because it was very short. One for the over, says umpire Pollard. Uh, Middlebrook responds. One of two bucket hats which became very popular during the uh, One Day Cup run last season. I think that at that stage there was a sort of fairly limited um, <laughs> edition, so to speak. I think they're readily available now in the club shop. Seals in bowls again, Ooh. short, quick bounce. Yeah, it was but quick. But uh, slightly misdirected. Hanscom just sort of moved inside the line, but that was a, a sort of bouncer that which makes your average club batsman swallow slightly, having gotten out of the way of. <laughs> that was yeah, a that was delivery. It seemed to gather a little bit of pace off the pitch as well. Coming up to half past. I don't know, uh, do you have a, another update? Yes, I will. Seals. Bowls. More conventional length. That's going to be equal to it. Slightly angled bat. Drops it out towards about third slip. And then Seals sort of kicks at the air. He's annoyed with himself for the inconsistency of the overs. Adrian has said he's just sort of striving for rhythm, if you like. Six overs. He's only bowled two overs in this spell. None for 33 for him. So now rather natty pair of shades, <laughs> and uh, Simpson comes to have a word with him. Interesting. Just notice Cheshwar Bajara uh, leaving the field. Ollie Carl's coming on. He's been suffering with a bad back, Cheshwar. He's been missed the game last week against Northamptonshire, and he, he didn't look to be moving that well as he came off the field. Then I mean, just just perhaps, look, perhaps being a little tentative. It's cold winds. It's not, yeah, not no. great for a bad back, is no, it? No, it's not. It's not indeed. Um, we've got time to do some of this over. It's going to be Finn Hudson Prentice who's going to carry on from the Bennett end. He's in and bowls uh, to Patel, who's forward and clips this nicely through square leg and picks up a single. Goes to 45. Had a very good 100 here last year against Sussex. Did uh, uh, Rishi Patel? He's moved on to 45. 
I mean, you see a lot more of him than I do. I mean, I'm just a little surprised that he hasn't been spoken about a little bit more in terms of, you know, I'm not saying he should be playing for England, but sort of, a, you know... Uh, uh, it, it has it, been, it, 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 it was called up by the Lions in the winter yeah. when he went to their training camp um, on the subcontinent. Comes to Prentice again. Bowls, hands give his forward, pace the offside never. And it's just the way that he plays... The right way, isn't it? Well, for this it, 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 setup? It, it, it is the right way. You know, he, he, he you know, he, he, not, you know he, he hits the bad ball. He's a, you know, much like Duckett and Crawley. If the ball's there to be hit, he hits it. And it, and he's and he's shown, I think, good responsibility here as well. Just when you know the free kicks go down, he's you know consolidated with Hanscom. I've, 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 I've always been impressed with him. Only Leicestershire player to score a thousand plus championship runs last season. Hudson Prentice in bowls. And in good delivery by Hudson Prentice, drawing Hanscom forward. He plays to mid-off. There is no run. Although Colin Ackerman, in fairness, did make 987, so he didn't miss it by much. <laughs> I'll commentate on this delivery, then I will uh, play next door for the half-12 update to the listeners in uh, Sussex. Hudson Prentice wanders back to his mark. Three slips in place. Point cover mid-off, mid-on, mid-wicket. And a fine leg. In fact, I can see now Jaden Sills is having a natter away to, I think that's Sean Hunt who's bought him out a drink. In comes Hudson Prentice Bowles. Let, well, I think he beat Hanscom there outside the off stump. Did, yeah. There is no I'm going to disappear for a while, Richard. He bowled really nicely, Finn Hudson Prentice, this morning. Two for 11 from 4.4 overs. is the ball from hand to hand as he walks back up towards the indoor centre at the Bennett end. Turns. Is in and bowls to Hanscom who is back defending a straight delivery. Dropping it down towards short mid-wicket. Jogging in to field the ball because the batsmen were going nowhere. It was Jack Carson. Haynes was swinging his arms around there at uh, extra cover. Still a good half an hour to go before lunch as Hudson Prentice is in. Just got the line wrong there, drifted it onto leg stump and Hanscom, foolish delivery, waited for it, clipped it out to mid wicket and it trickles over the ropes, just a bobbles over and uh, comes to rest about a foot on as far as Hanscom was concerned the right side of the rope Hudson Prentice really cross with himself last ball of the over he actually threw his cap away towards Ollie Carter who's on there at the moment acting as 12th man in the absence of uh, Cheteshwar Pujara and come on to 15 89 for 3 63 for 3 when Lewis Hill was bold that's just his captain his very first ball Stayed a fraction low, came back and hit his off stump, bowled by Hudson Prentice, who the previous delivery had bowled Louis Kimber, removed Kimber's off stump with a, a delivery that came back, slightly loose drive from Louis Kimber, and uh, lost his off stump. And it is going to be Haynes who's going to have a bowl from the Bennett end, so... Jaden Seals, short opening burst, and a fairly short second spell as well. I mean, neither could he quite find his uh, right line and length and rhythm. So Haynes is going to have a go. See if there's a little bit in the wicket for him. Up to the crease comes, up to the wicket comes John Simpson. Haynes, little seamers, bustles in and bowls, turned by Patel the straight and as far as the shortish mid wicket no run so we've got a, a short extra cover a short cover on the drive about three strips back Tom Clark in there and ditto at mid wicket Haynes is in foolish again something of a flourish from Patel as he hits that firmly out, but only as far as Carter at mid on with that very much still a mullet out of the back of his cap. 
makes it very recognisable on the field. Haynes is in and bowls. Patel swings it high this time over Carter, over Long on for six. Bounces over the members' seats down there. Lovely hit from Patel and that is a very stylish way to go to a 50. Lovely shot from Wishy Patel. He does love that shot. And with Haynes' sort of lack of pace, and in that case, lack of movement, and it was rather in the slot. Carter was deepish at mid on, but it was a mid on, certainly not a long on, and that's where he's been sent now. Patel on to 51, 95 for three. Haynes is in again. It's really on to leg stump this time. He dragged his length back, but it was on to leg stump. Patel just leans forward, turns it out through a backward square, out towards the square leg boundary. Carvelas runs in from wide long leg to field. Patel takes one. Moves on to 52. 96 for three, his first uh, 50 of the season. Not out in the second innings against Yorkshire. He's missed for, he says, looking back through his notes, 19 of 34 balls up at Headingley in the first innings. Haynes is in to Hanscom to bowl slowly. Hanscom waits and waits and then blocks the delivery out to that short mid wicket. No run, obviously. Maybe just brought on to see if he can just, just get a little bit of swing, perhaps. The ball in its 22nd over is in and bowls. Did he just play inside the line? Did that one swing past the outside edge into the gloves of Simpson? There was no great celeb. Oh, Hans didn't go into the air, anything like it. Might just have tucked the back behind the front pad there. Peter Hanscom. Patel's figures confirmed there. 59 balls, 8 fours, 1 6. Strike rate last season, although he is an attacking player, made four centuries and three fifties. A strike rate of just under 60, 59.55. One of the fastest of the, of the Leicestershire frontline batsmen, but not excessively so. In comes Hudson Prentice, bowls to Patel. And Again, just tucks him off his legs. Should be two there because it's gone behind square and the sprawling lamb has to run across from mid-wicket. Time, time he does so, gets to the ball. Patel and Hanscom have actually completed a fairly comfortable two in the end. in, bowls, better line on off stump and Patel stretches forward, blocks it back down the pitch towards the former Derbyshire all-rounder who having fielded the ball tosses it out to Haynes at an extra cover to field, to polish a little bit he throws it to Carvelas at mid-off doesn't bother doing any polishing, just lobs it straight to Hudson Prentice who turns, Sussex getting on with it is in and bowls again. Patel is forward. Not sure where that's gone. It's gone behind him towards roundabout leg gully and uh, is called through by Hanscom for a single. He wasn't, as I say, sure where it had gone for a minute. He responded to Hanscom's call. Simpson ran across towards leg gully, picked up and hurled the ball at the stumps at the non strikers and missed them by yards. Carvelas did the backing up. Patel picks up a slightly fortuitous single. And Prentice to Hanscom leaves outside off stump. Sort of a ooh or an ah from all sop at first slip, but he was the only one who thought it was close. Nothing from Clark at second or, or Simpson with the gloves on. 99 for three. His partnership worth 36 now for the fourth wicket. Badly needed by Leicestershire. They won't want to lose another. Before lunch, Hudson Prentice in bowls, just 
turned off his legs by Hanscom out towards square leg again this time Lamb gets there sufficiently quickly to prevent a second a single is what Leicester should settle for 100 up for the Foxes 100 for 3 Hanscom has 16 Patel 55 the 4 3 wickets to go those of Marcus Harris caught behind off the bowling of Barry Carvelis for 24 Louis Kimber was bowled by Finn Hudson Prentice 4 4 very next ball Louis Lewis Hill was bowled by Hudson Prentice off stump in both cases without scoring Hill, of course. Hudson Prentice is in. Patel waits for it and guides the delivery really neatly, wide, just wide of second slip down to third man for four. Really clever shot from Rishi Patel, who, having been very circumspect after the, that loss of three wickets, has now begun to unfurl one or two super shots. And as Adrian, who's coming back alongside pointed out that he said he was a bit surprised there hadn't been a sort of some sort of England structure recognition there has been there has been he has he was called up by the Lions and went out there but uh, as he said he he had some really useful sessions with them but one or two of those who wanted to one or two of the the full England squad wanted to to play a part for the Lions to be to get accustomed to, to playing including Stokes I think so he didn't really get much of a chance out there short extra has come in again James Coles as in goes Haynes oh to um Hanscom who clips us one nicely away through wide straight away that's going to race away for four runs but a little expensive here is uh Tom Haynes and let's share to 108 for three so we're in the 24th over, so let's just rattling along at a little over four and over. It's been a good response uh, by these two. Um, at one stage, let's just 63 for three. So these two have added 45 now for the uh, fourth wicket. Haynes running away from us from the pavilion end. He's in and bowls to Hanscom. That's down the low side. That's a very fine take by John Simpson, and Hanscom may feel he's slightly missed out there. I just wondered whether we might see a little bit of James Coles or Jack Carson before lunch, uh, Richard, just to see if there's anything here for the spinners. I can see Eric Avalos is warming up down at um, down at fine legs. So plenty of options for John Simpson, who has juggled his bowlers around this morning. In comes Haynes. Uh, bowls short. That's not a great delivery. And it's clipped away. And he's lucky to just concede a single there is Tom Haynes. That was almost a long hop, really. And Hanscom just turned the ball easily down to deep backward square. Picks up a single. He goes to 21. 109 for three. Uh, I don't think Sussex will be desperately... I mean, they've picked up these three wickets, but I don't think they'll be desperately pleased with the way they've bowled here this morning. Uh, maybe with the exception of Hudson Prentice. But they have picked up those three wickets. In comes Tom Haynes. In and bowls. That's better. And forward comes Mattel. And plays down the track. There is no run. Very fine half century from Rishi Patel. Good way to go there with a six as well. He went to his maiden first class century with a six at uh, Headingley last season. <laughs> what a great way to do that. Um, Tom Egerton has been in touch. Hello, Tom. Sussex Cricket at bbc.co.uk. Haynes is on his way. Bowls and Patel is back. He just eases that down the ground. Picks up a comfortable single because uh, Chetishwar Pajara was down at long on. And not saving the single at mid on. Patel goes to 60, 110 for three. He says, Great to have county cricket back. And I thought positive signs last week against a side who have come down from the division above. I was wondering if you knew the scheduling of our overseas bowlers, as I noticed we'll have Seals, Anidcat, and McAndrew all on the books. And in comes uh, Haynes Bowles, and forward comes uh, Hanscom plays to short extra cover, fielded by James Coles. And there is no run. End of the over, 110 for three. Tom Haynes, two overs, rather expensive for 13. Patel on 60, Hanscom on 21. Yes, they, they, they will be coming and going throughout the season, is the answer to that, Tom. Jaden Seals is here, I understand, um, pretty much until mid-June, mid but I think there's a very good chance he could well be called up for the West Indies for the, uh, the tour that's happening later on this summer. Uh, but then Nathan McAndrew arrives as a replacement for Jaden Seals. Then McAndrew goes back early September 
and um, a nude cat comes in and replaces him. So um, that's the way that it's going to work. Cheshire Pajara is here until um, halfway through May, and then he's replaced by, and I ought to know who. Uh, if I look at me notes, I'll tell you in a moment. I ought to know. That's apologies from me. All right, Carvela's down the slope. He's back on, bowling onto the legs of Rishi Patel, and he's clipping him out towards square legs. Should be two, could be three. Now they'll settle for two as uh, Seals get there fairly quickly, and he's obviously got a good arm on him. Patel on to 62. Just one or two comments are looking on, on the stream. Haynes sort of question mark, question mark from uh, one or two of the Sussex supporters bowled 92 overs in just over championship cricket last season tom haynes picked up seven wickets carvelas is in bold grunt of effort and wasn't didn't get that one through that quickly um just getting warmed up again it was straight though and blocked by patel out towards pajara who's back with us at middle uh daniel hughes was the name I was looking for, who comes in halfway through the season, will play some T20 and Championship cricket. So, so Sussex, Paul Fabre sort of calls it his pool of overseas players that they sort of juggle around throughout the season. Carvelas in bowl short and uh, fastened on it quickly, Rishi Patel there, Can't pulled it around, swiveled it around, pretty square, just behind square. Bounces around about 15 yards inside the ropes, and uh, Paul Farbrace does the fielding in front of the the gates down there on the Milligan Road. Saves Jaden Seals a long run around Rishi Patel on to 66 off 69. He's really picked it up again, and uh, certainly picked that one up. Saw it very early from Carvelas. He needs to get through, and they have dropped square leg back now. Patel, just, just, uh, Scarvey, let's just hang on a sec. Let's just see where he ends up. He's gone a little bit behind square. Field it out there. Uh, Scarvelas is in. Bowls nice and straight to Patel, who, having picked up his four, is very careful. Just locks the delivery back down the wicket to Harry Carvelas. Paul Farbrace is just sitting down below us. He's sitting on the roller. Um... Whilst he'd be pleased Sussex have picked up these three, I, I don't think it's been a desperately impressive performance by Sussex with the ball this morning. I think I'd be a little disappointed having won the toss. There's been, for my money, a few too many four balls this morning. Carvelas bowls, that could be another. It is going to be another because it was full and it was on driven in some style by Rishi Patel. And style is a word you'd associate with him. He's a, Oh, beautiful. beautiful, correct, oh, beautifully lovely. correct batsman, but he has a lovely follow through, something of a flourish as well. And an on drive is always a pleasing thing to see one hit as well as that. He moves on to 70 of 71 balls, 120 for three. And the point you were making, Adrian, really, that they're back up to five and over. That burst of wickets slowed everything down as far as Leicester were concerned, obviously. Carvelas is in better length. Patel defends on the back foot, plays it firmly out to short-ish mid-wicket, end of the over, slightly expensive one from Eric Carvalis, two boundaries in it, one for 38 from six from Carvalis, did produce a super delivery to get rid of Marcus Harris and um, sort of opened the gates for Sussex. And it was followed up well by Finn Hudson Prentice picking up two in two. Since then, however, Leicester sure have uh, righted the ship, so to speak. Partnership of 57 so far for the fourth wicket. Well, I wonder if we might see some spin before lunch. And we are indeed. It's James Coles who's going to come in and bowl. Interesting that Coles preferred by John Simpson as the first spinner. Jack Carson is the, you, th you would say, is the frontline spinner. But James Coles picked up six wickets last week against Northamptonshire. Um, he was away with the England Lions, as was Richie Patel in the winter, um, and spent a lot of time with, with Graham Swan. He spoke to me last week about how much he enjoyed that, how much he enjoyed uh, bowling against world-class players. And one thing that James was talking about was the fact that he can get extra bounce, uh, which was something that Graham Swan picked up on. I mean, prior to this season, he'd only taken 19 first-class wickets 
at 69. And indeed, last season, um, he only took five wickets all season. So he's already surpassed that this season. And um, Paul Farbrace has said openly that he believes that James Coles will play for England. I mean, this is the way that he bats, but it's very useful having somebody who can bat as nicely as he can, but can also um, bowl left arm spin. So he's into the attack. He's the, the, uh, the spinning option. Yeah, he picked up three for 43 in the first innings last week against Northamptonshire and three for 36 in the second. So that there is a slip and a short leg in place, keeping Peter Hanscom company. The sun has pretty much disappeared. It's quite a chilly day here in Leicester now. Uh, but it's dry, which is the main thing, as Coles is in, bowls, and Patel, um, Patel, Hanscom plays that to short leg. I think that might have come off the pad, actually, either way. To uh, Now that short leg has gone to a leg slip, which is interesting. So there's a leg slip and a first slip. Pushed it through a bit there, didn't he? Yes, he did. And Coles, so makes a lot of sense. Hanscom just waiting, surveying that leg side field as Coles in again. Bowls. Hanscom stretches forward, plays down the offside of the track. And there is no run. We're in the 26th over of the morning. It hasn't been a particularly speedy run rate. No, it hasn't. Um, over eight, yeah. Coles over eight, yeah. in again. Bowls and clipped away by Hanscom nicely onto the leg side. Picks up a single. It's something that he goes to 22, 121 for three. It's something that. John Simpson will have an eye on, and rightly so, because Sussex last year were sometimes painfully slow um, and got deducted points. And they'll be very, very keen in what I think is going to be a very tight second division this season. I, th I think you can, my own view is you could pretty much make a case that all eight sides have got a claim to going up. Coles, and again, Bowles is a little too short. and has a look at that leg side boundary there is a man at deep mid wicket but he's just looking over there because that was short from James Coles and he may not get away with bowling another one there Coles off one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight paces in and bowls and he's down the wicket but well there we are he's hammered that down the ground and that's gone all the way for six runs well it's a super shot and he's not going to be he's not going to be bowled two is he here Rishi Patel, I mean, James Hill's just come on and Patel takes a, a step down the wicket and smashes him back over Coles' head for six runs. What an innings this is. He goes to 76 of 74 balls, including two sixes. Well, he's got form against Sussex. He did this last season, but this is wonderful batting. It really is. Used his feet and just belted the ball back over Coles' head. And these two having come together to spray coppers. Coles in again, and Patel is at it again, this time down the wicket to James Coles. Coles just saw him coming and dropped that one a little shorter. End of the over, 127 for three. Patel 76, Hanscom 22. These two coming together when Lewis Hill was out when the score was on 63. So they've added, what, 37 and 27, is that 64? 64 yeah. it is, yeah. yeah. For the fourth wicket and fine partnership there's been live cricket here on the BBC BBC Radio Sussex BBC Radio Leicester Adrian Harms and Richard Ray on commentary duties from our perch um, in the pavilion end of the ground here at Grace Road Freddie's arrived for his 15th season at uh, Grace Road Freddie one of uh, Martin Brunt's lovely Welsh Springer Spaniels his 15th season that's a lot of suffering isn't it bless him <laughs> But he arrived in time to see Rishi Patel's 50. Harry Carvelas down the slope, bowls to Peter Hanscom, who leaves straight delivery out, straight hitch delivery. Doesn't do by straight hitch, I mean, it didn't do anything in terms of movement. Obviously, wasn't straight enough to hit the stumps taken by Simpson. Zero reaction from anybody out there. Patter, bowler, wicketkeeper, slips. Simpson just took it, tossed it to second slip. Tom Clark blows on his hand, just the two slips now. Ball stop at first. Carvelas is in. That is straight, as in straight at off stump, but Hanscom equal to it, blocks it out towards mid on, intercepted en route by mid wicket running across. Balanced morning, perhaps, now. 
certainly swung Sussex's way when they oh, picked totally. up three wickets for just the four runs, including two and two balls. Carvelas and he just push it back towards Sussex, comes in and bowls two hands come edges, drops short, I think, yeah. of slip. Certainly Simpson dived across, tried to get his hand to it, was taken on the bounce, just rising up again at first slip by Tom Allsop, but genuine edge and uh, unlucky by Carve from Carvelis's point yeah. of view. Didn't quite have enough to reach first slip. Just nips it about, Harry Carvelis. That was a good delivery and he lured Peter Hanscom into that shot. Simpson did his best to get there. No, it was well short, actually. Um, seeing the replay, four or five feet in front of first slip, probably. Carvelas is in that one, bounces a little bit outside off stump. So when the bounce has been inconsistent, and it has only done that, been inconsistent four or five times throughout the morning, probably three or four have kept low. And that one just, just bounced a little bit. It's been from that Bennett end. No, it has. That That's sometimes the way of it here at um, the Upton Steel County Ground, Grace Road. If there is any inconsistency about that, Oh, it is going to stay low. It tends to be from that from that far end. Carvelas is in. Bowls on to middle, middle and leg. Hanscom just uh, pushes it calmly out to Coles. At that mid wicket Coles, like Carvelas, sporting a sun hat. I was just sort of thinking, you know, whose morning it's been. I mean, it's. I would say it's been Leicestershire's morning. I, I think when you put into bat. Probably want four wickets, don't you, from yeah. a captain's point of view yeah. in the morning session. They might yet get it. Carvelis is ready to go, but then he just, I don't know whether he quite lost his run up there or looked up and saw that Hanscom wasn't quite ready. Either way, he pulls out of the run, in, turns round, goes back to his mark, comes in to finish what will be his seventh over and bowls. Hanscom drives, puts down his left hand, Carvelis. Might just have brushed his fingers. Either way, mid-off diving across to his right completed the stop, and there was no run. 27 overs, 127 for three. Patel, 76 from 75. Certainly, it's been his morning, one way or another. And it's got yes. 22 from 50. Yes, it certainly has. Um, and we can see, I don't know, the, the, all the information you need is on that scoreboard at the far end of the ground. It's, it's all there, and I've just noticed the run rate is there as well, which I hadn't previously noticed. 4.7 and over, which is pretty good going in uh, county championship cricket. Uh, James Coles is going to bowl. They haven't put an over rate up yet. They'll do it at, during the mm. interval, but it'll be interesting to see, given we've had 27 overs and there's only four minutes until... Yeah. We should have 32, shouldn't we? Well, we should do, and I've, I've seen no reason why we can't, to be honest, or why we shouldn't. Coles is coming to bowl to Rashid Patel. Patel is forward and drives firmly to mid-wicket footer by Carter, who shies at the stumps rather ambitiously, but there is no run. Uh, John Simpson will be very keen to get this and another over in before the lunch break. The 29 probably keeps you out of trouble. Coles, in again, bowls and Patel is solidly forward down the offside of the track but there is no run slip and a leg slip of the close fielders the early morning sun has largely disappeared it's overcast with a chilly breeze blowing across the ground but the good news is that we are playing coals in a little bit more uh, pace is the wrong word but it was a quick delivery that's the word I was looking for oh three balls so we should should certainly get another the, the green digital clock is showing 12.57. Coles. Coles to uh, Patel, who looks like he's very much playing for lunch. Plays down the other side of the track and there is no run. He's done his bit. Just a reminder for people joining us. Marcus Harris out for 24. Louis Kimber for four. Next ball, uh, Lewis Hill for a duck at that stage. Leicestershire 63 for three. Coles in again. Bowls. And well, he's not playing for lunch now. He's hit that for four runs. That was too short from James Coles. And it was really rather asking to be hit. It was down the leg side, and it, we may well be just a few moments from lunch, but Patel wasn't going to miss out on that. He goes to 80. 131 for three. Uh, I have, um, very controversial, well, not controversially, but down at Sussex this season, no floodlights in yeah, London. Is it really the same here? I'm surprised about that. No, as far as I'm aware, unless you are, are going to use them. Coles in bowl. 
Wales and cut away by Batum and more runs here is at least one and probably two uh, out to Jack Carlson who's sweeping on that cover boundary Batum goes to 82 and Leicestershire to 133 for three at the end of the over the clock says 12.59 and we will have one more over um, before lunch yes Sussex um, John Philby the Sussex chair explained why last week um, 120 pounds an hour. 150 pounds an hour um, to keep that. Apparently, when because of the sort of lights Sussex have got, even when you turn them off, they have to stay on. Okay. A and uh, so there is a cost. But also, John said that's not the sole reason Sussexville cricket should be played. You know, in natural light, um, they don't feel it's particularly good cricket when the lights are on. Um, you know, I think I think the jury's out. To be honest. Carvelis is in. Oh, goes past the, the outside ball. edge of Hanscom's bat. Hanscom wasn't sure whether to go forward or back. It was a super length and, uh, well, lovely delivery. Could so easily have just nibbled the outside edge of Hanscom's bat. And that one did carry through to Simpson. Yeah, it did. That was a good delivery. Just to come back to that point of you're making about the floodlights and also raises the issue of when game should start and there's an awful lot of people oh. now feel we should be starting certainly in April at 10.30 definitely as we do in September Carvelas is in outside off stump allowed to go through yeah definitely and in fact that was something that John, John came and spoke to us the Sussex chair for a good three quarters of an hour last week and he, he said that I do not know why we're not starting and Paul Farbrace at the end of the match said every morning apart from the first morning when it was wet they could have played at half past ten every morning and here this morning weather was glorious at half past ten and then you're going off for bad light. It, it, it's, it's nonsensical, really. Paul was making the point that in other countries around the world, nobody starts at 11 o'clock. It's just a tradition, isn't it? I suppose. In goes Carvelas. Bowls a little bit short this time. Hanscom really high left elbow on the back foot. As he blocks that one out into the offside. John Philby, the Sussex chair, was also explaining he sits on a committee of six clubs. I forget who the others were. Um, and this committee sort of makes recommendations to, uh, you know, about various things around cricket and that's certainly one of them he said is right up their agenda it shouldn't be that difficult really Richard should it I mean what we know we've, we've changed plenty of laws over, you know, the, why over can't, the years why so 11 o'clock yeah. Carvelas bowls drifting on towards Midland leg Hanscom no great movement as ever just turns it out to Coles, who's at that shortish mid wicket. Will be lunch after the next two deliveries. Possibly after one if it takes a wicket. And Simpson just trying to add a little bit to the pressure on Hanscom with these two deliveries. Brings Coles out of that short straight mid wicket into third slip and summons Pajara from mid on to a sort of between mid on and mid wicket. Carvelas is in. Hanscom pushes it straight to Pujara. One ball to go before lunch on 3-3 three, three for three. Neither side will be dissatisfied, I don't think. It's been a sort of, now, if assuming Hanscom gets through, it's been a sort of balanced morning. So it's perhaps sort of hoped for w one more wicket, but they picked up three of the top order of the Leicestershire. Just 133 on the board. They'll be a bit concerned about Patel's form, perhaps. Carvelas in bowl, straight, blocked by Hanscom, and that, ladies and gentlemen, will indeed be lunch. 1 3 3 4 3 Leicestershire. Wishy Patel. 82 not out. I'll just do an update for BBC Radio Leicester. And they do go into lunch on 133 for three. 59 without loss when Marcus Harris and Rishi Patel gave the Foxes something of a flying start. But then Harris was caught behind off Harry Carvelas for 24. Louis Kimber lost his off stump to Finn Hudson Prentice for four. And when Lewis Hill also lost, lost his off stump to the same bowl of the very next ball, Foxes looked in trouble at 63 for three. But Patel has played quite beautifully. He's going in for lunch on 82, not out. And that's off just 82 
great deliveries. He's also hit three sixes in that and looked in prime form. Peter Hanscom, the Australia international, has given him solid support. 22 not out of 56. And so far they've put on 70 for the fourth wicket. Balanced morning then here at Grace Road. 133 for three. As we say, is lunch. You heard the little summary. Adrian and I will go and uh, have some lunch ourselves, and hopefully you'll be able to join us for the resumption, which should be prompt. No sign of any rain here at Graceland's at the moment. We'll be back with you in around about 35 minutes' time.
we're at ball, yep. which by all accounts goes softer much more quickly than the Duke's ball, to which less to which all English seamers are accustomed or have been accustomed over the years. It is uh, more absorbent of the moisture that's uh, around England early. So the value of using it, and, and the value of using it is, is essentially really from England's point of view because they want potential England bowlers to get vaguely used to using the Kookaburra in case they're selected for the Ashes series, that being the ball used in Australia. The value of using it at this time of year is, is, is questionable. You'd have thought Hudson Prentice is in to Hanscom's appeal for leg before. Hudson Prentice's appeal was somewhat delayed. It's something of an afterthought yes. as he went down the wicket. He saw Simpson and the slips go up. It did look to stay a, a touch low and he did look to be pushing across the line a, a fraction. Peter Hanscom, so we'll have, have a look at the replay and try and see. Yeah, it was going on down the leg side yeah, a little it, bit. It, it lacked <laughs> conviction. Just need to, to straighten a touch more. Height wasn't an issue, that's for sure, but it looked to be going on down the leg side. Hudson Prentice is in to Hanscom. Comes in slightly from off stump. He stays fairly anchored in the crease, Hanscom. Blocks it out. Back down the pitch towards... Finn Hudson Prentice. He was very unlucky in his, when he moved to Sussex, wasn't he? He got injured and was injured for much of his first season. Yes, I think, he was. On the move from Derbyshire. Yeah, he, he's been suffering with back problems, Finn. He had a terrific winter and then suffered with uh, back problems, but he seems to be back to his best, which is which is good. Absolutely, because he's a fine player. In he goes and bowls to Peter Hanscom on off stump. Hanscom blocks it out into well, the offside. Um, he was Sussex's player of the season last year, the leading run scorer in the club. Uh, 879 runs at 48, which is pretty useful for a number seven. Uh, I don't think Finn bowled quite as well as he he, he hoped he would. Um, took 20 first-class rickets, but at 47, uh, I mean, that's expensive. A little bit. But at the moment, his average is 12 and a half. No, it isn't. It's 11 and a half. Yeah. In goes Hudson Prentice and bowls driving, looking to drive his handscum, not really timing it, and it rather skews off towards straightish mid on where the athletic i think we must describe him as now pajara after mm. that stop in the previous over moves smartly to his left to field <laughs> and there's no run two for 23 hudson prentice from 6.4 overs now The slope he comes, bowls to Hanscom outside, off stump, slashed away by Hanscom to the wide third man. That's Tom Haynes. Boundary, yeah. but Tom, towards the wide third man boundary, but Tom Haynes was lurking rather craftily behind a pillar. <laughs> I, I, I could not see him. I didn't think there was anybody there, but he's sort of a deepish backward point. And I thought, well, that's come back quickly. And they've come back because Tom Haynes had fielded it. I do apologise. He was lucky to get away with that. He was a little bit, was there to be put away, but he, he found Haynes in that deepish backward point position. In he goes, Hudson Prentice, and again looking to drive, and again looking to hit it straight, and again it comes off a slightly inside-ish part of the bat, and uh, runs out towards a very straight mid-on. Instead, I suspect of the sort of mid-off, wide mid-off area through which Hanscom was trying to hit it. Yes, indeed. It's going to be uh, Daddy Lamb who's going to carry on from this, the uh, pavilion. And a very good afternoon if you're just joining us here on BBC Radio Sussex, BBC Radio Leicester, Adrian Harms and Richard Ray on commentary duties. The sun is just trying to come out, actually. I can just see it glinting off the hospitality tent at the Bennett end of the ground. People in there enjoying their lunch, no doubt craning their necks to watch the cricket as well as in comes Lamb and bowls and um, Bertone is going to get runs down towards third bound. I don't think it's going to go for four it's been chased down there by um, Finn Hudson Prentice I think all the way down in the distance he gets in a good throw but not before Patel has gone back for two more runs he goes to 87 off 86 balls and if you missed the commentary this morning a morning really dominated by Rishi Patel batted beautifully and I didn't make a note of the lunchtime score which is very poor. He was on 82 off 81, 133 for 3. 
Thank you. Comes the lamb bowl, and Patel is forward solidly right behind that, plays into the offside. And there is no run. Sorry, Richard, he was on. He was on 82, not out of. And Hanscom. Obviously, not out of 81. And Hanscom was on 22 off 56. Thank you. I um, need to get myself organised. Your thoughts were on your Mediterranean tart. They were, <laughs> which was very nice, actually. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. <laughs> and forward comes with each other. I think that's what's impressed me, uh, Richard, is the fact that he's, you know, he's defended stoutly when he's had to. You know, he, he hasn't gone gun ho all the time. I don't, yeah, what he learned last season, what he did so well was, was convert. Yeah. Famous last words, but... He'll be determined to do so here, I'm sure. Again, over the wicket bowls, and Patel defends again down the offside. Tidy stuff from uh, Danny Lamb, who's in his seventh over. Two maidens, no wicket for 18. Just the two slips in place now. John Simpson having to go slightly on the defensive. That could be for two reasons. A, that he might feel that Leicester are starting to get himself established in a good position here, but also, as Richard was saying, the Kookaburra ball, which we all know goes soft, and it's very hard work for the seamers. In comes uh, Lamb down the leg side, lucky to get away with that. That's a poor delivery taken by Simpson, no run. I mean, uh, you can understand some of the thinking behind the Kookaburra ball, Richard, that, you know, you don't want in April, you know, a seamer running in, taking seven for 42 on a green top with a Duke ball. By the same standard, you really don't want a competition whereby the ball is going soft, it, you know, the ball is getting wet because the outfields are damp, and after 30 overs, it, it's virtually impossible, well, impossible, very difficult to take wickets. In comes Lambeau, short, played onto the onside by Patel, and there is uh, no run. It is the end of the over, tidy enough from uh, Danny Lamb, who has now bowled seven overs, uh, no wicket for 18. And Leicestershire, 139 for three, Patel 87, Hanscom on 23. Yeah, Sussex supporters questioning John Simpson's decision to put Leicestershire in. Might have, want to have a look at some of the, some of the other scores. Durham put Warwickshire in, and at lunch, Warwickshire about 150 for nine. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. They are. <laughs> so, uh, an interesting call at Edgebaston. Hudson Prentice down the slope, bowls to Hanscom, very straight. Hanscom back down the wicket to the all rounder. There's no run. Yeah, Warwickshire 157 without loss. You're quite right. I'm um, having been put in. Somerset put in at the Oval or 140 for one. Well, this sort of happened last week as well. It it's, did. It's by no means always. It, it shouldn't be a given, I don't think, to put sides in. I know it tends to be in April. But not 99 for two. They won the toss and did elect a bat. Yeah. That's an apprentice. Ball short, pulled in the air, could be caught. He's going to get away with it. Oh, Ooh. that was lucky indeed on the part of Hanscom. He skied it. He went for the pull hook, and Finn Hudson Prentice can't believe it. Hands on his hips because it was up in the air a long time, but somehow it went just over mid wicket, wide of mid wicket, ditto mid on. It fell absolutely between them, and it was a uh, Pajara who was the sort of closest to getting there. He's not the swiftest over the ground, but I suspect. You know, the swiftest of the Sussex fielders wouldn't have got there. Lucky indeed for Peter Hanscom, who picks up a single, but he's going to get a couple more of those bounces. I suspect, having seen that, Hudson Prentice, unlucky, comes in, bowls to Patel, full and straight, and Patel just strokes it in defence out towards Pajara, and there's no run, but that could easily yeah, could have been it. the first breakthrough of the afternoon. Yeah. Notice uh, Alior making his debut for Hampshire. Their game at Durham was rained off completely last week, but Ali opening the batting uh, made 10. Uh, Hampshire 101 for two. James Vince through to a half century, probably not the only one he'll score this season. Hudson Prentice bowls solidly forward is Patel, very nice and correct. And, uh, Having seen the ball bounce a couple of times before being taken by Hudson Prentice in his right hand, just that little bit of a, a flourish from Rishi Patel. He's a strong young man. Well 
built, big shoulders. Hits the ball a long way when it when he connects. 140 for three. So they have more than doubled the score. Got some Prentice bowls, and again, with a lot of time, but are waiting for it. Doesn't try and overhit it though. Steers it firmly, but only as far as Carvelas, slightly wide of mid-off. Hmm. Immediately, Hudson Prentice starts directing traffic. He's going to make changes, and he sends mid-wicket to deep-ish, sort of three quarters of the way back, backwards square. Bustles down the slope and bowls to Rishi Patel, who is forward with an angled bat, guiding it down, looking to get it wide of Gully. Can't do so, and moving across to his right, James Coles makes the stop. Not cleanly, but he makes the stop and prevents Patel taking one. End of another testing hmm. over from Finn Hudson Prentice, who it's probably fair to say has uh, been the pick of the... Sussex attack so far in this innings. Eight overs, three maidens, two for 24. No, I would agree. I'm much better from uh, Sussex since lunch in terms of consistency. Just notice looking at other scores. Harry Brook, who made that very good 100 against Leicestershire last week, out for 26. Yorkshire, just break off as in comes Danny Lamb. Bowls and forward come handsome. Inside edge of the bat, he picks up... Um, a single to mid-wicket. James Coles was very quickly back and got in the throw, but I think, in fairness, uh, Patel running to the danger end was always going to get home. Total goes up by 141 uh, for three. Yeah, Yorkshire 107 for five uh, against Gloucestershire. Uh, Zermanak Ter has taken three wickets there. Gloucestershire had a miserable season last season, but, I, you know, I, I think every county, Richard, in this Division 2, uh, you could make a case for saying, well, they, you know, you know they, 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 they've all got a chance. If Gloucester should beat Yorkshire, that, uh, it would be a bit of an eye opener there. Totally. At a change of personnel, haven't they? In comes Lamb Bowles to Patel, steers that into the offside, and there is no run. Maybe they've also managed to do something about the Bristol wickets, which tend to be terribly oh, flat. Don't oh, they? awful. Yeah, I, I sat through a, a game a couple of seasons ago down there, and it was. Um, it was hard work. Just, you know, I, I, I think it's great for them. I mean, you know, uh, there was a lot of talk I read last week about the game at Lords and people saying, oh, it was great to watch it, watch all these records be broken. But oh, I'm not sure. They don't seem like much of a game to me. Uh, Lamb runs straight through the crease. Um, I'm not sure if Rishi Patel wasn't quite ready or whether Lamb lost his run up either way. The umpire signals a dead ball. I mean, that, you know, that, I, I mean, Mike, Mike Atherton wrote wrote a piece about it in the Times. I noticed, you know, and he was saying pretty much the same. And I, I agree with him, really. I mean, you, you know, that, 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 that's that, that's not going to get people back to watching county cricket, is it? You know, six hundred either side, and the game is, it, it is a stalemate. Lamb in bowls, clipped away by uh, Patel to mid on fielded by Pajara, and there is no run. Much better from Sussex since lunch. I think I haven't picked up any wickets, but the line and length has been good from Lamb and. Hudson Prentice, they're making the batsman play. If nothing really they can hit at the moment, and Patel is just playing, playing every ball on his merits. He has 87, Hanscom 25. These two coming together when Leicestershire was 63 for three. Danny Lamb is on his way, running away from us. Bowl short, and he's out. He gets, is he picked up? He has. And Rishi Patel goes, and just as I said, he was being patient. It wasn't a great delivery from Danny Lamb, to be fair. It was short, or maybe he intended it because Rishi Patel went after it. He's got it looking to hook the ball away. He's got a thin edge, and it's gone through to John Simpson, who takes the catch down the leg side. And Rishi Patel, I think, much like Marcus Harris, will be really annoyed to have got out in that fashion. I think he just might have gloved it, hooking. Um, I suppose you could say unlucky, but I think it's... As you said, Adrian, I think that that's good bowling. I think, mm. in a way, he was set up, and uh, that's a really huge breakthrough. I was probably my fault from less supporters' point of view for talking about Rishi Patel and, and converting, but it was sort of there to be hit, but it was down the leg side, and there's always that, that risk when, when, when you go for the hook in those circumstances that you're chasing it a little bit, and that's what happened. I just have caught the glove and it was taken by Simpson. 
Yeah, and I just wonder as well, I mean, it's very easy to say with hindsight, it's, it's been good bowling by Sussex since lunch. They kept it yeah. tight and an opportunity came along and maybe Rishi Patel is thinking, right, I've got a real opportunity here. That's going to go for four. I'm not quite in the right position. And uh, either a, th a, a, a thin edge or off the glove, as Richard was saying. It goes through to John Simpson, who makes no mistake. So oh, There is a, you know, a long leg, and when it is down the leg side, it's not... What sometimes coaches say, a, a really percentage shot is, is, is the gain, potential gain. You, you've got to get a lot. I think he'll be chastising himself for, for having played any sort of shot at it at all, yeah. Rishi Patel. In the end, so 141 for four. Liam Travaskis comes to the wicket for the first time in Leicestershire Colours. I've interviewed Liam Travaskis. Um, when he was playing for Durham, there was a game that our regular commentator Martin Emerson wasn't at, and so I, I interviewed Liam after I think it was last season down at uh, down at Hove. Made the move from Durham. Oh, I thought he was a good cricketer, good all-round cricketer. Yes, he came up and he was twelfth man last uh, week at, at Headingley in, with Rahan Ahmed playing, and uh, he came up and did a couple of stints of commentary, and uh, yeah, he was good value. Yeah, it's great when you get the players on. In comes Lamb, bowls to Tabaskis, who's well forward to his first ball and punches that to mid-off. There is no run footed by Pajara, so the pendulum has ebbed to and fro in this game so far. Let's you off to an absolute flyer uh, this morning. 59 for the first wicket with Harris and Battelle dispatching the ball to all, all parts. Sussex then fighting back, picking up three wickets for the addition of just four runs, and that very good partnership between Battelle Peter Hanscom. This in comes Outland Bowls. That's short and ducked underneath by Liam Travaskis. That is the end of the Danny Land over. Fine over as well. Picking up a wicket. He's bowled eight overs. I think that's going to click over to three maidens and has taken one for 19. Let's just now 141 for four. And that partnership between Hanscom and Mattel was worth uh, 41 plus 39. 78. Yes, exactly. right. Yeah, 141, 37, yes, you're correct. <laughs> I just did my <laughs> long <laughs> subtraction. Well done, well done. <laughs> my math teacher. There is the partnership figure up on the board, but it has, it has clicked over to oh. naught between Travaskis. Is six, six is high-ish, perhaps from what we've seen of Liam Travaskis playing for Durham, but that's one of the reasons he moved, I think, because he wasn't getting too much of an opportunity. Hudson Prentice is in to Hanscom, who has more responsibility now. He is the senior man at the crease. He has to dig in, and uh, Leicestershire, they were a similar sort of position last week against Yorkshire. They lost uh, the top five for 159. They were 115 for four, 159 for five. Hanscom, Curry, Cox and uh, Ben Mike sort of dug them out of that hole, but they're in a bit of a hole right now. Hudson Prentice is in. Hanscom is, again, minimal foot movement, just pushing the ball carefully out into the offside. Comfortable stop out there in, in, in the covers by Lamb, the wicket-taking Lamb. Coles is encouraging clapping away at sort of full slip gully there lifted by that wicket Sussex Hudson Prentice is in Hanscom is on his back foot steering the delivery out towards backward point at backward point is Tom Haynes I'm well, just looking at the rest of this Leicestershire lineup got as good a player as Tom Scriven coming in at number nine. That, that really is a decent batting lineup. Batted beautifully at Hove last year in that run chase. Yeah, made a 50 against Yorkshire and as I say a, a very badly needed 50. Had some Prentice bowls solidly forward. Lee weights forward as now as I say big stride with Peter Hanscom. Pushes out into the offside. There's no run. 172 first class matches for Peter Hanscom. He's approaching 10,400 first class runs. 
average is 38.7, which is pretty good. In goes Hudson Prentice, driving, but a little late on it is Hanscom. It squirts out, rather, to Haynes at the backward, deepish backward point position. This is good from Sussex. It is very good. Post lunch. Yeah, very good. Has it only been, what, eight runs since lunch? They made Leicestershire work for those eight runs, and they picked up a wicket. Mm. And those two facts are probably not unrelated. Hans Prentice bowls, Hanscom is driving, but again not timing it, just, just struggling a little bit at the moment. Peter Hanscom, he looks quizzically down at the bottom of his bat, and just, just shakes his yeah, head. he did. And that one, and rehearses the shot. It will come if he's out there. Is it, is it a bit more blue around now, or is that sort of just darker? Um, I think darker it's darker cloud. I, you know, I, can't, I can't work out whether it's a, a hole in the cloud or, or, or whether sort it's of darker, darker yeah. slaty, grey, bluey yeah. cloud. But um, no suggestion of rain. That's the main thing. No, and looking at the forecast, I mean, it looks pretty good for the first three days. Cold on Sunday. Um, Monday looks a little bit iffy, but that's, that's a long way away. The sun glinting off the roof of the hospitality as in comes uh, Lamb and Bowles, clipped onto the leg side by Liam Travascus, who's yet to get off the mark. He's only faced three deliveries and there is no run. But very interesting looking at, a, I mean, the headline on the BBC Cricket website is, you know, the, the bat dominating ball, and, you know, th th this is only going to add more to people saying, you know, is the kookaburra really what we should be doing? You know, is, is that the problem? Is it the wickets are too batter friendly? Uh, who knows? But a, a lot of runs around the country. In comes Lamb. Bowls. Ooh, forward comes Travaskis and plays a little uncertainly onto the onside footed by Pajara. No run. So just to make that point, Essex 153 for two against Kent. Hampshire 110 for two against Lancashire. Notts 128 for two against Worcestershire. Somerset 158 for one against Surrey. Warwickshire 177 without loss against Durham. Glamorgan 81 for two against Derbyshire. Uh, North Hans 119 for one against Middlesex. In comes Lamb and Bowles. And Travaskis plays it into the offside. There's an Ood and R no run. The, the two games that really go against the grain there are Yorkshire 124 for five at Bristol. And I guess here where four wickets have gone down for Leicestershire. And wanders back to his mark. Three slips are back in place. John Simpson on the attack as much as possible. And there was a glimmer of sunshine across the ground as in comes Lamb, bowls, forward comes Travaskis. Plays that very correctly to mid on, and there is no run. Good cricket, absorbing cricket. Leicestershire wanting to build on that very good partnership of 78 between Peter Hanscom and Rishi Battelle. Sussex probing away. Another wicket or two, and as I say, they do back down a long way to Leicestershire, but in comes Lamb. Short, pulled away by Travaskis, and the short ball isn't going to work on this occasion. It's pulled away for four runs, back into a square by uh, Liam Travaskis. And the first boundary since lunch, 145 for four. Yeah, he saw that early, didn't he? And it was comfortable for him. There was nobody out there, and it was a pretty safe shot. It didn't really get up unlike the delivery which dismissed or saw the end of, of Rishi Patel, which did get up. For Leicester supporters who don't know too much about Liam Travaskis, he's 24, he's going to be 25 in a week's time. April the 18th. And he's from Cumbria. He's a Carlisle boy. Lamb in bowls. Forward comes Travaskis, plays down the on side of the track, there is no run. It is the end of the over, 145 for four. Hanscom 25, Travaskis on four. And Scott Curry, who is Brad Curry's brother. Um, Brad, who's um, had his contract renewed for limited overs cricket for Sussex, plays for Scotland. His brother Scott, is he here full time? Because I think when he played at Hove last year, he was on loan. <coughs> he's still on loan, but he's on loan for the season. Right, OK. So I suppose, strictly speaking, he's still a Hampshire player, but uh, he will be with Leicestershire all... Yeah. Did he play in the final? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think he was right. No, eligible. You're not, uh, yeah. I think he played he, for Hampshire. Yes, he played at... Oh, yes, I think you're right. Yes, I think he did. And um, he certainly played at 
at Hove against Sussex last season. Hudson Prentice looking for his third wicket comes in and bowls to Hanscom who lick inside edge but he does turn his wrists on it maybe being a little unfair to him there runs away towards backward square Jaden Seals picks up throws in Hanscom picks up one I say he's uh, from Carlisle he, was, he went to school in Penrith so he was born in Carlisle it might be one of those sort of yeah cases Liam Travaskis but he hasn't played that much first class cricket again one of the reasons for his uh, move I suppose this is just his 28th first class game four more runs and he's got a thousand as in goes Hudson Prentice bowls to him he's forward quite a firm push hard hands bounces a bit I'd Sorry, I, no, I, was say, I, I admire cricketers who, who who do that. Who think, well, I'm not getting an opportunity. I'm, I'm going to move. But, you know, because moving from Durham, it's like uh, Ollie Robinson going from Kent to Durham, isn't it? You know, people think you just need to do. And, and Ollie Robinson has certainly advanced. He's got Durham in terms of you know big, big changes. But perhaps it says something about ambition as well. Some Prentice bowls. Travaskis leans forward. Wait. He wraps out as it bounces out into the offside. Well, I think he's a good signing for Leicestershire. It's like for like. Callum Parkinson, left arm spinner, going up to Durham. Liam Travask is coming uh, down here. I suppose what he does get blessed this year is, is, is a little more steel in the middle order that they perhaps P need it. Potentially, yes. He, he looks to be a better bat than, than Callum, with respect to Callum, who was, was a doughty fighter. But in goes Hudson Prentice, bowls, leans forward, angled bat, bounces a couple of times, stopped at, uh, at third slip. James Cole by Coles, who mm. wrings his hands <laughs> as it bounced off them. Third bounce, I think it was. I think the number on Trabascus is back 80 is the number he had at Durham. I have to ask him what particular, if any, significance it had uh, has for him. In goes Hudson Prentice Bowles. That's going to be another couple, I would think. He's turned it out towards me to wicket. In fact, it might be four. And that is 1,000 first class runs for Liam Trabraskis. What a nice way to, to go to it with a nicely clipped off his toes, too deep mid wicket. So two boundaries for Trabraskis. Move him on to eight. And as I say, on to 1,000 first class runs. Shot wasn't it? He's got the 150 as well. A little bit of applause for that 150. It's Hudson Prentice is in. Travaskis again very solidly presses forward. Back down the pitch it goes to Hudson Prentice who just uh, kicks it up with the side of his foot and then throws it to a fielder because it's the end of his 10th over. 2 for 29. His figures Leicester 150 for 4. Oh, the Friends of Grace Road are open for the first time this season. Oh. Cakes, cakes and more cakes of uh, all and splendid varieties available on the ground floor of the meat. I went over and, uh, and bought some last year. Very good they were too. They used to produce one for each, uh, you know, obviously amongst all the normal kind. Uh, one that was sort of dedicated to the visiting county. Specific oh. to them. In comes uh, Liam Bowles, short clipped away by uh, Hanscom down to uh, deep, deep square really. Tom Haynes had to run around from deep mid wicket but picked up a comfortable single. Did uh, Peter Hanscom, he's, you know, he, he's guts again out here. Hanscom, you know, it's a, it's a good innings. 27 off 76 balls. He hasn't been as fluid as Rishi Patel, but since lunch it's been a real challenge against some pretty accurate Sussex bowling. That's what he does. He's he occupies the crease and if he's struggling plays himself into you know he's usually there long enough to do so that said at Headingley last week he was really fluent in going to 20 or looked in really good touch in going to 26 and then he played a loose shot at a wide one and was uh, caught behind off Matt Milnes for, for 26 uh, Liam Travassius is just retaking guard and that's because Danny Lamb's going to come around the wicket uh, to the left-hander. In comes 
Travascus Bowls and played by Travascus onto the lakeside. Interesting uh, uh, chat with the um, the chap who was here from the cricketer. I didn't apologies, I didn't catch his name. We were, we were chatting away at lunch about the um, you know the possibility of 10:30 starts and light and that sort of thing. And Sussex's decision not to use floodlights mm. uh, this season. Mm. And um, so around the table was saying, well, you know, surely. That, that shouldn't be a, a decision for a county. Surely that should be an ECB decision. In comes Lamb and Bowles. Trabascus four plays down the track. No run. And actually, actually, the more I think about it, the more I think that, that's probably right, isn't it? The, the, you know, for, for a club to say, well, we are not using floodlights. Um, I mean, you know, cost may be a factor, but anything other than cost. And you know, it, the, sometimes for a while, planning c can be. Yes, in it some can places, be. Plan, you know, yes, you might not actually be. have permission from the local no. authorities um, yes. to. To, to use floodlights, Leicestershire do now. I think that might uh, have been. Sometimes the when they're newly installed, it, it's a year or two before you can. Yeah. In comes Lamb, Bowles, forward comes Trabasco. But I agree, right assuming right. you have planning permission to use them at any time, then surely it should be. Um, I have to admit also that I thought the ECB, when you did have to use them, made a contribution towards the cost. I right. didn't realise it was That's interesting. all down on the county. Um, concerned because I, I think I don't think or certainly last year we were down in Cardiff I'm fairly certain they couldn't use them in they Cardiff no, last year yeah. in championship games in the city in comes Lambeau short pulled away by Travascus always sort of like a tennis shot really pulls the ball back to the square on the leg side and picks up a single does Liam Travascus he goes to nine the total to 152 for four I mean I find that slightly odd at Cardiff really because they are they're sort of out of town. They're in the middle of, of Butte Park. I, I wouldn't have thought it's causing a huge distraction to local residents. No, it, it was a bit surprising. I'm sure they've used them in test matches when, when sure. they've had a test match or yeah. night games and, and what have you. But uh, no, apparently that was the down to the city council. In comes Lamb. Bowls and punched to mid-off. And there is no run right in behind that. Peter Hanscom, thou shalt not pass. 27, he's on. Travascus is on 9. Leicestershire, 152 for 4 here on BBC Radio Sussex, BBC uh, Radio Leicester. Adrian Harms and Richard Ray as John Simpson puts a sort of consoling arm around Danny Lamb's shoulders. And I think that might be, uh, thanks for the time being, um, Danny, just have a little rest. I suspect we may well get a change at uh, the next over from this pavilion end. Done his job that made the breakthrough after lunch. Yeah, and I think it's going to be Jay Seals who's uh, starting to warm up at backward point. A very important breakthrough it was as well. Yeah. Because um, Rishi Patel scoring his runs quickly as we finish. Another hour or two of him as Hudson Prentice comes in, bowls to Travaskis, who drops the delivery out into the leg side and calls for the quick single. Hanscom looks slightly startled, but actually it's a very good call by Travaskis. He saw that Ari Carvelis had a bit of ground to make up to the ball, and as ever, the sort of tall opening bowler isn't always the quickest to get down to it. No. Picked it up and threw it at the non-striker's end, but Travaskis had uh, made his ground comfortably. I don't think Hudson Prentice was desperately impressed with that bit of fielding. He, he felt there shouldn't have been a single there, and I think he's probably right. Now he sends mid-wicket back to deep square, about 15 yards inside the ropes. Still about 70 yards from the bat as he comes in and bowls to Peter Hanscom, whose head's right over the ball on his back foot. Does prefer to stay on the back foot. Off, off stump it goes. And the thought occurs that he might have chosen 80 simply because it's the year of his birth, Liam Travaskis. Ah, oh, right, OK. It's just suddenly occurred to me. No, 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 no it isn't. Nonsense. No, it, no, it can't about? be. Can how, it? how can it be? No, because it'd be 40, Absolute nonsense. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong generation entirely. In goes Hudson Prentice. Does bowl the bouncer. Hanscom Quick. plays it well in that he drops down on one knee, his right knee goes to the ground, his head tilts to one side. I, I would say with Leicestershire, in terms of recruitment, you, you know, you look at Liam Travaskis, who I think is a good cricketer, you know, you know, bats, bowls, Ben Cox, I think that was a good acquisition, I think he's a really good wicketkeeper, Ben Cox. He is, um, they weren't short of wicketkeeping options, Leicestershire, didn't appear to be, as Hudson Prentice is in, bowls, fuller this time. A little bit late on it, arguably. 
Peter Hanscom, thick inside part of the bat, runs out towards mid-wicket. There isn't a mid-wicket now. He being back, deep back square. And it's actually Hudson Prentice himself who feels, and Hanscom picks up one, just ticks his score onto 28 of 79 balls. But yes, he is um, a cut above, I think, um, Ben Cox in terms of pure wicket keeping oh. ability. Did a brilliant leg side stumping, didn't he, at Sussex um, in that game? Yes. In goes Hudson Prentice bowls short and up on his toes is Travaskis looking to work it into the leg side. On him, arguably just didn't stop on him, but it just wasn't quite as quick as he thought it was going to be, and he sort of plays it back down the wicket instead of into the leg side. Rehearses the shot. Travaskis sounds a sort of Cornish name or something, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Well, then no, it is, yeah. In goes Hudson Prentice, bowls another bounce. Oh, what a nice take by Simpson behind the stumps. It's a no ball on height, yeah. He really did bang it in, but he got it wrong, really too far, too short. But Simpson really athletically reaching, leaping above his head, but not fussily so. It wasn't a sort of one for the cameras take. It just uh, leapt up straight into the glove, tossed it to slip and dive or fall over backwards, anything like it. Just really athletic. Hudson Prentice is in, looking to drive his Travask. He's drawn into the shot, and you could see what Hudson Prentice was trying to do there. He was drawn into the shot when it wasn't quite there, and it was in the air for a couple of feet after it left the bat. Well short of mid-off, long way short, but nice bowling from Finn Hudson Prentice. 11 overs, 2 for 33 for him now. 156 for 4. Cole's just uh, leaving the field down below us. Ollie Carter uh, comes on, and we have got the predicted change in bowling. And indeed, it is going to be Jaden Seals who's going to come back for his third spell. The tall West Indian quick bowler who uh, will be hoping to play a part in the uh, the Test series when it comes round in uh, July. It's a long time till the first Test match this season. Um, is it uh, July the first day? Yeah, it is. Really? It's very late. Yeah, really late. Sometimes yeah. they've been in May. I, I, I think it's because we got we, we got this T20 World Cup, oh, which is shared between the the Caribbean and the US. I thought we only had a T20 World Cup a couple of years ago. I, I've sort of lost track of when all the World Cup is. T20 every couple of years seems to be. Uh, six overs, one made, no wicket for 33 for Jaden Seal so far today. Hasn't quite found his range, comes in and bowls. That's better. Pitches the ball right up and driven firmly by Hanscom to mid-off, fielded by Danny Lamb. And there is no run. Um, I will disappear probably at the end of this. So we have to, the listeners don't want to know this, but all sorts of technical things we have to do in the afternoons with different programmes going out on BBC local radio. So I just need to go and make sure I'm readily prepared. Uh, two slips in place. It's a pretty defensive field, to be honest. There's a very widish third man. There's a cover mid off, mid on, mid wicket, and two men back on the leg side. So Sussex with three men out at the moment. A deep mid wicket and a fine leg. The Seals is racing in. Bowls. Well pitched up, driven firmly by Hanscom to uh, cover, and there is no run. Just not timing his shots at the moment. Peter Hanscom, his feet aren't moving as well as he would, he'd like them to. He's, he's wandered off to short leg and he's looking absolutely despondently down at the ground. But mm. Might be just a, a sort of tick, so to speak. Something he does, but just scratching around a little bit at the moment, Hanscom, but he's still there. Yeah, it's important for his uh, county as in comes seals again. Bowls and driven again. Good delivery. He, he may, uh, he's annoyed with himself there, Peter Hanscom. He, 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 after he played the shot, he then sort of practiced a shot looking to clip the ball away through the leg side. So there could be a bit of frustration here yeah, from he's Hanscom. He's not happy. He was sort of, yes, got himself a bit squared up, didn't he? And uh, Warwickshire 200 without loss at Edgbaston <laughs> against Durham. Somerset 172 for one at the Oval against Surrey. Were they put in as well, Somerset? I wonder. Uh, they were. Yeah. 
North Hans 124 for one down the road at Wantage Road. Down the road? 20, sort 30 of, miles? Yeah. 35 miles ish. Seals in. Oh, that was a bouncer. That was quite rapid through to John Simpson. There is no run. Elsewhere in Division 2, Yorkshire now 153 for five. Something of recovery. Shan Masood leading that recovery. He's on 77. Johnny Tattersall is on 37. Um, Harry Brook making 26. Joe Root just two. Club Morgan 100 for two. Down in Cardiff against Derbyshire. Kieran Coulson. One of my favourite players around the county, so I think he's a really good player. Uh, 35, not out. Uh, Sam North East, after his heroics last week, out for 11. In comes at Seals, bowls, Hanscom again plays into the covers again. It's a dot ball, nice tight stuff from Jaden Seals. He's bowling with good pace. 156 for four Hanscom, 28 off 84 deliveries. I mean, it's a four-day game, so really the number of deliveries is irrelevant, but they have just got a little bogged down after lunch, Leicestershire. Yeah, he's only added six to his uh, lunchtime score, Peter Hanscom. Jaden Seals has played ten tests, ten ODIs, and this is just his 23rd first-class game, so ten of these 23. In comes... Uh, seals over the wicket bowl, short and ducked underneath it does Peter Hanscom. There is no run, maiden over from Jaden Seals, 156 for four. Seals seven overs at one maiden, no wicket uh, for 33. Um, I'm going to disappear because I need to give an update to the listeners in Kent, Surrey and Sussex. I, I might be a few minutes, Richard, so I'll be with you as quick as I can. Maybe some time, as uh, <laughs> Captain Oates said, before heading out into the wastes of the Antarctic but hopefully you will come back <laughs> I hope so I'll send out the huskies and search parties if, if you don't Hudson Prentice is, is going to continue his post lunch spell 2 for 33 from 11 for him and he's going to be bowling to the left handed Liam Travaskis with two slips and a gully over the wicket bowls again looking to draw Travaskis forward and does but Travaskis middles it the big stride the forward defensive pushing the ball out into the offside but you can see why he's because of that big stride and sort of plungish plunge forward he might be considered sort of a candidate for a, a gully catch or a catch in the covers Hudson Prentice is in, bowls, straighter this time, pushed firmly by Travaskis back past the bowler, very straight. And uh, Pajara has to move to his left at mid-off to cover. Does so, but by the time he does so, Pajara, Travaskis has uh, gone through for fairly comfortable single. He moves on to 11, 157 for four. for the right-handed Hanscom Hudson Prentice is in bowls but that one is a bit too leg side ish as in middle middle and leg and Hanscom deep in his crease as ever can just push it out into the vacant mid wicket area take one moves on to 29 been really hard work for, for Peter Hanscom but he is still there as I keep saying partnership for the fifth wicket now worth 17 158 for four Hanscom 29, Travaskis 11. Hudson Prentice is in short, pulled by Travaskis, but it was a bit leg side and uh, it was a fairly safe shot. Did get well on top of it. Hit it down. Ollie Carter running around the boundary from the meet towards the popular seats, cuts it off. Travaskis picks up a single, that being the short boundary. Moves on to 12. Hurrying here is 
Sussex again changing the field, lots of pointing from John Simpson and indeed Hudson Prentice. Seals at, at long leg is a good 15 yards inside the ropes. Now they've decided to take out the gully for Hanscom and put him in at short-ish mid-wicket Haynes that is. So just the two slips now as Hudson Prentice is in short pulled by Hanscom. Got plenty of that when he was quickly on to it but he's picked out Carson. He was along the ground all the way to Carson at deep square. So just the single as it runs over the square. The nice green square at the moment just the one pitch used so far for for practice essentially I think a couple of strips to one side of this one we're, we're, we're on the sort of west side of the square as Hudson Prentice bowls Javaskis very correct leans forward blocks it out into the offside end of the over the 41st of the Leicestershire first innings. So the run rate has now slipped under four, 3.9 now, 160 for four. But that's what wickets do, slow run rates as well as uh, obviously reduce usually the length of the innings. Hanscom has 30 now, he has a, a chat to Travaskis. 30 off 87, that's umpire Pollard pointing at. He's uh, talking to umpire Middlebrook and pointing back towards the pavilion. Umpire Middlebrook takes a few steps over and then goes back to square leg. Whatever it was that he's exercising, umpire Pollard, who's sh shrugging away there. Don't know what that's all about. It's not sufficient to stop play. Seals. Runs in, bowls quickly, or bends it, bends his back, but on off stump, hands come equal to it. Locks it out into the offside. No run. So you've got a few people heading into the uh, Friends of Grace Road little cafe down there. Sort of cafe. Outlet perhaps would be a better word. There's no way to, I don't think there's a place to sit in there. You, you get your cakes and coffee or tea or whatever and then come back out, of course. Seals. Bending his back is in bowls full. Looking to drive his hands. Come again, not timing it. Moving across to his right from mid-off is Danny Lamb, who tumbles as he stops the ball. Not entirely sure necessarily. Perhaps so. Uh, wasn't going that fast. Seals big white sweatband on his uh, right wrist on his bowling bowling arm as he runs in and bowls on off stump hands come neat solid enough in defence again no great stride compared to Travaskis for example who really does get forward at every opportunity with a big stride still looking for his first wicket Jaden Seals And bowl short, didn't really get up too much. Hanscom had no problem ducking underneath. It didn't take any pace off the pitch and was going down as it to reach the gloves of John Simpson behind the stumps. White wicket keeping gloves for Simpson. Adding to the impression of neatness yet it comes from his wicket keeping. Seals is at the crease before pulling out. So a bit of a well, big waste of effort really because it's a longish run for Jaden Seals and he raises a hand actually in apology. So 
takes a long walk back to his mark, it won't improve the overrate. And he runs and bowls. Led to delivery. Back foot from Hanscom defending down the pitch on the on side. The overrate hasn't gone up on the board. Now, whether that means it's level, I doubt, but it hasn't been posted on the board as yet. He's taken 37 wickets in, in Test cricket in, in 19 innings. Jaden Seals, 6 in 10 ODIs, 73 in 23 first class games. comes and bowls short and come a sort of dismissive duck really he was almost fiddling with his pads having just ducked his head underneath the line of the ball before it was in the gloves of John Simpson very much giving the impression he knew it was coming end of the over 42 overs 160 for four remains the score Hanscom 30 Travaskis 12 now umpires are together talking to John Simpson now and again there's lots of shrugging going on Not quite what what's going on here umpire Pollard keeps sort of raising both arms and, and shrugging umpire Middlebrook's got something to say Simpson pats Pollard on the back but quite what's going been going on over there I don't know unless Shabatas aren't involved they've had a chat in mid pitch and have gone back to their Ends. I missed that, Richard. What was going on there? No, I have no idea. But umpire Pollard, in, during the previous over, was sort of had, had gestured back to the pavilion and had shrugged a couple of times and involved umpire Middlebrook in some sort of conversation, and it continued then. But hmm. what the issue might be, if any, I have no idea. Well, we've got to change Eric Avelas, um into the attack, eight overs, two mains, one for 38, I think that says, over the scoreboard on the far side, as in he comes to the left-handed Liam Travaskis. Travaskis nurdles that one down to uh, a fine leg. They've taken one. In fact, it's a bit more than a nurdle. They're going to come back for a second. That's good running by uh, Travaskis. I'm just looking down below us. That was Tom Haynes fielding with a couple to Travaskis, who goes to 14. So to 162 for four. These two consolidating after the loss of Rishi Patel. They've added now, what, just 21? No, yes, 21. Uh, since Patel was caught down the leg side, rather strangled by a delivery from uh, Danny Lamb. In comes... Carvelos bowls. Vasquez defends down the offside of the track. And there is uh, no run. Grey afternoon here. I mean, the clouds are high, which is good news. And if the weather forecast is to be believed, I have to say, I think the, some of the weather forecasts late recently have been very inaccurate. But uh, anyway, the, the weather forecast is suggesting there'll be no rain. Um, and it should be warming up certainly tomorrow. Forecast is very good for tomorrow. Um, and colder on Sunday. So it looks like we're going to get at least three, four days. Fingers crossed. In comes Cavalos Bowles, and Travaskis works this down to a deep mid-wicket, fielded out there by Ollie Carter. 163 for four, Travaskis to uh, 15. We haven't seen, well, we haven't seen Jack Carson at all today. We just saw an over from James, or a couple of overs from James Coles before lunch. I wonder whether they might see, because it, whether it's the pitch flattening out, whether it's the kookaburra ball, but I mean, Sussex are bowled accurately and well, but it doesn't seem to be much deviation on the ball, Richard. No. Um, but I don't think that's down to sort of the, any deficit on the part of the bowlers. I think it, it's probably the ball, really. Avelas in again, bowls forward comes. Hanscom plays to mid-wicket, no run. He's biding his time here, Peter Hanscom. 30 off 94 balls. I suppose from a Sussex perspective, they'll feel, well, you know, Leicestershire you haven't got away here, which would be the good thing from a Sussex point of view. From a Leicestershire point of view, they're thinking, well, we've still got wickets in the bank here and this ball is only going to get softer. I mean, sometimes that can make it more difficult to score runs. But... Uh, I think it's about even Stephen at the moment, as in comes Carvelos. Bowl short, bit of extra bounce there on Carvelos, and the ball goes past the end of Peter Hanscom's nose into the gloves of John Simpson. And there is no run. 
Um, not a huge crowd, as there isn't really for county cricket. That being said, I think in the pavilion uh, there were a lot more people around um, and a lot of people in the hospitality at the far end of the ground. So, I mean, it's a big ground here at Grace Road. There's a fair few in the meet as well, which probably a bit warmer in there. Yeah, watching the windows in there, and it's quite close to the action. Carvelas in bowls. Oh, Haynes can place that very late, and he chops it down through where Gully would be. There isn't a Gully there, and James Coles needs to trot round from second slip to field. Tidy from Ari Carvelas. Uh, nine overs, three maidens, one for 42 at the end of the over, 164 for four. Hanscom on 31, Trabaskis on 15. And if you just joined us, live cricket here on the BBC, BBC Radio Sussex, BBC Radio Leicester, Adrian Harms and Richard Ray here on duty at Grace Road. Tom Clark returns to the field. Ollie Carter jogs off. Jaden Seals will continue from the pavilion end. I mean, footmarks clearly delineated in the Grace Road outfield. Seals is in and bowls, foolish. Waiting for it is Hanscom, turns his wrist on it, tries to clip it away through the leg side once again. Doesn't time it. It's more or less straight to Pajaro. Seals turns just about on the advertising mat, so to speak. Longish run. Charges in, gives it everything. Bowls onto legs of Hanscom who goes back and turns it into the leg side moving across smartly from mid wicket is James Coles sufficiently smartly to prevent any uh, thoughts of taking a quick single on the part of Messrs Hanscom and Travaskis solitary bird flies across the sky looks like a pigeon but not one that's flying around with too much purpose. Seals in bowls. It's a decent length, but just outside off stump. And Hanscom on his back foot can drop it towards backward point. Moving across to his left is Jack Carson. Throws in left-handed, but Hanscom proceeding in singles. Moves on to 32. Although he's taking his time. Crease occupation is is important with the ball like this because each ball th that's bowled should make it theoretically easier for those coming sort of in next. With Leicestershire's batting lineup being strongish, down to sort of 10, 11, really. Yeah. They'll be hoping to cash in as the ball does become softer. Changes to the field for the left-handed Travaskis. Point has gone in as Seals is in and bowls full. I just have swung in a bit. He was looking to drive straight. Travaskis came off the thick inside part of the bat and round to mid on instead of mid off. Well, it's obviously Jack Carson warming up now. Maybe we are going to get a bit of spin. Interesting. Um, I, I heard the announcement before the match of um, quite a lot of summer concerts. I think they were saying here over the coming months. Um, something Sussex have decided not to do this summer, right? Which is quite interesting. That Leicestershire seem to be doing more. I think I heard Haircut 100, uh, a couple of others. I think Seals is in and bowls. Got a short-armed pull from Travaskis, almost off the front foot, and uh, Seals won't like that because, as I say, was his weight was almost on his front foot. He almost swatted it away. Had time, saw it really early. There is a man out there, deep-ish square, but went between him and mid-wicket and out to the boundary for four. That uh, should get seals his dander up a little bit from Travaskis, who moves on to 19. Say so there are two men out there, as well as a long leg, or fine leg, really. 
mean, this one might be shorter and quicker. It seals is in. It is shorter and a quicker. He plays the same shot, actually, yeah. just a little. Didn't time it quite as well, Travaskis. So it, it runs more or less straight to the man at backward square, who's Jack Carson. And it is just one. So, Travaskis, impressing on his first appearance in Leicestershire Colours. He's moved on to 20 at the end of the 44th over Peter Hanscom. The eternal Hanscom is 32, not out. 170 for four, Leicestershire. Yeah, I was looking at this concert, which is on uh, the 3rd of August, 80s Legends Live. That's it, yeah. So you get Haircut 100, Toya, Paul Young, Go West, and China Crisis. I think that's a really good lineup, actually. Yeah, good too. It appeals to a certain generation, yeah. of which we may. <laughs> Yeah, right. yeah. I mean, I, I reckon, <laughs> I reckon they've got a lot of people come to that. Get a oh, nice, yes, I, I think get, a, yeah. get a nice day in August. You know, I, I can see that being a really good event. So, you know, well done, Leicestershire. Harry Carvelos in and bowls. Travaskas drives on the bounce back to Carvelos, no run. Yeah, I, I did ask the Sussex chair John Philby about um, concerts um, this season, and Sussex have decided not to have a concert. In the past, they've done one and sometimes two. I mean, Elton John played there a few years ago. But Sussex have, too, yeah. yeah, Sussex have decided that um, they think that the, the music market is like going in a slightly different direction, and and it's not as good or not as profitable, which I was surprised about, but that's what they've decided not to do. In comes Carvelos Bowles, and driven by Travaskis through backward point, picks up a single. Jaden Sills comes in from the backward point boundary to Phil, gets in the throw, one more to uh, Travaskis who goes to 21, total to 171 for four, but I think that's a pretty good lineup. so uh, let's wish Leicestershire all the best with with that event. Haircut 100, blimey, that takes me back. Lead singer of Haircut 100. Nick Hayward. Very good. That and their album was called Pelican West. <laughs> <laughs> in comes Harry <laughs> in and bowls to um, Peter Hanscom, who plays it down the track. There is no run. I think that's up in my loft. I bet you had an Aaron sweater. <laughs> <laughs> <Why> Aaron sweater? <laughs> no, I never did. <laughs> that's what that was their their sort of thing, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, they were very clean cut. One, they had cut one hundred. Yeah. Knitted Aaron sweaters. Yeah, they were. Yeah. Ask your grandparents. Yeah, a decent band they were. Haircut 100. In comes uh, Carvelas in and bowls, and Hanscom again solidly forward. He's now faced 101 balls for his 32, so he's patience personified. In fact, since lunch, Leicestershire have added, I reckon, 38 runs. Um, so it's been it's been slow going, but you know, having lost Rishi Patel, these two are consolidating and. Is it, this is Liam Travaskas' debut, is it? Um, for Leicestershire, yes. Yeah, uh, and you know he's coming at number six, and he's he's determined to show his new county that he can hold a bat. And he, he I always thought he was a decent player up at Durham, so he's doing well for his county. In comes Carvelos, uh, bowls and Hanscom is full good delivery for Barry Carvelos. Made into the offside, no run. Um, the light isn't amazing at the moment. I mean, I'm no, we're in no danger of going off, but it's just a little sort of gloomy really um, there's very little wind around um, to sort of blow any murk away as I say we're, we're, we're not coming off at all but it's sort of not bright sunshine in fact the Sussex backroom staff I can see John Morelli the physio down below us with a bobble hat on waiting to run out with a drink for somebody in comes Carvelos Bowles and whipped away by Hanscom and that was very unhandscom actually <laughs> It was uh, over pitch from Harry Carvelos, and Hanscom helped it on its way over square leg for four runs. A good shot. It goes to 36. And Leicester show at the end of the over, 175 for four. Um, well, hit the bad balls, block the good ones, and that's exactly what uh, Peter Hanscom did then. That was a good shot. 75 for four. Eric Avelis has bowled. Ten overs, two maidens, taken one for 47. Well, I thought I saw Jack Carson warming up a little while ago, but John Simpson is persevering with his seamers. He's come down the track to have a word with uh, Jaden Seals, who I think is now saying, can I have a, a change in the field or something or another? But I think, I think the pendulum just starting to swing back in the way of 
Leicester show, I mean, we are still only the first day and only halfway through the first day at that. In fact, not quite halfway through the first day if we play the full 96 overs. But still going along nicely, um, our Leicester show, four and a half and over. Round the wicket comes Seals to Travaska. Short in the air, going to drop short. Oh, couldn't quite get there, running in from fine leg. Again, he was trying to sort of do mm. that pull off the front foot, and he was not in control there, Liam Travaska. It was a quickish bounce from Jaden Seals. And who is that running in from I think it's, fin I think it's I think Finn Hudson Prentice. Prentice. Yes, I think you're right. Yep. And uh, in fairness to him, he saw it early. Hudson Prentice came sprinting in, but couldn't get there, bounced good bit before him he flung himself forward and managed to block it with his right arm but again Travaskis's instinct was to go for the shot and I think he'll get a few more of those bouncers playing it off the front foot against a bowler of Seals's pace is asking for trouble it goes in and bowls and well, that is a shorter delivery shortish delivery but well played by Hans he just got up on his toes the Australian and blocked it out towards the vacant gully area didn't take any chances didn't try and pull it or hook it just dropped it into a gap and took one moves on to 37 177 4 4 and uh, the trap is set again for Travaskis he is going to get a couple more short ones I'm certain of that James Coles is going out to sort of wide long leg deep ish backward square as seals in bounces mm. but he got that bounce and miles wrong <laughs> it was almost in his own half that's uh, a no ball uh, actually on height there's no way Travaskis could have got anywhere near that one and he's scraping away at the creases seals there as if that's why he just foot slipped but he banged it in but it was in his own half almost and it was wide outside off stump and it was feet above Travaskis's head as it sailed through to Simpson behind the stumps. So a couple of extras. Five for the innings <laughs> altogether now, 179 for four. But uh, Seals won't be put off trying it again, that's for sure. In he comes, round the wicket, and bowl short-ish down the leg side. Now he didn't try and pull that one. He stayed on the back foot, Travaskis, got inside the line, D did actually fence at it a little bit. He did. Didn't get anything on it. Yeah. But uh, again, Seals won't be discouraged. No, he's uh, working a bit of pace here, Jaden Seals. I mean, the trap is there, isn't it, with those two men back on the leg side? Well, three men back on the leg side, actually. Yep, deep mid wicket. Deep backward square, long leg, fine leg. Seals is in. Short, outside off stump, good bouncer. Mm. But well played by Travaskis. Doesn't try and hook it, stays on his back foot. He's expecting it now and just moves his head inside the line. I think this is a decent pitch, Richard. I mean, we saw one or two keep low this morning from Hudson Prentice bowling from the Bennett end, but in general, I, I think there's been some uh, you know, some decent pace uh, in the pitch. I mean, that carried through to John Simpson. He took that round about sort of shoulder high. Seals turns. In bowls Fuller, but solidly forward is Travaskis blocking the ball out into the offside. Seals grins as he turns round. I don't know how amused he is at the moment. Not particularly, I wouldn't think. He's coming no. to the end of his 10th over, none for 43. Trying to flog some life out of what probably is now a fairly soft Cookerborough ball. But the uh, where can I see the overs, Richard, in terms of how they're doing against time? Uh, the, there isn't anything on over eight at the no. moment. It's be just below run. Yes, I could see. It. I could see. But there's nothing on it at the moment. So whether that means it's level or they just haven't put it up, I don't know. Seals is in a slower ball, I think, and it was fuller. But Chabaskis leans forward, thick inside part of the bat. The ball runs out towards Widish mid on Carvelas. Has a long way to run up to get to the ball, so it's a comfortable single for Travaskis, end of the over 180 for 4, 46 overs, Hanscom 37 Travaskis 23, the partnership now worth 39 uh, As Danny Lang comes trotting back on, and Ollie Carter who's been kept busy as 12th man goes trotting off um, 
John Morelli, the Sussex physio, was about to go out with a drink for somebody, but they've decided they don't need the drink. Uh, and what we do know is it's going to be Arrow Cavalos who's going to carry on. So 40, 46 overs gone, Richard? Yes. I've got some new specs actually waiting for me at uh, the optician. That, uh, seriously, I have. 46 overs is correct. Yeah, so we're not halfway through the day yet, and it's already 5 to 3, so I reckon probably a little bit behind. In comes Cavalos Bowl. Trabascus plays elegantly to mid off. And there is no run. Yes, I'm not going to say who Mark Titian is, but I went to have my eyes tested before the season, and the optician made up the glasses. When I got them, I put them on for the first time, and they were very blurred. Oh. So I was summoned back for... Well, I went back and said, well, hang on, these aren't any good. And I went back, and they retested the eyes, and they'd got the prescription wrong. So I've got a new pair uh, en route, which aren't going to cost me anything, which is good. In comes uh, Carvelas. In and bowls, short Travaskis thinking about hooking decides not to. The ball goes over his shoulder through to Simpson. Uh, there is no run. Uh, Jack Carson was warming up again then, so we haven't seen anything of the uh, of the Sussex off spinner. In fact, we have only seen today in terms of spin uh, James Coles so far. And he has only bowled two overs, not for 13. In comes Carvelas around the wicket bowls. Trabascus defends down the track. Uh, there is no run. Um, if you're tuning in for the first time today, very good afternoon. Welcome to uh, Grace Road, wherever you're listening from, either around Sussex, around Leicestershire, or around the world. We had lots of people get in touch last week from all over the place. So thank you for listening. Sussex Cricket at bbc.co.uk. You can email us or you can email foxcoms c-o-m-m-s 24 at gmail.com you can tweet Richard at foxcoms24 or at BBC Sussex Sport lots of ways to get in touch as in comes Carvelos in and bowls full toss oh good stop really good stop because that would have probably been four runs probably deserved to go for four in fairness Travaskas will be annoyed that he picked out Hudson Prentice who made a good save in a cover uh, there's no one behind him I think that would have gone for four runs Travaskas remains on 23 Story of the day, Sussex winning the toss, selecting to bowl. Leicestershire off to a flying start, 59 without loss in no times at all, with Marcus Harris going along very nicely. He was then caught behind off the bowling of Ari Cavalos for 24. Cavalos in again, bowl. Tabascus drives, this will go for four runs, that's a lovely shot. Leon drive, beautifully played, straight down the ground. Slightly over pitch from Ari Cavalos, and Travascus plays that straight down the ground, he goes to 27. Let's just show to 184 for four. Uh, Lewis Kimber then followed for four. And Captain Lewis Hill out first ball as Leicestershire from 59 without loss slumped to 63 for three. But then a very good partnership of 78 between Rishi Patel, who was eventually out for 87 after just 98 balls, and Peter Hanscom. And since then, these two, as in comes uh, Travas uh, Travascus, in comes Carvelas bowls to Travascus, lets it go through to John Simpson. There is no run. End of another over. 47 overs gone in the day. 184 for four. Hanscom 37. Trabascus on 27. These two coming together when the score's 141. So a good partnership between these two. 43 it's worth. And yet again, studying the Leicestershire uh, ship just when it looked as if maybe Sussex were getting in the ascendancy. I'm impressed by all your wisdoms here, Richard. They're all lined up here in the commentary box. But they're taking up room at home, basically, so ah. I thought oh, they might as well be here. Yeah. Um, How many editions have you got there from 20... uh, 2014 to... Uh, yeah, the, actually, 2024 hasn't arrived yet. Right. Um, which I'm a little bit surprised about. <sighs> Yes, I tried to get the uh, the Playfair annual, which uh, details all the stats and the teams, and I, I put in an order. Well, I, I did put the order in. My daughter did on Amazon Express or something, and it wasn't available till the middle of the month, which was a bit surprising. You'd think, given it's only once a year, and it's a, they know when the county season is start. However, however, but mm. then I've left my cricketers who's who, which is up to date, away. Seals is in, bowling to Peter Hanscom, who sort of stylishly pushes it out into the offside, doesn't time it once again at all, looks at the bottom of his bat, rehearses the shot, just fiddles with a few bits and pieces of equipment, remains on 37, apologies to uh, Fox's fan 96, does one of you have a device near the mic that keeps vibrating, we're both using um, mics that are at 
attached to our headphones, so we shouldn't, Fox's fan. In goes Seals. Bowls outside off some little bit of room for Hanscom. He goes back and cuts. And there is a man out there at deep wide third man who is picked out. Finn Hudson Prentice, that is, out there. So it is just a single for Hanscom. He moves on to 38. But he's been searching around his house thinking a phone or iPad was going off. But as far as I'm aware, there's nothing vibrating around the place. Hopefully there isn't anyway. To let, let us know if if that is still an issue, and we'll uh, we'll search around and try and find out what the reason is. Round the wicket goes Seals and bowls into the looking to get it up into the body of Travaskis. Doesn't sort of get up as much. Travaskis goes back, just turns it calmly round the corner, out towards square leg. There isn't a, a man in that exact position, and so it's another comfortable single. Travaskis on to 28, the partnership up to 45. Hasn't quite been Jaden Seals' day today, has it? He's, you know, he, he lacks nothing in enthusiasm. He just has cool. He's perhaps struggling to get something out the pitch or this kookaburra ball. Yeah. He's in, back over the wicket, short, very short actually, and going to get away with it. Yes, he is, just one for the over, says umpire Pollard. He looked momentarily as though he might be thinking about no ball height there. He's trying to flog some life out of the ball pitch combo. And he certainly is the quickest of the Sussex bowlers. And actually, he'll be the quickest bowler in this game. Leicestershire don't sort of have a, an out and out quick. Not many sides do, unless Potts, I think, is sharp, isn't he, on, yeah, his, yeah. on his day? No question. Seals is in. Bowls, good length. Hanscom solid. Out into the offside it goes. Yeah, I guess Atkinson at, um, at Surrey is quick. Uh, the, the Worcester boy as well. Oh, Tongue. Yeah, Yeah, Josh Tongue can be sharp. He's another England. In, in the England frame as well, isn't he? Well, that, and, and, yeah, and that's what we were saying about, you know, these... Some of these bowlers so you know... Ollie Robbins has only got a year on the Sussex contract, so he, you know Ollie is well aware that there are plenty of people snapping at heels, which is maybe not a bad thing. Keeps keeps no, everyone on their no, toes. Absolutely. Seals is in back on his stumps, as ever is Hanscom, defending it out into the offside. Trickles out towards cover. Danny Lamb walks in to pick it up. End of the 48th over of the innings. A pat on the back for Jaden Seals, suggesting. His, his work might be done for now. 11 overs, none for 46 in, in three spells. Three or four overs at a time for Seals, which kind of makes sense. Yeah, I think that was a thanks very much for now, Jaden, from John uh, Simpson. Bent his back, didn't he? Yeah, he did. No, oh, absolutely. He lacks nothing in effort. Just not quite been his day. And, and as you say, it, it, although it looks as... Uh, so Danny Lamb is replacing Harry Carvalho. Sussex just sort of rotating the seamers here. I, I just wonder whether John Simpson might. Uh, yeah, he's having a long chat with James Coles down below us, so I think we're going to see James Coles uh, in action. Still no Jack Carson. But these two, very steadily, are just putting Leicestershire in a good position here. 48 overs gone in the day, so we're halfway through. So it really should be 20 to 3. So we're, we're, you know, we're over time, I reckon. A few overs of spin, I'm sure, to come. Lamb in towards us. Bowls. Oh, Travaskis, I thought for a moment to drag that on. It was perhaps the angle we're watching at here. Um, we're sort of watching, if you're looking straight out of the pitch, we're looking at sort of uh, one o'clock up, something like that. Pitch away to our right hand side. Travaskis looking to play that away on the offside, got rather squared up, played it on the leg side. There is no run. People impressed by the coverage um, on the stream good to to see yeah plenty of graphics Lamb comes in bowls to Travaskis plays to mid wicket there is no run and actually I mean I, I, I suspect that let's show much like Sussex Richard I mean there's not a massive media team at Sussex I'd imagine it's probably the same here at Leicestershire with people operating the stream so it's you know it's, I think the guys do a pretty good job around the counties to be honest particularly the 
in inverted commas, you know, the, the, the smaller counties. I hate to use that expression, but you know, compared to some of the some of the counties, it's real almost sort of a TV production. Here comes Lamb. Oh, it's clipped away nicely. Travaskas runs here. There's going to be at least a couple. Travaskas comes back running around the uh, deep mid wicket boundary. Is I think that's Jack Carson out there who gets in the throw, or was it Finn Hudson Prentice? No, I think that was Carson. 188 for he's a long way away is Jack Carson in front of the England flag that is uh, tied to the green barrier that circles the pitch on that side. In comes Lamb again, bowls to Travaska, short, pulled away, that's going to go, well, I, th I didn't see the fielder down there, he's sort of slightly obscured by the stand, but fielded way down in the distance by Tom Haynes, not a great delivery by Danny Lamb, and he's rather lucky to go with conceding just a single, Travaska's to 31, 189 for four. Um, so these two closing in on a 50 partnership, partnership of 48 so far. Good recovery by these two. Now, who's that warming up in the covers? Uh, oh, I think that is Jack Carson. We certainly get a change, so I'm pretty certain that John Simpson, when he came down, spoke to Jaden Seals and said, yep, thanks very much for now, Jaden. In comes Lamb. Bowls, and that hits the pad. Runs down to uh, Ward's fine leg. Ollie Carter comes running across and fields, but not before they've gone through for a leg by. Total goes to 100 and... I think that's going to go up to 190, isn't it? I'm sure they ran a leg by there. Or maybe they didn't. Yes, they did. There we go. 100, 190 for four. I was distracted by Ollie Carter, who was <laughs> clowning around a little bit as he picked up the It's quite a distracting ball. figure, though, isn't it? In <laughs> <laughs> comes Lamb. Bowls and Travaskis covers up, plays to mid-wicket. There is no run. So tidy enough from Danny Lamb, but in Sussex at the minute, you feel they need a change. I mean, this batting looks, it's not easy, don't get me wrong, but it looks comfortable, doesn't it, for Leicestershire at the minute. These two, Hanscom 38, Travaskis 31. We are going to get a change, and we are going to see the off spinner for the first time today. I just wonder whether John Simpson might be thinking about bowling spin from both ends, because it's looks relatively comfortable at the moment. Now there's various comings and goings. Tom Allsop has come running on with some pads. Come on Sussex, you should be ready for this. Allsop running on with the helmet and the pads. Ari Cavalos is coming trotting off. So it's like a it's like a revolving door of Sussex players on and off the field. I think they've got 11 out there. Cavalos in his white sun hat, which he doesn't actually need today because it's a uh, Oh, having said what that. I never understand really is, un unless it's a late last second decision by the skipper, then he'd yeah. know the previous over that, that he's that, D definitely. that Seals is coming to. Th right, that that's enough. You know, Carson's going to bowl or whoever from uh, a spinner's going to bowl the next over from that end. During this over from the top end, you go off Tom or something, get your pads on mm. and stuff, and you know the twelfth man can come on and, and and you can. It's really th this poor. is just but. I said, you know, everybody's standing around with their arms folded now, waiting for Orsop to, to get his pads on and come out with the helmets and things like that. It, all I'm just saying is that there's e there's easily a minute or two to be saved, um, I, 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 ju I, just by a bit of... You know. I, I agree, and it's the sort of thing that, 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 that the umpires will not look favourably upon. You know, if it comes to the end and they're saying, well, over it, they say, well, hang on a minute, you wasted three minutes there by not having the pads ready. I, 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 and Sussex fell foul of this last season. They lost five points for slow over rates and as I say you can't you know you work hard points are hard enough to get as it is without chucking them away on a slow over rate so that, that, that's that wasn't good Carson then is in off spin outside off stump driven away slapped away by Peter Hanscom whether Pujaro just got yes he did get a hand to it and yeah. managed to slow it down sufficiently for Jaden Seals running back down towards the wide long off boundary 50 partnership he does get there. It is just two to Hanscom, and as Adrian says, the 50 partnership for the fifth wicket has come up. Travaskis has got 31 of those runs. Carson is in, looking to drive in the same place as Hanscom. Doesn't get as much on it this time, and uh, therefore it's easier for Bachara to step across and make the stop. And having, I thought for a minute he was just feeling his back there a bit, but he wasn't. He was just pulling his jumper down. 
to make sure it was well covered and goes Carson driven in the air thick outside edge it was a false shot it's going to pick up two runs at least hands come it's well wide of uh, slipper has to chase back down and probably Clark it has been at first slip is it yes and uh, he gets there about two yards inside the ropes in front of the press box there which is on the end of the Turner Indoor Centre so a couple of runs to Peter Hanscom moves on to 42 194 for 4 Carson in bowls nice loop to it driven again by Hanscom past Pajara but this time Seals scrambles across to his left and makes the stop one way or another not cleanly but it did his job Carson is prepared to give the ball a little bit of air just to see if he can get anything in he goes bowls nice loop to it advances down the wicket Hanscom gets to the pitch of the ball drives it hard down into the ground it bounces quite slowly out to Seals you heard the call of yes from Hanscom and it was a good call. It was taking its time to get to Seals. He got to it and sort of tried to flick the ball at the stumps. Didn't get that flick right. Missed the stumps by a long way. Hanscom, and of course Hanscom had made his ground anyway. Hanscom on to 43. Wanders up the pitch to have a word with Chavaskis, who's got his back to him at the moment. He doesn't really want to sort of listen, has it? Hanscom waits up there, three quarters of the way up the wicket, and mm. gets his message across, whatever the message was. Carson round the wicket to Travaskis, who's forward. An appeal four leg before, it was a long way yeah. forward, and it was high-ish. It was a decent flight to the delivery, though. You're unlikely to get those. But he could easily have just uh, edged it onto the pad, or he was playing at it. He could have popped it up to short leg, so... Interesting first over from Jack Carson. Enough there to think, well, worth persisting with. 195 for four. Well, I think Leicestershire will be very pleased with the way they're building a, a decent first innings total here. The light's getting better, actually. Um, the glimmer of sunshine. Um, Danny Lamb's going to carry on. I, I thought we might get spin from both ends, but we're not. We're going to get... More Danny Lamb, 11 overs, 2 mains, 1 for 28, so tidy enough from the seamers. As in comes Lamb, 2 slips in place, over the wicket bowls, cut away by Hanscom, that's a good shot, it was a good stop actually at backward point. Signal to no ball. Yeah, I was about to signal 4 because I thought he oh. had hardly got anything, but he, he, yeah, he managed to yeah, good stop. slow it right down, didn't he? Um, and it's just a single, that sounds like an owl cooing or a pigeon. A pigeon, I think. Oh, it's loud, isn't it? It is, bless it. It's yeah. not like the pigeons at Worcester who, who roost in the just above oh, the Oh, yeah, way, they do. They? Having a terrible time, aren't they, Worcester, with the weather? 196 for four. In comes Lamb Bowles. Travaskas defends down the onside of the track, and there is no run. But if, <laughs> if it is going to be wet every spring, henceforth, or winter and spring, then they are having now a, a serious discussion they are. aren't they about what, what, I mean, where, where we're going to play our cricket but well, it's a shame cause it's such a beautiful cricket ground I, I love going to Worcester it's, you know it's just one of my favourite grounds with, you know with the cathedral and but I think it's flooded seven times this winter and the picture that I saw a couple of weeks ago as in comes uh, Lamb Bowles Travaskis turns onto the onside there is no run I mean it just looks like a muddy mess really well, apparently they need a minimum of nine weeks from the flood clearing to the ground being ready. Yes. Which is a long time. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, two two months. No, it's a huge amount of time. I mean, I wondered, because actually the, the river runs right past the ground. I always thought the river flooded there, but I think it's further downstream and it comes across the meadows and into the ground. And In comes Lamb. Bowles, Travaskis up on his toes, punches up through the covers. They've taken one. They'll think about two, but there isn't two there. Carvelos is quickly in from a widish third man or deep wood deep back will point to field one more to the total Javaskis to 32 197 for four here on BBC Radio Sussex BBC Radio Leicester Adrian Harms Richard Ray are your commentary team but it's um presumably it take you know the three or four years even if a, a, a ground is a potential yeah. ground is identified presumably three or four years to oh you'd have thought so when you get it ready to, and, to and the cost a, exactly yeah in comes Lamb Bowles and clipped away by Hanscom off the hip and to deep mid-wicket fielded out there by Finn Hunt and Prentice. Well, presumably by definition, it's 
the new road is not potential building land. <laughs> well, do you know, I, I said that to someone else. Um, you Unless know, they build them on stilts or something. Yeah, I mean, I, d- I don't know who owns New Road, whether the club own it, whether the local council own it. Club, Do you think club the club own it? Mm. Um, but you say, you know, building on floodplain, which it clearly is. I mean, I know that as you say, they can build houses on stilts and that sort of thing, but you, you'd probably be a little bit wary, wouldn't you? They've built, of course, the Graham Hick Pavilion is on sort of stilts, yeah. isn't it, of, of, of a sort? I think that still floods, doesn't it? I think. It, you know, well, it? I, well, I think the well, I, I think the, yeah, the lowest here, some of the seats yes. I mean, the dressing rooms are right at the top, aren't they? And the uh, you know the bar area and stuff. It is raised a long way. In comes Lambo. Trabascus defends. Plays on the onside. No run. Another over drifts by. That is. You have to help me out here, Richard. Fifty-one overs. It gone. is. Yes, it is. Um, Leicestershire 198 for four. So the run rate has now dropped below four for the first time. So Sussex are doing a decent job in terms of keeping Leicestershire reasonably quiet. But I think these two are batting uh, in a very assured manager manager manner and look largely untroubled at the minute. 198 for four. Hanscom 45. Travaskis is on 32. Yeah, I mean, you know, to, to own a house there looking at the cathedral would be wonderful. But if you've got water lapping at your front door half the year could build a canal basin or something. Well, uh, well, I, uh, uh, well, I sort of wonder whether there's one way of diverting the, the, the water, but presumably these flood schemes cost millions. Carson is in. Hanscom goes back and sort of whips it away out towards deep mid-wicket. Takes one. Moves on to 46. There's a... Um, uh, 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 close to us it's a charity owner uh, some land near Cobham which is a you know beautifully put grounds and um, but the river runs right through it Carson goes in bowls Travaskis goes back to a good length delivery that does skid on a little bit He's taking his uh, well his batting life in his hands he got a little inside edge on it it squirted away two backwards square and they took the single which brings up the Leicestershire 200 which these days doesn't mean too much 200 for four. Tabascus mm. 33. Carson over the wicket, tosses it up, back goes, hands can plays it off the pitch. Carson can't believe that. He's probably going to pick up four for it. No, well chased back, just stopped inside the ropes by Clark. So Hanscom has to settle four three. Does play spin well though, he sort of plays it off the pitch a little bit. And if it's not a fast pitch, he's quite prepared to play it off the stumps wasn't far from doing that there but he did so very effectively Peter Hanscom who's moved quietly on to 49 203 for four partnership up to 62 Carson back round bowls down the leg side Travaskis tried to turn it on its way I think it came off the pad it's going slowly out to sort of short fine leg umpire Pollard waits for the ball to be returned to Jimson actually Byers didn't get anything on it so Rather and Simpson like there, it was mm. going down the leg side and it came off his gloves. He wasn't able to gather an extra is added to the score. Carson in bowls. Back goes Hanscom, tries to turn it past short leg, who sticks out his left hand. Tom Olsop manages to stop the ball, deflected on its way towards Carter, who's at shortish, straightish, mid wicket. Carson bowls. He just leans forward, Hanscom plays it past Orsop out towards deep square and that is the single Peter Hanscom needed for his 50. He has had to work hard for him, Peter Hanscom but that's what he does and it's come off 121 deliveries and uh, I'll have to just check how many fours he scored but I'm guessing not more than three five beg his pardon but it's been a very very valuable 50 as far as Leicestershire are concerned totally 141 63 for 3 when he came in and then he lost Rishi Patel with the score on 141 but the the speed with which Patel scored his runs his 87 off 92 just gave Hanscom time didn't it really and he could play and the run rate still up at 4s pretty much I think, I think it's been an excellent innings. Done. You know, he it, it wasn't easy after lunch. Lamb bowls and 
Hanscom just plays into the offside and there is no run. I think, you know, it's been a very patient innings and he's showing all his experience here, Peter Hanscom. Yeah, sorry, we were talking about rivers and flooding and there's a place locally to where I live called Paynes Hill Park, which has some beautiful gardens and uh, they're right by the River Mole that runs um, through there and they were saying this year it's flooded three or four times and of course there's the, the effect on the takings and everything else. So I think it's, you know, it's a problem for everybody, this amount of rain that we're having. In comes Lamb Bowles, and he looked to thrash that one away through the offside, but in the end he played a very correct shot to extra cover, and there is no run. And not least the fact, as you were saying earlier on, Richard, that apparently we're going to have a water shortage. I'd imagine there'll be people in the streets. If that, I mean, how on earth can you have a water shortage this this summer? Yeah, honest to goodness. I, I you know... I, I, on dangerous ground. Well, we are we are on very dangerous ground, so we better it just just it, it just seems incredible to think that might be the case. In comes Lamb running towards us. Bowles hands come drive down the ground. Good stop by Lamb to his left hand side, and there is no run. I'm just sort of sitting here thinking, you know, we've got this ball is only 52 overs old, and um, certainly at the moment, I mean, these two look pretty untroubled, don't they? You know, the, the, the strike bowler isn't getting anything out of the pitch. I mean, is this the Kookaburra ball? Is it just the fact Sussex are... Is it a good track? Um, but, you know, this looks like it could be really hard work for Sussex. And these two will know that. In comes Lamb. Bowls and Hanscom drives to mid on. And there is no run. In fact, I thought he'd driven it to mid on. I lost track of the ball there. Yes, it did. It did go Filled straight. It's got that very straight mid on in it. Yes, and, and there is no short. run. I mean, just the, just the one slip in place now, who's Tom Allsop keeping John Simpson company. Clark it is at that, uh, he's almost got his left foot on, on the pitch, you know. Yes, he just, has. Just not. Lamb again. On his way in bowls, and has come drives, an elegant looking shot, but he doesn't, can't pierce the offside field. He looks, he looks annoyed with himself, that was quite a juicy half volley, to be honest. Maybe a little annoyed he didn't beat the field. Just a quick zip around the other games at Northampton. Northamptonshire 151 for one against Middlesex. That after being one for one when Justin Broad was out. Emilio Gay, very attractive player to watch on 88. Luke Proctor on 59. Batted very well at Hove last week, Luke Proctor. Top score with 92 in the Northamptonshire innings. In comes Lamb and Bowles and Hanscom. He's back on his stumps and steers that one down too. Um, backward square leg fielded there by Finn Hudson Prentice who gets in the throw so tidy enough from Danny Lamb 13 overs, 2 maidens, 1 for 32 but Leicestershire going along very nicely 206 for 4 uh, elsewhere uh, down at Bristol Yorkshire, strange day for Yorkshire really 219 for 6 Shan Massoud is not out 104 Johnny Tattersall made uh, 58, Harry Brook just 26 today and Joe Root only 2 um, and in the other game in Division 2, Glamorgan are 148 for 3 at Cardiff. Kieran Carlson going along very nicely. He is on at 69. At Sam North East out for 11 uh, today. We'll do the first division scores into the over. Well, Jack Carson's going to. Looks like he's going to try going round the wicket to the right handed. Peter Hanscom, he hasn't got a short leg anymore. Although Simpson is pointing. Allsop's going in at shortish mid wicket. He's mm. trying, he's thinking. Simpson trying all sorts of different fielding positions. Carson is in. Back goes Hanscom all the time in the world. He played off the back foot out into the on side, but only as far as the sort of fairly conventional mid wicket. Carson is in, back goes Hanscom, looking to force it off the back foot, does force it off the back foot, but only as far as Pajara at uh, extra cover, really, rather than cover. No turn, you really expect there to be too much, if any, on the first day, in goes Carson, back goes Hanscom, plays it firmly back down the wicket to the young off-spinner. Polishes the ball on the bottom of his Sussex shirt. Uses a bit of sweat off his brow as well. Do well to work up a sweat in this. In he goes. And Bowles, Hanscom is going down the track looking to drive. Does. But he's picking out fielders time and again. He and is. And he's picked out Pajara. 
It's good to see Jack Carlson prepared to give the ball some air. I like that. Yeah, absolutely. Steps in and bowls. Hanscom is bold. Went down the wicket. Tried to swing away over mid wicket. Whether Carson saw him coming, not sure, but it was a nicely pitched delivery and dumps the ground down on that one knee. Peter Hanscom. He got to his 50, but he has given it away now. And that's very, very well bowled by Jack Carson. A little bit of a rush of blood from Peter Hanscom, but. Carson was good enough to take advantage in another decent partnership, but not as yet sort of match-changing partnership for Leicester and Sussex are plugging away here. Leicester 206 for five. Yes, and I just wonder whether, you know, we were talking about Peter Hanscom, how he was picking out the fielders, and well, it seemed like he maybe lost concentration or just got frustrated. He was looking to hoik Jack Carson away over mid-wicket and ends up being bold, so... A bit of cricket by Jack Carson and a wicket that Sussex desperately needed because batting was looking relatively straightforward from uh, these two. But that's an important wicket. Uh, a partnership between those two of what? 59 plus 6? Six, 65. 65. So good partnership, which uh, I think you're right, Richard. It's not a match-defining partnership. It's a partnership that rebuilt the innings, but Sussex have just sort of got wickets at important times today. Um, and the new man coming out is, is Ben Cox, a well bowled Jack Carson. Um. Ben Cox, number seven on his back, makes his makes his way out. But that, but perhaps that was a, a bit of both. Perhaps he had got himself slightly bogged down, but he, it was more the fact that he was hitting the fielders. Uh, in that previous over bowl by Danny Lamb, there was a lovely juicy half volley that Peter Hanscom played beautifully enough, but it was straight to the field, and you could tell he was a little bit frustrated that, you know, a yard either side, and it was four runs. Uh, however, uh, he's made 51, and a very patient 51 it was, and a very welcome half-century for his side. Well, Lesser Shaw's lower order and uh, tail are going to have to do a job again if they're going to get to the sort of total which wouldn't enabled them to put the Sussex batters under a certain amount of pressure and, th and that I think needs to be something in the order of 380, 400 to be quite honest anything below certainly below 300 I think Sussex will be delighted with so Carson is going to be bowling to Ben Cox short leg is in round the wicket he goes, Cox goes back and little uncertainly pushes it away off the off stump out towards Pajara in the covers end of the over successful one Jack Carson, one for 11 for him. And uh, one or two comments coming on, coming in. Not a great shot. No, it wasn't. But I also think it was well bowled by, by Jack Carson. I'm going to have to leave you, Richard. Updates time for Adrian and uh, BBC Radio Sussex. Well, he's got some good news to, to give them. They're plugging away. They're only at one wicket away from a second bowling bonus point. And if they can dismiss Leicestershire today, and certainly if they can dismiss Leicestershire for 300 or less, I think they'll be pretty pleased. Jabaskis has a job to do. I mentioned previously that Leicestershire skipper Lewis Hill had pointed out that at Yorkshire in the first innings, only sort of Ben Mike had been able to, to really go on. Well, Wishy Patel. He made 90 there. Wishy Patel made a, a very, very fluent 87. Hanscom, 51. Marcus Harris, 24. Louis Kim before. Lewis Hill without scoring. Round the wicket comes Danny Lamb to bowl to Travaskis on 33, who leaves outside off stump. No run. Lamb gets a, a pat on the back from Tom Clark, who's the uh, very straight mid off. Straight, shortish mid off. About four fifths of the way back down the track. Lamb's getting through his overs. This is his 14th. In he comes, bowls, Chavaskis again leaves outside off stump.
Just the one slip. Lamb is in and bowls, third time in a row. Travaskis steps forward and leaves. That was quite wide from Danny Lamb. Perhaps looking to frustrate Liam Travaskis here. 41 overs after this, so T will be taken late. Sorry, 41 overs remain after this, so nine overs until T, nine and a half overs, including the three balls that Danny Lamb has got left to bowl. Only about 40 minutes, in he goes, and bowls, Travaskis is beaten on the outside edge, plunged forward at that one. Did it straighten? Did he play down the wrong line? Either way, he missed it. Bounce through to Simpson, so good from Lamb. Just a straightened a fraction. Not a great shot from Travaskis. Weight back raised. Lamb is in to him. He leaves outside off stump. So fifth ball in a row that goes past. Liam Travaskis, four balls he's allowed to go through when he's played at. Yet to lay bat on ball in this over from Danny Lamb. Who is in and bowls and uh, full six. Deliveries. That uh, Lamb bowled in that over all went through to John Simpson. Five of them to Vasquez left. One he pushed at a little bit or played at. So I made an over from Danny Lamb. The value of which is, I guess, arguable, but justified by the fact he did actually beat the bat once. So Travaskis and uh, a Cox. Have a word. Ben Cox, formerly of Worcestershire, of course. Long servant, long time servant of uh, Worcestershire. For joining Leicestershire last season. On loan for the last few games of the season. Carson is in, bowls to him. Cox is back on his stumps. Length delivery. Taking a chance that it wouldn't spin. It didn't. Just dropped it with a slightly angled bat out towards Carter, who's at a Shortish backward point slash deepish gully position. Carson in bowls. That was the wrong line onto leg stump. Turned towards mid wicket. Picked up uh, running across there by James Coles, who picks up right handed, transfers it to his left hand, swivels and throws, misses the stumps at the non striker's end, and seals it is who covers behind them. So Cox is off the mark. is in. Forward is Travaskis defending. No run. Ben Cox made 32 at Headingley in his single innings before being bowled by uh, Matthew Fisher. Carson is in. Back goes Travaskis. Turns it past short leg. Trickles out towards Pajara at mid-wicket. No run. Cox, and I think it was Carson were involved in that incident at Hove in the championship fixture last season. Carson is in, forward goes Travaskis, turned on the front foot this time by Travaskis, past short leg, but only as far as Pajara. Slightly infamous. Feet nearly became tangled as Cox turned for a second. Words were exchanged, a bat was pointed. Carson is in and bowls. Nice air to that one. Travaskis went back again. It was by no means a short delivery. But again, it didn't really spin. So Travaskis able to play it off the pitch on the back foot, dropping it out on the leg side. End of the over. But once again, the wicket falling has uh, slowed things down in terms of the scoring rate. Dan Norris asking for the sound and the video to be synced again, so might just have to switch on and off. 
not you Dan, maybe possibly at our end. Sometimes it, it just happens. Not quite sure whether it's to do with the, the Wi Fi, but we might be able to sort that out for you. Between overs, something like that. Lamb is going to continue in the meantime. The workhorse. 14 overs, 1 for 32. Doing a very, very good job for his side. He's going to be bowling to Ben Cox. The experienced Cox. His 149th first class game. Averaging 27 and a half, which, which is decent for a wicket keeper. But three slips, of course, behind the new batsman. And it's Adrian is back alongside. Thank you, Richard. Here comes Daddy Lamb running in from the Bennett end. Comes some bowls. Oh, he's trapped Plub in front, I think. I'll be so Oh, well, I, I don't know. Well, certainly in terms of height, um, that looked like it did keep very low. I'm not sure quite what saved Jordan Cox. Um, Jordan Cox. Uh, ben Cox. But it looked a good shout. Although, what if you got a bit of an inside edge on that? Because it, I mean, it looked like he was almost stone wall in front. Good shout. That's a good show, actually. Yeah, just, just from here, I mean. Seeing that one again. Comes Lamb. Bowls to Cox, who drives without timing to mid off, fielded by Carvelos. We are going to see it again. Good work by the replay team. Yeah, it just looks like. It just above the pad, just. Mm. Uh, Danny Lamb sort of gestured to James Middlebrook up. So. Not given on height, perhaps. Right. Okay. Interesting. Like a good shout from here. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we are nowhere near in line, so it was a, that was slightly presumptuous from me. In comes Lambos. Cox drives into the covers, or to mid off, widish mid off, filling by uh, Cavellus. There is no run. I mean, really, we should be uh, heading for tea about now. Yes, I was but saying it's going to be something like ten past. I would think. So the, the over eight is uh, there's nothing there, but I'd imagine the umpires might be having a word to the scorers. I, I think Sussex are probably a little bit behind here. Well, normally they do put up, if it's level, it says level, right. if you know what I mean. Yeah, so there's nothing, nothing shown nothing at all. I um, mean, bowls, uh, Cox defends down the track, fielded by Lamb, of his own bowling no run. He's doing a, a good containing job here, Danny Lamb. In his 15th over, three maidens, one for uh, 32. Yeah, he's bowled pretty well. Um, three slips, point cover mid off, mid on mid wicket, uh, and a fine leg. The three slips are Allsop, Clark, and Coles. Lamb in bowls, and Cox goes after this, and he's going to play that one away for four runs. Tom Haynes won't catch that. The ball runs out towards the meat on Cafe and Bar on the to the right of where we're commentating from. Bit too much width there from Danny Lamb, and Ben Cox was very pleased to drive that one away through cover point for four runs. A nice shot. He goes to five. Leicestershire to 211 for five. And Lamb gets the ball back from Harry Carvados and turns with the indoor school behind him. And he's on his way again. Right arm over the wicket bowls. Oh, I suspect that didn't miss the off stump by very much. I mean, you have to say there's a good leave in that case by uh, Ben Cox, but there was a howl from Danny Lamb and I suspect John Simpson as well. Uh, another over drifts by the 57th of the inning. So we've got another seven overs to go until uh, T. Uh, 211 for five. Travaskis on 33. Cox on five. We didn't have our, our pudding, did we? We didn't have time to have no, our pudding. No, we didn't. It, there was looked to be some tempters down there, but uh, mm. we were we were very good boys. I've yeah. got some bickies for. Have you? Yeah, there's a couple. Of well done, Richard. There. Good stuff. <laughs> That's all we like to hear. Hasn't went. Jack Carson, round the wicket to Travaskis goes back, turns it firmly down in towards the pads <laughs> of uh, short leg. Bounces off them also. But Joe Hurst has been in touch on Sussex Cricket at BBC.co.uk and he says, uh, Hi Adrian, your favourite wicket keeper in the county championship batting here. I do like him. Lovely air there from mm. Carson. Lovely loop, foolish, and just driven back to him by Travaskis on the bounce, of course. He just kept beautifully at Hove last year. Really did, did keep, he? yeah. He did. 
Brilliant. He thought he had two leg side stumpings mm. in that game. One wasn't given. Carson is in. Ooh, Quicker almost one. Almost got that one through. Javask is a little bit late on it. Pushed it out into the offside. A shout of uh, frustration from Jack Carson. Yeah. Javask is a little bit becalmed now on 33. Carson in. Bowls. Another lovely loopy delivery and forward goes to Vasquez, pushing it up, back up the wicket to the young Offie. He's just settled in for a nice rhythm here, Carlson. Mm, he has. He has. Steps to the crease and bowls. Turn of the wrists from Travaskis on that defensive push. Gets it past all salt, but runs out slowly towards backward square where lurks Finn Hudson Prentice. Breeze just ruffles Carson's shirt as he goes in and bowls. It does drop a touch short there. Played down into the ground on the back foot by Travaskis and could have landed on his foot and run back into the stumps. He looked down quickly, realised it had uh, more or less stuck there at his feet and just moves it towards John Simpson. So not only is Carson bowling nicely, he's bowling quickly as well and in terms of getting through his overs and uh, that will just improve things as far as the over eight is concerned but it is now past 22 four and we still have six overs to bowl before t extraordinary somerset collapse at the oval at one stage somerset were 196 for one matt renshaw and tom lamady going on really nicely in comes lamb bowls all oh, cox is struck right about the thigh pad on this occasion the ball bounced out to the offside yeah. no run so that was 100 they were 196 for one they're now 216 for seven. Goodness. Uh, Renshaw was run out on 87, and that prompted the Caps. Uh, Lambie out for 100. And Gus Atkinson in the wickets. Uh, three for 48 for the England fast bowler. He's, he thinks going to be there or thereabouts for selection in the, uh, in the coming summer. Lamb. Bowls. Oh, Cox. Well, he looks at his bat. He was going to drive that away through the offside. He completely mistimed it and got an inside edge of the bat. The ball went down the track to Lamb and there is no run. So, all happening down in uh, South London. Essex 258 for four against Kent Dean Elgar. Out for 120. All these games in the first division. Hampshire 192 for four against Lancashire. As in comes... Uh, Lamb bowls to Cox, who plays that to mid-wicket, fielded by Hudson Prentice. There is no run. Durham picked up a wicket yet after a pretty one. <laughs> yeah, I'll have a look. Uh, Notts 201 for four against Worcestershire at Trent Bridge. Uh, no, they haven't. <laughs> Warwickshire are 296 without loss. Uh, Rob Yates 163, Alex Davis on 130. There's some bowling figures there, I can tell you. In comes... Uh, Lamb bowls and Cox defends down the track. There is no run. So that's Division 1. Probably some sideways looks at the skipper at the end of play. Totally. Um, so Wantage Road, <laughs> Northants going along very nicely. 176 for 1 against Middlesex. Uh, Emilio Gay, 104 not out. Luke Proctor on 68. At uh, Bristol, a, a day of contrasting fortunes. Um, but Yorkshire, 236 for 6. A century there for Shan Massoud, who's 113 not out. Lamb again bowls to Cox, drills the ball down the ground, four runs. Lovely looking shot by Ben Cox. Driven away, slightly over pitched by Danny Lamb. And Cox drilled it straight back past him. He goes to nine, 215 for five. Um, and down at Cardiff, uh, Kieran Carlson is out for 74. Glamorgan 164 for four. Colin Ingram 122. Here, yeah, 215 for five. We've still got after this over another five overs to go until T, so I think Rich is about right. I think we could well be gone four o'clock. As in comes Lamb, bowls short, and Cox just sways out of the way. Let's them all go through into the gloves of John Simpson. There is uh, no run. End of the over, 2.15 for five, 33 Travaskis, nine to Cox. Just into live cricket here on the BBC, BBC Radio Sussex. Uh, BBC Radio Leicester. Adrian Harms, Richard Ray, bringing you live commentary from Grace Road. Uninterrupted so far today, which is good news. Dry day, a bit chilly if you're 
Sitting outside, you'll certainly need a coat or a fleece or something. Uh, but a day that has swung to and fro at the minute, 2.15 for 5, uh, you know, about even Stevens, I reckon. Yeah. Sussex winning the toss and deciding to bowl. I think Sussex will be too unhappy if they can pick up one more before T. Mm. Carson's been close on a couple of occasions. He goes round the wicket to Liam Travaskis, who's got absolutely stuck on 33. Travaskis sort of tries to drive it away through the leg side, but again doesn't really time it in a comfortable stop for Pajara, who's close-ish at mid-wicket. Carson, tall, dark-haired, in, bowls, a little bit quicker, flatter delivery, trying to push it through. Travaskis did go back, but he Played it comfortably enough for all the oohs and ahs out there. Back down the wicket to Carson, who's conceded just 12 runs from his five overs and two balls. In he goes, drops a little bit short again and cut away, oh, but a foot. good diving stop to his left at point. Two-handed, goalkeeper style there. And uh, that saves four, probably. I think that was Danny, Danny Lamb. Lamb. Mm. Yeah, good stop was there is a sweeper out on the offside boundary whether he'd have got there it's a shortish boundary i'm not sure carson in again little bit of room for the first time outside off stump but travaskis can't find the gap pushes it but only as far as extra cover where coles is the fielder carson is in gives it lots of air this time just a little bit too much for the first time and uh, overreaching is Tavaskis and flicking it away towards deep mid wicket. It's a long chase round for, or a long chase back, I should say, for Pajara. Good throw from Pajara, actually, right over the stumps. Carson can't take it cleanly. Tavaskis picks up three. He threw without discomfort there, which is a reassuring sign. Pajara, that is. He didn't underarm it or have to be careful. Didn't appear to have any issues with his back. So three to Tavaskis. First run for some little time. He moves on to 36 to 18 for five. Cox asks Carson just to hang on a second. Well, he picks a little dirt off the track. Carson stays round the wicket, bowls to Ben Cox, who leans forward. Holds the pose for a second or two as he pushes it back up the wicket on the offside. End of Carson's over. Another good one. Yeah, you can't help liking what you see of him as a, as a bowler. Jack Carson, six overs, one for 15 for him, two 18 for five. The score, four overs until T. He's in deep conversation with John Simpson, I think, about a fielding change. Uh, nice email coming. Hi, chaps. Uh, from Sam Keir down in uh, Shore. He says, uh, hello, Sam. He says, I'm recovering from surgery by dozing on the sofa and watching the coverage. It's great to hear from you, Sam, and I hope that uh, everything is going well and you're taking things uh, nice and easy. And he's very complimentary about our commentary, so that's always uh, nice to hear. Thank you for that. Um, some, he says, mainly Sussex observations, and I'll read these as we go through. We've got a change of bowling. Um, yes, yeah, so I think Prentice I think had some Prentice back in. That's opportune long, because longish spell has come to an end. Yeah, two for thirty-seven. Finn Hudson Prentice in his twelve overs. Um, in comes Hudson Prentice to bowl to the left-handed Liam Travaskis. He's in a bowl. Travaskis defends on the onside. There is no run. Ollie Carterfield is on the field for someone. I'm not quite sure who. Um, so, uh, Sam says, if Finn Hudson Prentice can maintain the accuracy, this accuracy throughout the season, he'll pick up plenty of wickets and become one of the best all-rounders in the division. Well, I certainly agree with that, Sam. Last year, he's he took 20 wickets. Uh, a bit expensive. I think I was saying earlier on, those 20 wickets came at 47 uh, from memory. But certainly good accurate spell here today he's in and bowls oh and very nearly breaches Travaska's defences then um, yeah he took 20 wickets at 47 best of four for 27 but he was Sussex's leading run score in the championship 879 runs at the best part of 49 so absolutely um, and I think Finn was slightly disappointed with his bowling last season but he's bowled really well here he's had his hair cut actually no longer the flowing mane of Finn Hudson Prentice, so perhaps we'll talk to him about that at the end of the day's play. 218 for five. He's on his way and bowls and defended by Travaskis up the offside of the track. No run fielded by Coles. Uh, Lamb, a shrewd signing 
the holding bowler we've been missing for a number of years. Yes, I, I would agree with that as well. A little bit, um, Sam, in, in the David Visa mould. Um, someone who's Dave. Yeah, someone who. <laughs> and actually, a, 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 an opportune time to give a, a, a nice plug to a podcast um, that I know Sam has been heavily involved with. I'm um, talking about David Visa. Hitman for Hire. It's well worth a listen. As in comes Hudson Prentice bowls and Javaskis drives uppishly to mid off footed by Pajara. No run. We're going to talk more to Sam about that next week when he's going to pop in at Hove and we're going to have a chat about Hitman for Hire. It's, um, sorry. Uh, they had also been that. Put yes, they did. Position for for quite a while, didn't they? And coming they around him. the wicket, and now he wants very him. straight, you know, mid off, and it would have been absolutely into the bread basket there. When he comes, oh, I think they're going to move Tom Clark there, but Clark's you'd rather feel, go in there, is he? yeah, the um, the horse might have bolted. Yes, it's a very interesting podcast about uh, David Visa, his time since he left Sussex and playing all over the world as a a franchise cricketer. Now they have got Clark in that position, as you were saying. Two men in on the offside. In comes Hudson Prentice Bowles and Trafascus defends out to Coles on the offside. No run. It's just good to hear the views of a player who's playing all around the world for different teams. So it's certainly well worth a listen. And as I say, we'll hear more from that from Sam next week. So, um, But I think you're right. Danny Lamb is that sort of holding boulder. Um, Sam, Sam talks about the, the outfit a bit. I think they've done a remarkable job here on the outfield, really, Sam, getting this fit for play with the amount of rain there's been in this neck of the woods. In comes Hudson Prentice Bowles, and Travaskis turns onto the uh, leg side. There is no run, but the grass is quite long. You're right, I think. Um, but very, very difficult for the groundsman in this neck of the woods. Um, get cocked quickly, please, says Sam. He always seems to punish Sussex. Well, that's true, but I've, wonderful wicketkeeper. Uh, ben Cox, so I'm sure he will do well here. But great to hear from you, Sam. Hope your recovery continues to go well. I look forward to seeing you at Hove next week, uh, all being well. Uh, Jack Carson is going to carry on. 218 for five. We've got three overs to go until T. So actually, Sussex have caught up a little bit of time. Um, although, you know, they should still be behind, really, because we should have gone to T sort of ten minutes ago. Three, oh, two overs. Actually, three overs remain until T as Carson goes in, sort of driven away. It's a bit thick outside edgy from Ben Cox, but he's got it away through backward point and he's going to pick up a very slightly fortuitous couple of runs. But he goes into double figures in so doing. Moves on to 11, 220 for five. It's round the wicket attack is an interesting one from Carson. It's It's paid some dividends for him. Short leg and slip as Carson is in. Forward goes Cox again. Bit of a thick outside edge. This time it trickles out towards backward point and uh, as a consequence no runs. Hudson Prentice is the fielder there. Cole's a little, a little skip as he goes to the crease. Drops short for the first time. Cox goes back pulls it around the corner but there is a sweeper out there I think mm. it's Haynes out there so it, it is just the one first time the sweep has been called into action therefore the sort of bad ball a little bit of an insurance policy first one that Carson has bowled from round the wicket that's a good effort he's staying round to the left-hander Travaskis bowls full driven back past him but not past him because he sprawls across to his left, Carson, gets a good hand on it and uh, pushes the ball towards Seals. You heard the no from Travaskis. He did take a step. Good fielding off his own bowling. Carson in again. Some air this time. Driven out towards mid-off and it's fumbled there. In fact, it is Haynes at mid-off, actually. He's not sweeping. He is at, uh, he's at mid-off. It's Harry Carvelis who was out on the boundary. Apologies to both. Two very different figures. Should be able to work that out. Carvelis much the taller of the two men. So Javaskis takes one. Carson bolts again. He Ooh. drops short. And this time Cox has pulled to the boundary. For the first time then Jack Carson has, has dropped a couple short. This is the end, towards the end of his seventh over. And he got away with the first. He didn't get away with the second. Cox moves on to 16. 226 for five. Yeah, 
You don't want to be in at short leg when you're dropping them short like that, and um, certainly the first one wasn't punished. I don't think Cox was in any mood to miss out. Uh, but Javaskis rather with the next one. It's going to be Hudson Prentice who's going to carry on. Let's say two overs until T. 226 for five. I, I still think there's there's not much between the two sides here. I think both will be happy in their sort of own way. In comes Hudson Prentice bowls. Travaskis defends to that very straight mid off Tom Clark. There is no run. I mean, that being said, uh, Richard, you know, if you win the toss and you stick a side in, I think the more I think about it, Leicestershire will be the happier of the two. Um, the new ball will be available to Sussex in 16 overs after T. As in comes Hudson Prentice, just the one slip in place in a bowl. Short, pulled away by Travaskis, straight to mid wicket, fielded there by Ollie Carter, who is on four. Uh, possibly Danny Lamb. Carter standing up mid wicket, hands in pockets. Uh, down below, is Sean Hunt, who was in the squad but not selected, is uh, sitting there wrapped up in a big coat is that sort of a day it's a chilly day here at uh, Grace Road Hudson Prentice round the wicket bowls and defended by Travaskis to the offside there is no run he's faced uh, eight, 90 balls Liam Travaskis for his 37 but he's doing a good job for his county uh, came in when Rishi Patel was out just after lunch caught by John Simpson off the bowling of Danny Lamb strangled down the leg side and a good partnership of 65, a patient partnership with Peter Hanscom, who was eventually bowled for 51 by Jack Carson. In comes Hudson Prentice bowls and Travaskis with a model for defensive shot, foot to the pitch of the ball, head right over the ball, and just plays the ball out into the covers, no run. Hudson Prentice has been impressive today, Sam Keir was saying in his email. He's in his 14th over, five maidens, two for 37. He was on a hat-trick earlier on today, having bowled Lewis Kimber. And then the next ball, Louis Kimber, and then Lewis Hill, I should say. Had some Prentice in, bowls. Short, pulled away, just as I say that. And picks up a single down to deep back with square footed, all the way out on the boundary by uh, Jack Carson, who sent in a not very good throw that John Simpson makes look good. That's the art of a good wicketkeeper. And Travaskis goes to 38, 227 for five. The field changes over for the right-hander. Um, Ollie Carter is just saying, where do you want me, Skip? Um, and he's going to go to uh, mid-wicket. So there are three men saving one on the offside, two slips. There's a mid on a straightish mid-wicket, Carter, who's close enough in so he won't need to walk in with the bowler. Hudson Prentice in, bowls, and Cox works this one into the covers, and there is no run. Another over, slips by, good accurate stuff from Finn Hudson Prentice. 14 overs, 5 maidens, 2 for 38. One over to go until tea here on BBC Radio Sussex, BBC Radio Leicester. Adrian Harms and Richard Ray, if you want to get in touch with us after tea, your, your regular email address is sussexcricket at bbc.co.uk or foxcom, C O M S 24 at gmail.com or you can tweet at foxcoms24 or at bbc at sussex sport ollie carter's gone running off danny lamb is coming on for the last over before t that's going to be bowled by the off spin of jack carson and a watery sun hmm. makes its a presence felt as carson goes in around the wicket to travaskis who blocks the ball forward defensive back down the track it goes Carson just reaches down and uh, dries his right hand in the dust on the return crease, blows on his fingers, spins the ball, skips in and bowls. Javaska stretches forward, slightly fuller delivery. Gets there almost on the half volley. Back down the track it goes, and uh, seeing him stretch forward, Allsop is uh, moved from short leg to the silliest of mid-off stroke points as Carson is in. It's turned through where Allsop was at short leg but only as far as Hudson Prentice behind square on the leg side.
slip in as well, of course, as Carson 16 on his back is a nice loop. Played slightly more firmly, slightly more aggressively by Travaskis, but only as far as Seals at mid on. And also, after just two deliveries, decides I'm going to go back to short leg, or Simpson decides he's going to go back to short leg. Two balls left in the session. Carson is in better line off stump middle and off. Travask is forward, playing it comfortably enough. Out to uh, extra cover, no run. Cole's the fielder. Carson steps in and bowls. Nice loop to it. Doesn't turn though, and forward goes Travaskis and defends and made an over from Jack Carson to finish the session. He's bowled eight overs now and has bowled pretty nicely. Just a couple of loose ones in his previous over that had dropped short, one of which Ben Cox put away to the boundary, but he's got one for 23 from eight. And as Adrian has been saying, it's sort of quite nicely balanced now. The evening session is going to be the key to the day almost. 227 for five. Ben Cox, 16 not out, out of a partnership of 21 for the sixth wicket so far. Liam Travaskis, who uh, played a big role in a partnership of 65 for the fifth wicket with Peter Hanscom. He is 38 not out, but he's gone into a bit of a shell after the dismissal of Hanscom. He's taken on the role of the senior player. Hanscom, one of two wickets to fall in the afternoon session. He was bowled by Jack Carson, a sort of missing a slog sweep, but it was a nice loop from Carson. Rishi Patel having gone not so long after lunch, 20 minutes or so after lunch, caught uh, gloving a bouncer down the leg side by John Simpson off the bowling of Danny Lamb for a fine and fluent 87. Certainly he's been the pick of the batsmen so far, but the Sussex bowlers really have stuck up, stuck up their task. 227 for five. If, if they can dismiss Leicestershire for 300, 320, I think, Adrian, they won't be displeased. No, I would agree. I think, you know, difficult to tell, isn't it, whether it's just a very good batting surface or the Kookaburra ball. I think I think Leicester perhaps marginally with their noses in front. I think Sussex, having won the toss and decided to bowl, would have hoped to have had more than five down. But I agree with you. Sussex have really kept at it. They bowled much better this afternoon than they did this morning. Couple of wickets after tea. New ball available after 16 over. Sussex will still harbour hopes that they can bowl Leicestershire out today. We'll be back with you in around about 15 minutes time.
particularly when you know Leicestershire at one stage was 63 for three. So Leicestershire fought back really well. Um, the new ball, I would imagine, when it comes in 16 overs time, I, I see no reason why Sussex wouldn't take it straight away. So if Sussex could bowl Leicestershire out today, I think they'll feel they've had a reasonable day. I think if Leicestershire back through into tomorrow, uh, Sussex will be disappointed. They bowl well between lunch and tea, Sussex. Not particularly well this morning, I didn't think. This man's bowled well. Had some Prentice round the wicket bowls to uh, Travaskis, who leans forward, plays to backward point, fielded by Clark, and there is no run. It could, could be many reasons behind the fact they've only taken five wickets. I mean, Richard and I have been discussing the Kookaburra ball, as indeed most people involved in cricket have been. It, it seems very difficult to take wickets. That being said, sorry, you've taken a stack down at the Oval today, so you know, who knows? Uh, Hudson Prentice, a slip in a gully. He's in around the wicket bowls, and Trafaskis defends down the track, and there is no run. Just point out Adrian that the over 8 has come up on the board and it is level despite the fact we are starting how can that be afternoon session at sort of 4.24 yeah. so 24 minutes late I do not know yeah, <laughs> I, I, I understand I, no, I, 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 how I, they work it out yeah I don't get that at all they must be behind. In comes Hudson Prentice bowls and driven uppishly by Travascus to mid on, well footed by a sprawling Ari Cavalos. Yeah, I, I, I just don't understand that. I mean, you've. They you had know, a bit on for wickets. They, they, they like do that. a little but bit. No real delay. No, I mean, we've, had, we've had five wickets. Um, you know, 16 overs an hour. We should have gone to T at 20 to 4. We didn't. We went at. Four. Just gone, yeah, slightly after 4. So I, I, I just don't understand how you can be level. But there you go. In comes Hudson Prentice bowls, played into the covers, fielded by Coles, no run, but w we can understand why the play doesn't start in the county championship at half past ten, and I don't just mean in April and September, I mean right through the season. Half past ten start, and by the time you get to eleven o'clock, half the day's gone. And that World Test final last year at the Oval, uh, Australia and India, that was at the end of May, started at half past ten. So some of these rules and regulations, I think, are getting quite antiquated. Hudson Prentice in bold, and Trafaskis gets an inside edge down to uh, fine leg, fielded by Tom Haynes. Another tight, accurate over from Finn Hudson Prentice is now bowled 15 overs, five maidens, and taken two for 39. If you just joined us, a very good evening. Welcome to Grace Road. Adrian Harms and Richard Ray here on BBC Radio Sussex and Leicester. Um, Leicestershire at one stage 63 for three recovered well 229 for five the innings of the day unquestionably Rishi Patel who batted beautifully for 87 of 98 balls Sussex Cricket at bbc.co.uk foxcoms c-o-double-m-s-24 at gmail.com if you'd like to keep us company over the next couple of hours or so Jack Carson who bowled rather nicely before tea that was my impression and um I think the fact that he's going to continue after tea rather confirms that to have been the case. Eight overs, three maidens, one for 23. He comes around the wicket, bowls to Travaskis, who's down the pitch, driving and driving very nicely indeed. Got to the pitch of the ball, cracked it back past Carson, inside uh, Midoff, who couldn't get across to his left. And Travaskis takes the initiative arguably for for the first time really T made the bowler he tossed it up good shot and uh, driven away for four he moves on to 43 233 for five Whether Haynes will just go a little bit deeper a little bit straighter at mid off now as Carson is in back goes Travaskis turns it to Pajara at mid wicket and there's no run Roman Walker was going to pop up today. I've just had a message from him that he's going to pop up tomorrow instead. I saw him doing some fitness work um, Dear. during lunch. He did, picked up a side strain. In goes Carson and Bowles, pushed defensively out into the offside, and there's no run in the pre season game against Warwickshire at Edgebaston. Um, so, poor Roman. Must be so frustrating to have prepared all winter and been very fit, and then big setback at the beginning of the season back goes Travaskis to that one from Carson defends out into the onside Pajara picks up and got his four off the first ball so 
no pressure as such to continue to score. Carson step, skip, bowls. Back foot defensive shot pushed out to Haynes at mid off. No run. Siren goes up, I think probably Aylstone Road rather than Saffron Lane. Adrian's off to update BBC Radio Sussex as Carson goes and tosses that one right up, clipped out towards Seals, who comes in to meet the ball at mid on, hurls its side on at the stumps at the non striker's end, but misses and Travaskis had would have had would have even made his ground anyway. So a single off the last ball, five off the over. Just a sign perhaps that Travaskis is Keen to uh, take a little bit more of an initiative than perhaps he did during the afternoon session. He's got 44 off 109 now. Cox 16 off 22. Partnership for the sixth wicket up to 28. Hudson Prentice continues. He's going to go around the wicket. Bowls to Travaskis. Goes back on off stump. Slightly angled bat as he defends out towards backward point. Tom Clark, the fielder there, just the one slip now, all sop. He's got his pads on underneath his whites, obviously because he's fielding at short leg for the most part when Carson is bowling. He's at slip. Clark is a gully as Prentice comes in round the wicket, again a fraction short, just enough width that time for Tarascus to go back and sort of drive it off the back foot. Angle bat out towards deep ish backward point. Jaden Seals is the fielder out there. Seals having fielded the ball keeps walking, leaving that backward point position for the left handed Travaskis to go down to long leg, but still a good 15 yards inside the ropes. Hudson Prentice over the wicket to Ben Cox, who goes back, who's in ours as it comes off the thick inside part of the bat runs out to mid wicket who's James Coles Coles has just stretched his back and having done so he, th he lies down on his back and does a couple of stretching exercises twisting the torso it's still a coldish wind out there Hudson Prentice in bowl Cox tries to drive it away from outside off stump and Possibly a little bit too close to him. He sort of bent both his knees as he tried to carve it away through the offside. Didn't get anything on it. Taken by Simpson. But again, a little bit like Travaskis in that previous over. From Carson, just a sign perhaps that Cox too is looking to take a bit more of the initiative. That's an apprentice. Runs in and bowls, for, looking to force off the back foot as it comes back and towards off stump. Hit down into the ground, moving across to his right in the covers. Fielder makes the stop. It's a uh, relatively diminutive Haynes out there, I think. Was he a backward point? He's a backward point as Hudson Prentice is in straight, clipped off his uh, off the straight by Cox, and he got it past mid wicket out as far as Pajara. Pajara had to move smartly to his right at the wideish mid on, picked up and threw at the stumps at the non strikers and missed them. Cox had, uh, had made his ground. End of the over. Cox on to 17, 236 for five. Simpson puts his arm around the shoulder of Finn Hudson Prentice. Decent over from him. 16 overs, 2 for 41. His figures now. They were, after two overs, 2 for none. When he picked up two in consecutive deliveries, bowling both uh, Louis Kimber and uh, Lewis Hill. Since then, no joy in terms of adding to that wicket return, but he's kept running in. Carson's going to continue. He's going to go over the wicket though, so Allsop's come out of short leg and gone in at short-ish. 
mid-wicket, about three strips back. So the only close catch, a genuine close catch, is the slip. Clark, as Carson is in, lovely loop to those deliveries, no turn for him. And uh, Cox stretches forward, pushes the ball back up the pitch to him. Bob of the knees from Cox as Carson goes in, bowls to him, he goes back. It wasn't too bad a length delivery, it wasn't too short and hurried on a bit. Got something on it though, didn't turn of course and pushed out into the offside. Pajara the fielder at extra cover. Carson is in, back again goes Cox. Slightly more middle stump uh, line this time back down the wicket. Wind whispered has just got a, a fraction warmer. Pleasantly so. Carson is in on off stump. Cox stretches forward. Pushes the ball out as far as Pujara. Sussex fielders trying to encourage them. The bowlers that is and the fellow fielders trying to keep up the noise levels. Carson in, back on leg stump goes Cox, turns it around the corner, looks inquiringly at his partner Travaskis, but he sees backward square closing on the ball quickly and uh, disabuses Ben Cox of any notion there might be a quick single to be taken. Carson in, bowls, Cox looking to drive, gets that one very wrong, sort of inside out shot, rehearses it several times because he's he sort of slapped it back down into the ground, ran to Carson, and it's the end of a very good over. Hmm. A maiden over, I think. Ten overs, four maidens, one for 28. For Carson, 236 for five is the score. Uh, Jane Strong has been in touch. She says, thanks for the commentary. It seems very windy. Hope the match gets more lively. Cheers, Jane, from sunny, sh sunny Shoreham by the sea. Uh, thank you, Jane. Yeah, it's, um, it's got a little more breezy. It's quite chilly here. Uh, today, but the sun is trying to come out. It's just good that we've got some cricket. Richard sent me a note earlier in the week and said the outfield was drying, but they've done a really good job. As in comes Hudson Prentice Bowles to Travaskis, who plays a thickest edge uh, to Jaden Seals, who's at backward point, but far enough out so that Travaskis can go through for a single. He goes to 46, the total to 237 for five. I'll turn the effects mic down a bit. Oh, don't worry about Jane, that. if it's getting a bit. No, not at all. Um, I've got a new effects mic this season, and it's smaller and yellower than the old big black <laughs> hairy thing, <laughs> which was good. Actually. Yes, um, but uh, no, no, it's it's hanging over the balcony. You did it to Andrew Rayburn. Hello, Andrew. Good to hear from you again with some stats, which I shall read in a mo. In comes Hudson Prentice Bowles. Oh, and he flashes at that. Does Cox? And he, well, I thought for a moment that had flown down to third man. It flew to backward point, footed by Haynes. And there is no run. Uh, Andrew says, according to the Association of Cricket Statisticians website, the Warwickshire opening stand of 343 is the 10th highest for the first wicket in county cricket since the year 2000. It beat Sussex's 3-2-8 against Glamorgan in 2022, and Ali Orr scored 198, Tom Haynes 77. But not... Break off for a moment. In comes Hudson Prentice and Bowles. Well, he got himself in a real tangle there, did Ben Cox. He was looking to play that one down towards fine leg, and he got himself all in a knot. The ball ends up in the gloves of John Simpson, and there is no run. But not the 372 that Goodwin and Montgomery put on against Notts in 2001. Sussex's club record opening stand is 490, set in 1933. According to the list, Lettershire haven't had an opening stand of 250 plus since 1979, when Barry Duddleston and John Steele put on 390 against Derbyshire, which remains a club record for the first wicket. And he says, yes, I am working today, says Andrew. In comes Hudson Prentice, bowls, and Cox plays a little uncertainly out into the offside. This is a good smell by Finn Hudson Prentice. Uh, thank you for those stats, Andrew. We need more people like Andrew. We do. <laughs> He should be working, really. Uh, it's, it's good to hear uh, he does some some commentary for us, Andrew. Always great to hear from him, and I'm sure we'll be back on the airwaves uh, with us at some stage during the season. Um, Cox waits. He's on 17, 237 for five. That's a 
apprentice in bowls. Cox drives to mid on. There is no run. Interesting, you know, when you talk about the Kookaburra ball, I mean, we've said it's difficult for bowling. Sometimes when the ball goes soft, it's difficult to bat as well. And, uh, and the one thing Sussex will be thinking here is that the new ball is sort of fast approaching, 11 overs until it's available. Uh, and from Sussex's point of view, they'll, they'll know here that Leicester haven't got away. You know, if it was 3.37 for five, you think, mm, crumbs. But 2.37 for five, if Sussex could take the new ball and you know, get a few quick wickets, they'll feel it's still been a good day. But these two defending stoutly, as in comes Hudson Prentice bowls, and Cox sways out the way the ball goes through to the gloves of Simpson. There is no run. Have another tight, accurate over from uh, Finn Hudson Prentice. Uh, 17 overs, 5 maidens, 2 for 42. Leicestershire 237 for 5. Travaskis on 46. Uh, Cox is on 17. I'll right, bring you up to date with uh, matters elsewhere. Just very briefly in the second division. That's what we're interested in. Glamorgan 185 for 4 at Cardiff against Derbyshire. Yorkshire 285 for 6. Uh, at Bristol, Shan Masood 140 not out. And North Hans 204 for 2 against Middlesex at Wantage Road. Medio Gay not out 114. Carson is in to Travaskis, who looked as though he was going to come dancing down the wicket there. I, th I suspect Carson saw him coming and uh, just, just pulled it back a bit length. Travaskis ended up going back and uh, forcing it out into the offside. Couldn't pierce the field. He remains on 46 in his first innings for his new county, dear love to go on to 50 plus, in goes Carson and that's a ball that he could have done so, didn't do so though because it was short and wide outside off stump, he went back, cracked it into the offside but a really good piece of fielding at, at extra cover, diving away to his right and it uh, manages to save any runs whatsoever as Carson tosses that one up clipped out towards Seals who Hurl, who runs in and throws the ball as he dives, picks it up and dives, throws the ball on the dive to towards the stumps at the non-strikers and doesn't hit them. Travaskis had dived in and uh, has is going to have to rearrange all his equipment there and he immediately waves at the pavilion, brushes himself off. All right, does he want the pavilion? Nobody's coming out. He seems to be okay. So just the single, but it was a, a risky one as he tries to keep the scoreboard moving. He moves on to 47, 238 for five. Carson in, Cox forward, One off stump, pushing the ball out into the offside, no run. Sam Wood, Leicestershire 12th man down below us with new gloves, I think. In goes Carson. Bowls again, nice loop, nice and straight. Continues to bowl very nicely, considering there's nothing much there for him. There's no, not much seam on the Cookaburras by this stage. Certainly by this stage, we're at pretty much the 70 over mark. Carson is in, back again. Goes Cox, defending straight ball. Carson fields end of the over, just the single from it, and it was a risky one. So. He's doing a really good job for his side, Jack Carson here. It's a, it's a sort of thankless task in a way for a spinner yeah. with this ball at this stage of an innings. But he's doing a really good job because he's not going for many runs, 11 overs, 29 runs. And he has picked up that wicket, and a big wicket too, of, of Hanscom. And he's bringing the new ball ever nearer, 238 for five. He is, and Finn Apprentice doing a similar good job. 17 overs, 5 maidens, 2 for uh, 42. Jane has been back in touch from Shoreham. She says, hi, the wind was not worrying me, just thought it might affect the game. Please don't turn the effects down, she says. Don't turn it back up. Sorry, Jane. Um, thanks, says Jane, from Shoreham by sea. So. I drive through yes. Shoreham every time I'm at Hove. Yes, because you tend I, to... I drive up to, yes, yeah, stay with relatives at, uh, at Littlehampton. Right, OK. Which has had some... Uh, okay. Some okay. bad, some bad flooding the last. Uh, yes, with some high tides and in comes Hudson Prentice bowls and slashed away by Travaskis. The ball's going up with Jaden Seals, who misfield slightly, but it doesn't cost Sussex running. He was looking to drive that with three through extra cover, big thick edge, and the ball ended up with Seals, who's down at shortish third man. 
he misfielded but recovered and got the throw in so it didn't result in an extra run Vasquez to within two of a half century yeah some some really heavy rain has been down on the south coast and that coupled with high tides has led to some real problems um, in that particular area of Sussex Hudson Prentice over the wicket bowls to Cox hits him on the thigh pad the ball bounces out on the leg side and John Simpson trots out from behind the stumps and completes the fielding but not before um, a leg by is given the total advance is by one 239 uh, for five um, who's that warming up? Looks like Tom Clark's warming up. I haven't seen Tom Clark bowl for ages. He's had some ankle problems, but he's certainly going through a bit of a warm-up routine. He bowls sort of brisk, medium pace. I don't know if he's just cold or whether he is really warming up. Hudson Prentice in. Bowls, and that's nudged away by Travaskis, and that's going to be a boundary and a well-deserved half-century for Liam Travaskis. That's really well played on his Leicester de Leicestershire debut and he gets a good round of applause 52 coming up in 117 balls it's been a very patient innings but an invaluable innings for his side absolutely always good to make a, a big early impression mm. and uh, that's what he's doing Liam Travaskis played very solidly for that half century a very different bat type of all rounder from Rahan Ahmed number six but very effective. Hudson Prentice in again bowls to Travaskis and uh, Hudson Prentice fields off his own bowling and there is no runner. Just, I mean, I, I guess from his point of view now and from the Leicestershire dressing room, they'll be looking at him and thinking, right, you need to, you, you need to be there when this new ball is taken. You know, he's the man who's in. But he's, this, you know, that's nine over. Yeah, I take your point. It, it, nine overs away. They've, they've got to take advantage of these nine overs yes, if, if they can. Yeah. Um, because you know. Yes, the new ball, as Messrs sort of Patel and Harris show, can go around the park a bit, mm. but it can also pick up a couple of wickets. And Got some Prentice around the wicket bowls to Javaskis, who plays to mid wicket. There is no run. Six boundaries in that uh, half century for Lee and Javaskis. We said what a good cricketer he is, but good performer for Durham, but struggling to get in the side. And Richard and I were making the point: sometimes you you have to go elsewhere, but that's a substantial move from. Durham down to the, the East Midlands and you know that shows something of the desire of Liam Travaskis he's on 52 he waits as in comes Hudson Prentice and Bowles and Travaskis drives to mid on uh, there is no run a slight misfield by Ari Cabellos but it doesn't cost any runs I think John Simpson is trotting down the track I think he might be having a little word to Finn Hudson Prentice say so that'll do for now Finn um, yeah, pat on the back. Thanks very much. He's done a good job for his county today. 18 overs, 5 maidens, 2 for 47. I just wonder whether we might get spin at both ends here. I just wonder whether it, you know, it's worth a try with 9 overs to go until the new ball. Suddenly James Cole's got a bit of bounce with the Kookaburra ball last week, so that might be worth a try. 2 44 for 5. Um, 17 to Cox, 52 to Travaskis. But it will be Jack Carson to carry on. Over the wicket to Ben Cox. He is in. Cox is forward and off stump. Back down the wicket it goes. Cox has added just the one run to his score post T. He was on 16 off 21 balls. He's now on 42 balls. Double that, so he's faced another 20 balls for his 21 balls for his single. In goes Carson. Forward goes Cox again. The wind, hmm. which we have remarked, and Jane has remarked, just gets up again a little bit. Yeah, it does. But it is not like it was last week. In goes Carson down the leg side, and Cox pulls, sorry, sweeps, goes down on one knee. But uh, he's hit it almost too well, really. He hit it in front of square, needed just to hit it slightly behind square, or exactly square, to get it to the boundary. Carvelis is out there at, on the deep mid-wicket boundary, so it, it was just one. 2.45 for five. A, a first batting point is almost within touching distance as in goes Carson around the wicket. A fraction short, but Travaskis can't time it as he goes back and tries to chop it away through the offside. Bounces out. George James Coles. 
there's no run. Carson is in flatter, quicker delivery. Zeroing in on Travaskis' middle stump, he goes back, plays it off the pitch, back up the pitch to the young off spinner. Who's that warming up at slip? Clark? Uh, yeah, he, he does, does bowl. bowl a bit. Mm. In goes Carson, bowls, turn of the wrists from Travaskis as he stretches forward to that one. End of the over. 245 for 5, Travaskis 52, Cox 18. We well, didn't bowl last year, Tom Clark, because he had some angle problems, but he does bowl at a brisk medium pace so this is interesting if they're turning to Tom Clark which they are mm. um, so we haven't seen Tom bowl for a while I'm just looking at the uh, Sussex coaching staff making their way around the boundary edge Paul Farbrace James Kirtley both in shorts um, Ashley Wright far more sensibly has got some tracksuit trousers on um, brother of Luke of course began his career here at Leicester now the England selector uh, Luke Wright and Ashley the Sussex batting coach together with Grant Flower um, but it is going to be Tom Clark with eight overs to be bowled until a new ball is available and I see absolutely no reason why John Simpson wouldn't take that new ball um, so what's the field we're going to have one slip no we're going to have two slips let's see if there's a third man yes there is two slips a third man I just have to stand up and peer around the edge of the stand Cover mid off, mid on, mid wicket, a deep mid wicket and a fine leg. As in comes uh, Tom Clark from the Bennett end in over the wicket bowls and a uh, delivery right on the money from uh, Tom Clark, played down the track by uh, Ben Cox, and there is no run. Live cricket on the BBC, BBC Radio Sussex and Leicester, Adrian Harms and Richard Ray, delighted to be in the commentary box here at Grace Road. Send any emails, foxcoms, c o -M -M -S 24 at gmail.com. Clark in. Oh, short, pulled away by uh, Cox. That's not a great ball by Tom Clark, and it's going to go for four runs, and that won't do anything to endear himself to his coach. That was a half tracker. And Cox just said, thanks very much, and pulled it through um, backwards square for four runs. He goes to 22, 249 uh, for five. Or Sussex Cricket at bbc.co.uk those email addresses will find uh, the way to Richard and I. We're going to be um, Nick Housen from the Cricketer uh, magazine or publication is going to come and join us after five o'clock and have a chat to Richard. As in comes Tom Clark over the wicket. Bowls and up on his toes is Cox tries to steer that one through point but he gets rather straightened up and plays to cover and there is no run. So listen out for Nick. And he's trying to come out. It's sort of tried for much of the day, but it's just getting obscured slightly by some higher cloud. Clark in bowls. Oh, that kept a little low. And Cox did well to keep that out. Plays it to mid off, fielded by Carvelas. And there is no run. You would imagine that when the new ball is available, it would be Jaden Seals, who has struggled a bit today. Oh, beautifully at Hove last week. Just hasn't quite been his day. 11 overs, 3 maidens, no wicket for 46. Ari Cabellas, 11 maidens. Sorry, 11 maidens. 11 overs, 2 maidens, 1 for 51 so far. Clark in bowls. Cox just glides there on the leg side. Ollie Carter has to chase back from mid wicket. Is that Ollie Carter? Uh, no, it isn't, but it's the 250. It's Finn Hudson Prentice, and the applause around the ground is for the 250 up for Leicestershire. 250 for 5, and when they were 63 for 3. I think Leicestershire would have bitten your hand off for 250 for 5. Cox goes to 23. Liam Kravaskis on 52. He's faced 123 balls, but he won't worry about that, about the time taken. He's set out his stall from pretty much ball 1. He's been very watchful. He's made sure the poor ball has gone for 4, but it's been a good knock. By Travaskis on his debut. In comes Clark. Bowls. Oh, and there he has a fiddle with that. That's a poor shot. <laughs> well... It was too close to play that shot. He was looking to cut the ball away through backward point and he very, very nearly got a little nick on that through to John Simpson, but he didn't. 
end of the over. 250 for five, the announcer just giving us the statistics of Liam Travaskas's innings. He's still there on 52. Ben Cox is on uh, 23. Jack Carlson is going to carry on, so I thought we might get spin. A little surprised that James Coles hasn't bowled a bit more today, if I'm being honest. Two overs for 13. He picked up six wickets last week in the game against North. In fact, I could just see, oh, I thought that was John Simpson having a, going to have a word to James Coles, but um, it is going to be Jack Carlson who is going to carry on and he's going to be bowling to the right-handed Ben Cox who is on 23. Carson bowls, forward goes Cox, defends out into the onside this time. The be padded Allsop picks up a shortish mid-wicket. Again, marvellously consistent line and length. Mm. And that one is defended again on the front foot from Cox. Famous last words, but it was just in that an over, one over when he dropped a couple short. One of which Cox was able to put away, which in the context of 12.2 overs is pretty decent effort. Round the wicket he goes. Cox is forward. Again, line and length. This time out into the offside. Pajara picks up. Cox, a polisher of the ball on the bottom front part of his shirt rather than uh, his whites, his trousers. Steps in and bowls, does drop short then. Cox pulls it around the corner for four. So, probably my fault. Sussex supporters will be thinking there for saying how consistently well he was bowling, but still relatively inexperienced. And I was marvelling at the fact that of his the fact of his consistency in terms of line length up to that point it's a surprise real surprise when he just strays as he did there Cox moves on to 27 sweeps again this time straight out to Carvelis who has gone that little bit squarer on the uh, leg side boundary he picks up one therefore moves on to 28 255 for five point of peace now of course in terms of uh, bonus points Sussex Brains Trust are on, the, on the move around the boundary again. They are. Carson round the wicket. It's, it's a dangerous game. Travaskis goes back looking to cut. And uh, it skids on a bit. But he manages to come down on it just in time and chop it into the field on the offside. Where it is stopped in the covers. End of the over. 255 for five. Carson's waving away at the pavilion asking perhaps for a drink to be brought to him. Uh, over on the boundary, perhaps. Good partnership between these two. Worth 49 now. So it's a good partnership in this innings. None of them massive, but 78 between uh, Rishi Battelle and Peter Hanscom, then 65 Hanscom and Travaskis. This will be the third half century partnership of the innings. Let's just show have gone diligently about their work uh, today. As in comes Tom Clark. Over the wicket, bowls and driven by Cox straight back to Clark, who's very athletic and quickly down and fields to his left hand side. Tom Clark, who um, will now be the regular Sussex opener. Ali Orr departed to Hampshire. Uh, Tom Clark did fill that position quite a bit last season because Ali Orr was injured for a good part of the season. Here he comes, bowls. Oh, and he gets a wicket, does Tom Clark. He drags it on Ben Cox. Looking to hammer that one away through the offside. I'm pretty certain he got an inside edge on that. His off stump is out of the ground. Well, a change of bowling. And John Simpson has the Midas touch. And Cox is on his way. I think he'll be really annoyed with himself. It was a half volley. I'm fairly certain he dragged that on. Um, Tom Clark won't worry about that. And Sussex will be delighted with the new ball. Not that far away. Cox on his way for 28. Leicestershire 255 for six. Yep. Big inside edge and uh, leg stump out of the ground as he tried to drive it away. He was trying to hit it on the up slightly. He wasn't anywhere near the pitch of the ball. And uh, as you say, Adrian, Ben Cox, having gotten in, will be most miffed to have uh, to have gotten out again. He was on, as I mentioned earlier, I think it was 32 he made at Yorkshire before being bowled on that occasion as well. And uh, he's lost his leg stump on this occasion courtesy of Tom Clark. Yeah, I mean, that could be a big moment in the day because you know, 
I think we said Leicestershire haven't got away from Sussex. They've been very steady today, Leicestershire. Batted very sensibly, but Sussex will feel with this new ball. I hate to sound like a broken record, but it is only five overs away. And, you know, you're into the lower rule. That's not to say that Ben Mike and Tom Scriven, we all know these guys can bat. Certainly, Ben Mike and, and Tom Scriven are fine players, but it, it can be a little more tricky against the new ball and some of the pace of uh, Jaden Seals. Um, so an important wicket as far as Sussex are concerned. Yeah, Ben Mike made a fine 90. Up at Headingley against Yorkshire, Scriven. I bet he enjoyed 56. that. 56. Yeah, I mean, they, they put on well over 100. Um, but the point Ben said afterwards was he, he wasn't trying to prove anything to anybody at Yorkshire. said they'd been nothing but supportive during the year he was oh, there, good. although he didn't get many opportunities. He said he kind of wanted to do it for himself, just to show you that he could, against a good attack on a test match, sort of, you know, on a test match ground and under pressure, and he did that uh, really nicely. Oop. the ISDN line dropped us out. Let me try another number. I think actually, Richard, you're being very generous. I think that was probably my fault, but I didn't realise we, we, we we've got the uh, the ISDN cable, which runs from the the port, and I think perhaps my foot had dislodged it or something. Or it's it's not the sort of you know the, the most they, they have a little plastic sort of connection that's supposed to keep yeah it in the place, little clip, but sometimes that little clip isn't the most secure of things. As you can guess, folks, I'm I'm, I'm scrambling for an excuse. It is the first day of the season. Apologies, you've missed uh, two or three <laughs> balls, but hopefully uh, all is well and we're back with you now. End of the over, 256. You didn't miss too much. 256 for six, Travaskas 52. Ben Mike, having gotten off the mark with a bit of an inside edge down to long leg, has a single. Uh, so Jack Carlson has got a whole make way at the end of this over, and Nick Halson is going to join Richard from the uh, cricketer to have a natter for half an hour or so. Uh, the new man, Ben Mike, surveys the field. And Carson has come in from this the pavilion end. Um, bowling is off spin, he's in and bowls, and Mike is forward, plays into the offside, fielded by Cheshishwa Pajara. Um, five overs to go to the new ball is available. I mean, the light is okay. Um, the clouds are still relatively high, but you would imagine that Jaden Sills will be given the new ball as and when the time is right. Slip the only close fielder. Carson is in again, bowls, Mike uses his feet, plays it down the onside of the track, fielded by Carson of his own bowling, and there is uh, no run. Uh, one technical issue we thought might be our fault, but uh, apparently wasn't. Fox's fan has revealed what it was. He was worried about vibrating sounds. Ooh. 
Carson in again bowls. And Mike with a big heave, looking to heave that one down towards mid on. He gets a big thick edge. The ball flies over slip in the direction of backward point. And Mike gets a, a fortuitous single. He goes to two and Leicestershire 257 for six. A bit early to be playing shots like that, young Benjamin. But he, was, uh, he got away with it. Mm, he was looking to hit that one to Nottingham, wasn't he? That, he, that was going to go a long way if he'd have connected. Carlson again. The Sussex coaching staff now on the boundary just down below us. As Carson is in again around the wicket bowls and forward is Dravaskis watchfully. Plays into the hands of uh, short leg on the bounce. There is no run. Fielded there by Tom Allsop. Yeah, the vibrating sound issue was uh, Fox's fan's wife's phone down the back of the sofa. Apologies, he says. Ah. <laughs> for blaming us. Carson in again. That's a little short and Trevaskis just leans back and plays it into the covers fielded by James Coles. Again, there is no run. Trevaskis 52, Mike on two. Live cricket on BBC Radio Leicester and Sussex. Adrian Harms, Richard Ray. Nick Housen's going to join us from the cricketer in a couple of moments' time. As in comes Carson Bowles, forward comes. Uh, Travaskis plays onto the leg side. That's the end of the over. 2.57 for six. Jack Carson, 14 overs, four maidens, one for 36. I will abandon you, Richard, for half an hour, and I'll leave you with Nick and uh, with Richard. Thank you, Adrian. 2.57 for six of 76 is a balance for me, I don't know whether Nick will, will agree, that is probably just in favour of the visitors. Yes, they, they put Leicestershire in and probably hope for a little bit more from the pitch than, uh, and of course the ball than they've been, than they've, they've obtained. But at the same time, they've nagged away, Nick. They've, they've, they've picked up wickets and um, if they can get Leicestershire out for sort of 300-ish, I think they'd be pretty pleased with their efforts. Tom Clark is in to Ben Mike, who is defending and delivery on off stump, a little uncertainly, drops it out of the offside and there's no run. Good afternoon, thank you for having me along. Yeah, I think you look at the, the size of the, and the volume of the partnerships and the way the wickets have fallen, you would say that therefore, yes, Sussex have, have nagged away and they've never let Leicester really get away from them too much. Clark in, bowls, Mike covers up, straight delivery, lots of oohs and ahs as the volume is raised as it usually is when a new man comes to the crease, try and unsettle him to a certain extent. But I think Leicester will be disappointed with the manner in which they've lost their wickets since lunch. You wouldn't say mistakes, but you might say, I don't know, unforced errors, maybe? Clark bowls onto the legs of Mike. He's looking to turn it into the leg side. Manages to turn it just to Hudson Prentice at mid-wicket. Yes, Rishi Patel caught hooking a leg side bouncer. Just gloved it. I suppose he might say he was unlucky, but didn't need to play the shot. It was relatively early after lunch on 87. He was going so nicely. Peter Hanscom had to work so hard in going to his 50 as Clark goes in, bowls to Mike who drives pleasantly but a good diving stop one handed away to his right in the covers by extra cover means no run for Ben Mike lost his head a little bit of a slog sweep down on one knee, missed it and was bowled for 51 and just a few moments ago Ben Cox driving at a slightly wide delivery from Clark without getting to the pitch of the ball inside edge onto the stumps Partnerships of 76, I think it was. In goes Clark, bowls. Mike defends on the back foot, just turn of the wrists. Pushes a straight delivery out towards mid-wicket. 65 and then 49. So it's not an insubstantial score, but it's a good pitch. And Sussex would fancy their chances of going well over 300, I think, on this. So the red bales blow off. Now, can you tell me, Nick, why we might be using red bales this season? Do you know any reason why we are? Using so them so that... Uh, are they uh, headed just uh, easier to see? Or? So that lesser mortals like me and you can see them from uh, this vantage point. No, I, d no, I don't, actually. Um, I, I fear it's perhaps got more... Uh, Sponsorship. Yes, commercial obligations behind it, but I, I'm unaware of the, 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 the true reason. Clark is in and bowls. Mike is forward on off stump this time, correctly playing the ball out into the offside where Haynes is the fielder. The stumps, though, which were sponsored last year, or had a sponsor's name on, don't appear to 
this year. No, and if I remember the uh, the colour base of the new sponsor, I don't think that necessarily follows the colour of the bales either. So I guess the the mystery continues there. Although th that's a point because the vitality signs. I wasn't going to mention it, but go on. Oh, it's okay. I mean, they are the sponsors of the county championship. Don't worry about. I mean, I'm perfectly prepared to mention. <laughs> Uh, the sponsor of the county championship it, it is the same color isn't it as the as the bales so whether whether that's the maybe with the deal i'll find out one of these days just saying how nicely carson has bowled given there's so little there for him i think the, the biggest surprise was waiting until the 50th over to see him i think steps past umpire pollard round the wicket bowls a little bit flatter on that occasion the loop wasn't there so Travask is leaning forward, plays it comfortably enough out towards mid-wicket. But I think he's become a much more, I think, skilled bowler in the last, particularly in the last couple of years. Steps in, skips, bowls again, a little bit flat. It's an appeal for leg before no, straight away. Says umpire Pollard immediately, immediately put his head to one side, which is not what the bowler wants to see when he turns in mid-appeal. See the umpire immediately looking away with a sort of negative shake of the head. Carson is in, tosses it up, hit over mid on by Travaskis, bounces out too long gone for four. He did rather put that one in the slot. Let's have a look at that appeal oh, going down the leg side. I think That's we've just white. I think we've just seen there though. It's a sort of full array of his, uh, how his skills have developed. You know, we see one ball that's flighted to that one that's. that's that's, uh, that pins the batter back, and uh, that release shot there is nothing more than that. Travaskis on to 56, Carson goes in, bowls to him, he's leaning forward actually, making, putting in a stride there and uh, stroking the ball defensively. Back down the pitch on the offside, Carson picks it up, one for 40 now, which don't look remarkable figures, but he's bowled rather better than those figures suggest. And he goes, bowls, drops a fraction short arguably waiting for it is Travaskis just steering it into the offside he's got his four in the over but it was interesting that Sussex they they, they play six six bowlers in the first two hours and he was not what not mm. among them bowls now tosses that one right up almost over does it but just overreaches himself a little bit Travaskis trying to work that all in a way on the full hits it bottom of the bat and uh, Pajara can make a reasonably comfortable stop at mid-wicket end of the over 261 for six and and I don't know if you've had the kookaburra in your hand and felt it with the, with the seam it isn't doesn't feel as pronounced as, as with the duke they tell me it's to do with the machining uh, but you would think that yeah it would have been nicer for him to get a grip but some of the off spinners say they can grip them quite well the mm. kookaburra so the finger spinners that is yes I think it will naturally vary from bowler to bowler. I know someone like Sam Cook really likes the way it holds in his hand. Clark continues from the Bennett end, is in to Ben Mike, who's solidly forward, pushing the ball back up the pitch to, we call him the all-rounder, the Sussex all-rounder, Tom Clark. He would, I'm sure. But it will be interesting to see how teams go about trying to diversifying the threats they have using the kookaburra because they're going to have to look at different different ways to extract batters. Clark is in, bowls, back goes Mike, thinks there might be a single in it having pushed it slightly wide of Pajara realises there isn't. That said this is the last time we use him for a while until what, June time um, so five is it five rounds first up so was it six? I think it's much later I think it's in September. No the first round of Champos. <laughs> yes, so, oh, oh, sorry that, I beg yes. your pardon so okay so ha having learned new skills, they might not need to employ them. Clark is in and bowls. Mike is driving. Flashily, but he got plenty of it. Got it in front of point. Runs out to the point boundary. To the knot of uh, spectators out there. Who applaud mightily. A lot of uh, loyal Leicestershire supporters under the floodlight over there. Sadly, we don't hear them anymore. Not as much anymore because... Stephen stenches Vuvuzela as Clark bowls and Mike plays it firmly down into the ground looking to drive, bounces out to mid-off as uh, no longer extant. <laughs> I don't know whether it gave up the ghost or was removed or, or what, but anyway, we no longer hear the toot of the Vuvuzela. 
So no longer permitted, is that what we're... I, I'm not sure uh, whether it's no longer permitted or, or whether it's... I think it was a very old Vuvuzela that came from the South Africa Football World Cup yes. as Clark Bowles and Mike on the back foot just steers it out into the offside. Or maybe the uh, the supporters that frequent that area of the ground, perhaps That's maybe an they... That's he, he didn't blow it extensively, in fairness. It, there was just a little toot every now and then if there was a four or... Leicestershire took a wicket, something like that. Clark is in, bowls on off stump. Mike forward, playing it out into the offside, and there's no run. The 90 he made at uh, Headingley last week, I think one or two people will have noted the way he played there, and they picked up four for 44 as well. Yes, a real welcome return, really, in terms of the balance that he will obviously give this team. Uh, with uh, with both bat and ball, and he can clearly uh, biff it down the order, um, and he will really lengthen this this batting order, which looks, I would say, probably one of the more formidable ones in Division Two. Whether they've got the bowling attack to back that up, I guess remains to be seen, and there'll be other factors, of course. But I think on paper, at least, looks like a team that will be will be really formidable in that department. Should should make them hard to beat, shouldn't it? Mm. In goes Jack Carson. He's going over the wicket to the left-hander, interestingly, just searching for a bit of something. Another inquiry from the press box that Adrian might be able to answer about Tom Clark. Well, he didn't bowl at all last year, apparently. No, he, didn't. he hurt oh, his ankle. He hurt, he hurt his, his ankle. Ball. In goes Carson. Bowls runs across the uh, the pitch there as it's played firmly back past him, but Haynes runs across behind at mid-off. So the answer to that particular conundrum is that uh, he had a, an ankle injury that was sufficient to prevent him bowling, but not batting, it seems. 265 for six. Carson is in. Oh, drops that one a little bit short. It dragged down, but sort of skidded on a little bit. So Javaskis went back, but wasn't able to sort of pull it out to mid-wicket. Just played it firmly out into the offside. Coles, the fielder. To straightish extra cover. Carson is in, tosses that one up nicely. Forward goes Javaskis. Kills any nascent spin, not that there is any off the pitch. Drops it down at his feet. Remains on 56. <laughs> Carson is in, Travaskis forward again. Bat in front of Pad, defending out towards mid wicket. Pujara looking livelier in the evening session than he did in the morning. I think his back must have loosened a little bit. Gets to the ball quickly and Carson is going to go around the wicket for the last ball of his 16th over. Bowls. Travaskis goes back, plays it back down the pitch on the onside and uh, sails. Seals, I beg your pardon, moves around to his right to field at middle. End of the over. Now then, 80 overs. New ball. You'd have to think so, wouldn't you? I, I, although it didn't do really, it didn't do a lot off the pitch until maybe sort of 11, 12 overs when when Hudson Prentice got hold of it and it, it did a bit off a, a pitch which has got a bit more grass on um, than uh, perhaps might have been had we not been using uh, the cooker borough. Uh, to try and get a bit more out, having sort of spoken to ground stuff. And yes, that, that is the indication we are getting the new ball. Uh, Middlebrook holds up the ball. <laughs> That's Pajara throws it away as if as, oh, it's, it's not going to reach the rope, is it? Thing. But yes. sometimes they have a little competition. They try and hit the rope. They mm. try and land it, and it wasn't. That was a good effort, actually. It was only about a foot short of the rope when it pulled up, and one of the Sussex. Uh, but the disgust in which he that. threw it towards the, the, the rope was the most telling there element. There was something of that. of that, wasn't there, about it? I don't think. Um, I never want to see you again, sort of. Cheteshwar is over impressed by these kookaburras. Having said that, when he comes to bat, he might be delighted <coughs> with it because it is that much easier to bat against, or supposed to be in English conditions, because it gets softer more quickly. And that is ultimately one of the, the folly parts of this discussion is that it's going to suit you if it goes well for you and it's going to not it's going to be uh, it's going to frustrate you if it doesn't it's sort of an instantaneous thing 
Seals is back with the new ball. Bowls to Mike, who drives pleasantly, really pleasantly out to the extra cover boundary. I'm pretty sure that's got enough to make it, and it does. Just goes over the road there at uh, widish extra cover. And uh, perhaps in the, as in the, during the morning session when Marcus Harris and Rishi Patel scored at sort of five and a half, sometimes six runs and over against the new ball, it might uh, improve the scoring rate. Mm. And Mike looks right at it. I mean, that's a, that was a, a better drive than the other one that went for four, but it was the ball was too full and it was sort of easy pickings through the, through the gap at cover there. But yeah, too full there from Seals. It has been a little inconsistent in line and length, but it is difficult swapping ends at this ground. Seals is in and bowled a little bit short, punched away off the back foot by Ben Mike, and he's going to pick up a single because it uh, bounced off extra cover. Carson, who's in there, it sort of. There is a used practice sort of strip there, but it went across a fairly sort of well grassed part of it, but it bounced up a little bit. He wasn't able to gather it cleanly anyway. It bounced off him out towards mid off, and uh, consequently, Ben Mike picks up one, gets into, uh, moves on to 11. But yes, going back to Leicestershire's batting, it's not something that, particularly in the uh, Paul Nixon years, that they necessarily had a batting lineup that was going to get them in a game that they could even contend to even attempt to try and win. Seals into the left-handed Travaskis, who's sort of walking forward into defensive shot, push of turn of the wrist, sees the ball move out towards mid-on. So to have that foundation in place is going to be so important to them. Just, you know, how many wins do you need to, to get promoted? Not, not that many. And if you, if you can try and stay, if you can be difficult to beat, that's half the battle uh, in this form of cricket. Five wins, and then you, you won't mm. be far away if you've got a, yeah. a decent level of draws as well. Especially now, it's eight points for the draw again. Mm. Picked up 13 from a first innings draw at uh, Headingley last week. Seals is in bowls, quickish arm. But, uh, lively though it was, Travask is comfortable enough. And when you think there's brilliant, well, a couple of international players still to come into this this lineup as well who would almost probably well they would certainly walk back into it when available um, it feels yeah I mean there's, there's lots to there's lots to like about this this lineup certainly when Vian Mulder is back in the side as, mm. as a genuine international all-rounder uh, he's been in superb form with the bat as Seals goes in bowls goes past the outside edge of Travaskis's bat Travaskis acknowledges the quality of the delivery, a little bit too good for him on that occasion. Yes, it will be interesting to see how much we see of Ryan Mulder, because I know there is a, a lot of attention around his workload, um, his injury history um, over the last couple of years. So it will be interesting to see whether he comes back straight away as an all-rounder, whether he plays a, as, a, as an outright batter initially. He hasn't bowled whether we that don't see much him in at South all. Africa. No. Um, it, you know, he's, he's been batting so well for him, but he hasn't bowled that much. In goes Seals and bowls. Foolish almost gets through. Uh, Travask is dug out, though, and squeezed it through the vacant point area for some reason. He's got a sweeper out on the sort of backward point, or in front of the backward point boundary. He's there for a bad ball, isn't he, really? He's not going to be unlikely mm. to cut it in the air but you never know and Travaskis picks up one moves on to 57 I'm probably asking for it unless the supporters will be very cross with me for saying so but Travaskis doesn't have a first class century his highest score is 88 uh, long 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 way to go for that but if you're going to get one debut for a new county would not be a bad time and, and he's looked really tidy not had to, t not had to uh take any risks at all I don't think never looked really particularly troubled now we can talk about the ball and and the uh, potency of the attack if we want but he's he's looked very very good on debut 147 deliveries he's been solid hasn't taken too many risks been beaten once or twice as you'd expect looked arguably a, a fraction suspect against the short ball mm. but Danny Lamb over eight still level is back at the pavilion end. Three slips go down as he comes in and bowls to Travaskis who reaches for it a bit, pushes it out towards Pajara who is very slow in picking it up to be quite honest there and by the time he does and hurls the ball at the stumps at the non-striker's end, misses them. Travaskis 
was sort of standing as much as anything in his in the crease at the non-striker's end. It, he'd already made his ground and uh, recovered and turned, really. I wonder how much this crosswind is making a difference in in run-ups to, to the seamers. Lengths are, haven't been great with this new ball yet. The slope up from the pavilion mm. and down from the Bennett end also makes a difference if you're not used to it. Clint Mackay said it took him the best part of three months to get used to it. In goes Lamb and bowls. Foolish. Mike drives, but doesn't put his full weight into the shot. Sort of drives, steers it out to cover, and there's no run. And the wind at last week at Headingley was uh, was a gale compared to, to this. I asked Ben what it was like both to bat and bowl, and he said, actually, in, in many respects, it was more difficult to bat in because it was blowing you off your sort of trigger mm. movement and... This isn't too bad, I don't think. Lamb is in. Bowls. Mike goes for the drive. Thick inside edge. Could have gone anywhere, really. Trickles out towards short leg. Of course, there isn't one. Midwicket has to run into field, Haynes. And so Mike picks up one. I have to ask you, Richard. It's a particularly treacherous walk up to the commentary box. It must be... How does it compare to some of the other ones on the, on the, on the circuit? There's some uh, stairs that I wouldn't wish to do too many times. Up well, or down? Uh, well, I've been doing it. X times a day for mm. however many years now, 12 years. Um, when it's wet and you're carrying equipment <laughs> and you're going down, as Lamb goes in and bowls and Travaskis solid on off stumps, leaning forward, defending, one does one feel sometimes as though one is taking one's life into one's hands. Mm. Mm. <laughs> but uh, especially as holes are starting to appear in the in the rust and things like that at various <laughs> points, so one trusts that. It is occasionally tested for <laughs> we are aware stability. Of We're aware of the stretched finances in county cricket, but maybe some, some stairs <laughs> wouldn't go and miss. Lamb bustles in and bowls. Javask is driving. It's in the air for a while, but it's wide of Pajara, and it's going to run out towards the long golf boundary. Oh, it's going to be pulled up just six inches inside the ropes by Pajara, who uh, accelerated away, and Travaskis picks up three. Aerial. He certainly wasn't on top of the bounce. He was reaching for it a little bit, mm. but that new ball that came on quite nicely and got plenty of it. Yeah, that was one of the looser connections, I think, that we've seen from Trevascus. Yeah, he just a little bit squared up by it, and it, it maybe even a little leading edge there, potentially. Into the 60s, though, onto 61. Lamb into Ben Mike, who is driving pleasantly and got it past cover. It won't certainly go anywhere near the boundary. It's slowing up all the time across the lush square. But ben Mike should pick up a couple and does. There's been a few shots that have gone through that area and it, it must be a, perhaps a tad more moist or a tad lusher, as you say, over there. I think one or two may have on the old Grace Road uh, outfield that we normally see. Uh, they would have gone all the way, but yeah, that's uh, that they slowed up a few times in that area. Will Jennings on the stream. I think Leicestershire need 350. I think that's a sort of minimum, Will, I'd agree. To be sort of definitively in the game, so to speak. I think they'll, they'll be looking for, for more. They haven't got 300 yet. I think if I was Lewis Hill, I, I would be worried about what what Pajara might do when the ball stops doing anything off the pitch or if, or if the grass is no longer there um, and just how much he may want to wish to cash in. Jaden Seals is in to Liam Travaskis, just slightly short of a good length and beginning to rise on him. Travaskis plays it well actually, defence on the back foot. Now umpire Middlebrook isn't very happy with where mm. Jaden Seals is uh, following through wanders out and doesn't say anything but has a word with Ben Mike I think it was just to check whether he was in line or not so I think it was just doing his own pacing or just being a bit spiky I'm not quite sure <laughs> Seals down the slope bowl drives Travaskin drives very nicely indeed through extra cover that's got the legs to go all the way to the boundary. Arguably the most authoritative drive he's played in his innings so far, using the pace of Seals nicely. It was wide. He did give him width, though. 
And he got right on top of the bounce and cracked it away. Yeah, and through the only fielder in that area, and frankly, no one was going to cut it off, lush grass or not. On to 65. That was quite a long way from the body, but mm. um, it wasn't a classical sort of Adam Lythe kind of cover drive, but solid enough. Seals is in, and both slightly short, gets up on his toes and steers it away through backward point out on there uh, on the boundary. Is it cut play less down there? It is, or at least 10 yards inside the ropes. So comfortable single for Travaskis has moved on to 66 now. I think it's okay to feel a bit sorry for, or a bit perhaps uh, uh, have a bit of sympathy for Leicestershire and that they've run into one international test player in Harry Brook and another one in Cheshire Bajar in the first two rounds. Long have this debate about, you know, whether everyone plays each other twice in the county championship, but international availability is as significant as that. Seals in bouncer to Ben Mike, gets in position to sort of have a hook at it, realises it's too high, doesn't bother so doing, I suppose Sean Massoud as well mm. and although he's f now f for the season at Yorkshire, more available, he, yeah. I think it's yeah, some good players around Brook played uh, beautifully but he's not a, as I say, a classically correct batsman but what an eye and what timing and power and uh, just punished anything really it was vaguely offline and sometimes online. Hmm. But that game gets arranged in, you know, late August or yeah. June, and you don't have to, s you don't see in him. Indeed, Seals is in two. Mike is clipping off his toes, and uh, I think it was a bit of bat and a bit of pad. Runs out to Carvelas, who's a wideish long leg, takes one. Moves on to 15, 284 for six. We talk forever about schedules and what have you, but in the sports current structure that's something that can just never be never be foreseen, never really be covered for. Um, you never know what a cricket board may or may not wish to do in terms of covering their prized assets and managing them and it's very, very tricky and so uh, in Leicester's case and uh, also Yorkshire today have got Joe, well, had Joe Root playing as well so Round the wicket comes Seals to Travaskis coming in from outside off and he's careful he's checks the shot rather he got in position to drive but a little bit too straight pushed it firmly out towards aforementioned international Pajara end of Seals is over he's a handful of dust today for Jaden Seals none for 58 from 13 overs he's running with a will it's his fourth spell but uh, as yet no joy John Simpson runs over to have a word with the Trinidadian I think he's really looking forward to nurturing some of the younger players. John Simpson, in an interview he did with us uh, pre-season, uh, I think he's really. I think that was one of the elements that I think really enticed him to come into Sussex. The opportunity to kind of nurture uh, in his sort of the autumn of his career. I think would. I think he wouldn't mind me saying, um, and uh, try and develop a few few players in front of him. And uh, obviously, there's a few of them on offer today. Danny Lamb. Probably isn't as young as he used to be, <laughs> none of us are, but uh, he's not one of those young players. He overpitches slightly to Ben Mike there, who didn't sound as though he timed it, but it fairly whistled away into the uh, square leg fence for four. Yes, an interesting time to kick someone while they're down. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. As he, as he gets flicked, uh, flicked to the boundary there. Uh, there's a, there's a nice, nice, nicely timed shot, but I think... Danny would be the first one to admit that it wasn't the best ball uh, missing missing, missing fourth stump there 1 for 51 for Danny Lamb now, he's brought up his half century to 88 <coughs> for 6 runs in and bowls a bouncer out so really slightly wild delivery outside off stump it was banged in really short and then Mike lent away but it looped through to Simpson, who has uh, got his arms folded contemplatively now, <laughs> wondering, are we wasting this new ball? But once again, we've had a Leicestershire wicket fall, and they've sort of they've held off Sussex. 
Lamb is in off the back foot, carved away by Ben Mike. Slightly short again, though, from Lamb out to the sweeper on the offside, who is Finn Hudson Prentice, who's probably been the pick of the seamers today. He continues walking down towards long leg for the left hander. I think purely on the basis of, of that, of his first over. I mean, it's difficult really to conclude otherwise because the rest of the seamers have have sort of they've been something and nothing in in, in many ways. Lamb is in to Javaskis forward, thick inside edge, going to pick up a single as it wasn't quite sure where it had gone. It's running towards leg gully. Simpson has to run out to field, does so, but single comfortably completed. Javaskis on to 67 to 90 for six. Partnership 35 now. I mentioned the the treacherousness of your of your journey towards the commentary box, not just to uh, dial up the sympathy among your listeners, but also just sort of emphasise the fact that it feels a lot windier up here than I think it is down in the middle. Short from Lamb, pulled by Ben Mike out to the mid wicket boundary, doesn't get it quite as well as he would have liked. So the sweeper can run around from that sort of just in front of square to cut it off. Ben Mike has to settle for one it being one of the shorter boundaries over there because it is quite pleasant down there I think it's one of the nicer days to watch a day of championship cricket I think there will be this summer it's not too warm I think you can be reasonably uh, ambitious with uh, your intake of various fluids Lamb is in bowls held back slightly was in position for a long time there Travaskis <laughs> getting forward dropping it down at his feet and uh, it is the end of Danny Lamb's over, his 18th, one for 54, his figures, 291 for six, how many overs to go, 12 today, so run rate has dropped back from the sort of five and a half, one of the umpires are one thinking about, well the sun's semi out, so I don't think light's an issue, yet, whether right. they want the floodlights on. I, I can't know. imagine Sussex will want the floodlights on either. Sometimes the ball does a bit more under the lights. I was, uh, was making a perhaps prickly joke there at the expense of uh, oh, no, no, other visitors. No, 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 120 pounds a day or whatever it is that, <laughs> that has put Sussex off from using them this season. It is a debate, isn't it? I mean, sh shouldn't conditions match conditions, as in what happens under certain match conditions, be the same? Mm. Always, a, but not every ground has floodlights, of course. So. Well, we, we can't have a two. We have, really have a two-tiered system in so many ways. Do we need more space between the haves and the have-nots and yeah. the, the do's and the don'ts? Uh, I'm all for debate, but Harry Carvelas back into the attack already. Drops short at Ben Mike. Gets up on his toes as it comes up towards his chest, but drops it down very nicely down into the onside and a lot of ground for Pajara to make up to get to the ball. Mike takes one quick change so how do you just two overs for seals with mm. the new ball so he's being used in very short spells and he didn't offer a massive amount in those uh, in those two you know let's just look comfortable and to be honest they looked like uh, you know, sealing their way towards that 300 that ex another batting point really while he was on so I can understand they, they want to make full use of this new ball um, but as we said, it was sort of 12, 13 overs old before it really did anything the first time. Carvelas is in mm. short and wide-ish, but it moves away a touch. Well, that's my only explanation for Travaskis, just sort of fencing at that one a little bit off the back foot and not getting anything on it. It goes through to Simpson. I'm going to leave you at the end of this over, Nick, if that's all right. And you can Absolutely. have a few minutes with, um, with Adrian. And I'll come back at six to do a, a, a live update. How many overs, uh, how many balls to go? Still four, four balls to go of this over. Carvelas in bowls straight and leaning forward is Travaskis, dropping the ball down and out into the offside. It's not the most fluent of actions, Ari Carvelas. can be very, very effective though. And he was for much of last season. But at least some, early, some encouragement with the ball, I think that ball that just left him will will, uh, will encourage uh, John Simpson to uh, in this in the, in, the, in the dying embers of this session that there might be uh, one or two sculpts still to be had. 
Velas in. Bowles Fuller this time driven. Didn't really follow through. Pushed firmly, shall we say, by Travaskis. Runs out to mid off, and there's no run. Carvalis is going to go around the wicket. He's decided instead. Everything is everywhere when he runs into bowl, isn't it? His arms are going. There's mm. no, there's no coach's nightmare, I would imagine. But we'll be looking too late to change. He'll be it? looking for that same lift that, that that got Marcus Harris earlier in the day. That that ball. In he comes. Bowls on off stump. Travaskis guides it nicely down towards third man. Now there isn't a third man. Backward point has to run down towards third man. Danny Lamb, that is, chases it down. Travaskis picks up a couple. Moves on to 69. Well, I wonder if that three figures is beginning to creep into his mind. Ben Mike, believe it or not, hasn't got a first class century yet either. Um, I'm not talking about that in the context of this innings, but it was last week when it, you know, when we got to 90, you thought, mm. well, maybe this is it. Cavalas in. Bowls looking to drive, and again it's squirted off a thick outside edge down towards wide third man. This time Lamb can get there much more quickly, but Trevaskis still picks up one, moves on to 70, 295 for six, the partnership 40, Mike has 22, and if Leicestershire can get through these remaining 11 overs without losing another wicket that's a big ask they'll probably feel pretty happy at the end of the day and they will have laid the platform for a well probably at least one more batting point they will go another but towards getting towards 350 so i think they'll feel reasonably satisfied and i think the goal between now and the close will be to try and nullify uh, the zip that might be off this new ball um, and and reapply themselves tomorrow. Hello Adrian, thank you for joining me. Hello Nick, good to see you. Uh, you all hasn't really worked out for uh, for Sussex at the moment. Um, these two have looked pretty comfortable. And it, well, often we see it, don't we, with a new ball that it, you know you, you think it's going to favour the bowling side and suddenly it starts disappearing around the park. I'm not saying it's disappeared around the park, but Sussex would have hoped to have picked up a couple of wickets. Uh, Danny Lamb is running away from us from the pavilion in, comes into bowl to Liam Travaskas and Travaskas is forward. Players enter the offside. Uh, and there is no run. But good to get your views on Division 2 of the County Championship because I, I think our view is that, it, that pretty much every side you can make a case for, for, for challenging for promotion. I, I think it's a very, very open division and a tough division. I think you can make a case definitely for, for the remaining teams joining Yorkshire in, in Division 1, certainly. I think that's absolutely fair. I think you are kind of looking at, uh, at one place between, to, between the remainder of the sides comes Lamb Bowles clipped away by Trafascus that's a lovely shot I'm not sure it's going to go all the way to the boundary for four but it's only be a couple of runs to Liam Trafascus who's batted really well here they're coming back to the third he's got a bit of a move on as the throw comes in and he just had to get a move on running to the non-strikers end but he picks up three good running he goes to 73 the total 298 for six but it's going to be a really interesting one and I would expect maybe a little like last season that we'll see teams beating each other a lot of uh, so you don't get necessarily Yorkshire's lead actually might end up being quite larger than um, than perhaps uh, otherwise it might have been. Do you see Yorkshire being nailed on for? They, ha we, I think we have to build them as as the favourites. Sure, I think they're uh, favourites. Um, Lamb, three slips go down in and bowls, and Mike just stands tall and punches that into the covers. There that, is no run. That said. I don't think they will run away with this in quite the same way that Durham did. Mm. I think there are some uh, external reasons for that. Um, so, and I think, you know, we saw, we've seen a fair few departures in the off season that would reflect that perhaps on the playing side, things aren't um, absolute tranquility. Interesting. Um, Lamb again away from us in and bowls and Mike chips it back and Danny Lamb picks up a wicket and that's a very welcome wicket as far as Sussex is concerned. I don't know if he was deceived there by the pace or whether Danny Lamb held that back a little bit but Ben Mike looking to clip that away through the leg side and he's played it straight back to Danny Lamb who hangs on to the catch and Mike is on his way for 22 and a seventh wicket and a very welcome wicket for Sussex 298 for seven. And once, we've, and once again we've seen Leicestershire in a control pattern, lose a wicket through what looked like again a slightly unforced, unforced error. Ben Mike playing 
He's played a lot of loose shots. Some of them have paid off. Um, and that one certainly didn't. And, it, and it's it's gone straight back to the bowler. And, and it's a really smart catch. Um, but yeah, another moment where Leicestershire looked in control. And they've just let Sussex back into it at a really key juncture in this evening session. Well, they have a partnership there of 43 between Ben Mike and Liam Travaskis. There's been, there's been some good partnerships in this innings, mm. but nothing that's, what are we, 78, 65, 49, 43, 59 for the first wicket. Um, and that's why I think it's been a really good day of Championship cricket. There's mm. been something in it for everyone. If you really knuckle down and, and play, some, play some solid shots, and frankly your technique is sound, there's runs here. And there's just a little bit in it for the bowlers as well. We saw a little bit for Flynn Hudson-Prentice. And we've seen, frankly, perseverance yield mistakes. And that has ensured that Sussex will, will finish his day regardless of what happens in the next uh, what 10.2 overs. Um, they, will, they will feel good about seven Leicestershire wickets uh, at the end of it if that's... Uh, the most I just see the floodlights are coming on. Yes, they are. Even I know it does that. look rather bright. Well, it looks as bright as it has all day. Um, but I'm not sure where that, that's where the cloud is coming from. Not knowing this ground. Uh, the new man coming in is Tom Scriven, who I think is a very fine player. I saw him play last year at Hove, and I was really impressed. Formerly yeah. at Hampshire, I think he's an excellent signing. Another really good all rounder that they have got in this in this lower, what well, I say, middle order, really. No, I agree. I I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, three slips go down. Lamb is in to bowl to Tom Scriven. As Scriven is forward and plays defensively into the offside. And yes, there is no run. I don't know if the lights are on in anticipation of it getting dark <laughs> rapidly or if the uh, the umpires are aware of a, um, a bout of something that, that that looks unlikely at this, at this stage. Uh, it's not the first time this season that I've seen the lights on while the sun is uh, mm. penetrating the clouds. Uh, unfortunately, 298 for seven. Perhaps we can talk about floodlights in a moment, <laughs> uh, Nick, because we were having a brief discussion over, over lunch as in comes Lamb over the wicket bowls and Scriven plays a nice looking shot to bid on. Well, uh, stopped by Pajara diving away to his right hand. So that's a good over from Danny Lamb, who's done a good holding job here for Sussex today. 19 overs, uh, three maidens, two for 57. 298 for seven. Travaska 73, Scriven. Uh, yet to score. Sussex have decided this year that they won't use floodlights and because they've made that decision that's a decision that will stand all season. Uh, what, what, what's your what's your take on that? I don't know if you saw the interview I did with John Philby last week where John was talking about cost but other factors as well. Maybe it's the other factors that are more interesting. I, I, I did I did listen to that interview um, and I thought it was really or I thought it was really interesting. I think we were talking earlier about whether it's a good debate or whether you just disagree with the views or agree with the views. Ultimately I I don't like the fact that we it will appear to have we already have a two tier system. We already have teams that don't have floodlights. We have teams that do. Now we have teams that hold on in comes Carvalho, spells to Vasquez, defends into the offside, no run. Now we have teams that want to use them and don't want to use them. I look forward to a point in the season where Sussex are chasing a victory to get promoted to Division 1 and they don't turn their own <laughs> lights on at home to try and go after a victory. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, and I also would like to know really from John Philby, which one is it? Is it the financial one or is it the cricket arguments? He, he made he made both in the, in the conversation he had with you. Here comes Carvelos around the wicket bowls to Travascus, who defends and very nearly plays the ball onto his own stumps. And he has to sort of jump across the stumps and, and keep the ball out. I mean, I think um, John said that it, that it was that it, that it was a, com a combination of both. Um, he was saying the lights cost one hundred and fifty pounds an hour to keep on. That almost seemed to be a secondary consideration. Um, I presume well, it was a conversation that had come from Paul Farbrace and the, the, the Sussex coaching staff as much as as much as anything else. But, but I think, okay, if I, I, I've got more of a, I would more understand it. Carvelis in bowls, Tabaskis hits it on the thigh, pad the ball bounces down. There is no. I'd run. understand it more if he was trying to make the financial and even perhaps even sort of uh, climate argument. Frankly, to be honest, um, in terms of you know let's 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 save. We're all trying to save and we're all trying to save the planet. Let's save energy. I've got no problem with. I've almost got no problem with that. And frankly, I think that sells much better to the hierarchy, if we're if we're looking at it like that. 
in terms of the cost, in terms of the energy. In comes uh, Carvelos Bowles to Trafaskis, who drives down the ground. Good-looking shot by Liam Trafaskis over, pitched by um, Ari Carvelos. It's going to race away down towards the boundary at the Bennett end of the ground. And Trafaskis will come back for a third run. Good running again between the wickets between Liam Trafaskis, who goes to 76, and that's a 300 up for Leicestershire. It's a second batting bonus point. 301 for seven. I think I'll be very pleased with the way, we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment, with the way this has gone today, having been asked to bat this morning. But, uh, we're talking about floodlights. Mm. But the, state, the statement from Sussex when this, this story initially came up is that we believe red ball cricket should absolutely be played under normal daylight conditions and the use of floodlights in this format is not the way the game should be played. When was it ever up to Sussex to decide how the game should be played? Well, interesting views. <laughs> in comes uh, Carvelos in a bowl. Was shot the ball balloons over the head of um, Tom Scriven. It's signalled a no ball uh, by umpire. Um, who's that at the far end, Nick? It's not Paul Pollard, I don't think, is it? I think Paul Pollard's standing here at square leg. Uh, I no, think I that think is umpire uh, James, James Middlebrook. Middlebrook at the far end. Yeah, Carvelos back to his mark. Well, it's an interesting, you know, they're interesting views. And in comes Carvelos Bowles. And uh, he's got away with one there as uh, Tom Scriven. The ball races down towards third man. It was in the air. And had there been a four slip or a gully in place, he might well have been caught. But Absolutely, there wasn't. Yeah. And Scriven goes through for uh, a couple of runs. So it's an interesting debate that I'm sure will run throughout the season, um, really. Well, it, it definitely will at the start. And I guess it definitely will at the end when the light becomes more of a factor particularly yeah. at the end of days and, and you're looking for results and you're looking for um, for, for wins and draws etc um, I think yeah I think it's an interesting debate to be had yeah. I hope in some ways that it in short it delivers a bit more clarity uh, going forward now but either way in comes uh, Covelos over the wicket bowls and forward comes Scriven plays into the offside fielded at mid-off by Jaden Sills. There is no run. End of the over, 305 for seven. We've got another nine overs to be bowled tonight. That's just here, 305 for seven. Something else we were discussing over lunch was the early start. Paul Farbrace um, saying last week that um, every day, apart from the first day when it was too wet at home to play, that really play should have started at half past ten. And there seems to be a sort of a growing... Um, uh, argument around the counties and a growing discussion that the coaches are saying well why can't we start at half past ten and I have to say I completely agree with that yeah absolutely and I think it's the same really for any for all long form cricket in this country really we should be starting at, at that time we do in certain other competitions um, in the in, in the regional uh, formats we do so I, I don't see any reason um, for that really um, one thing I would be worried about that of course is is where we are with over rates are we going to be just extending days inadvertently Jaden Seals in bowls to Travaskis who plays into the offside there is no run you've got a supporter in your argument on floodlights <laughs> <laughs> Sam Keir has been in touch he said I agree uh, I'm with this guy on floodlights what, one, one, this guy one, one down eight billion to go <laughs> well the guy you're looking, listening to is Nick Halson from The Cricketer. Great to have Nick on commentary. We have another few minutes or so, then Richard will be back to do his six o'clock update to the listeners on BBC Radio Leicester. Are you here for the rest of the game, Nick? Or? I'm unfortunately darting to South Wales um, later on in the round. Comes Seals, bowls, forward comes Dravaskis, plays to mid-off. For, no for the Pakistan derby between uh, Glamorgan and, and Derbyshire. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm taking my leave, um, but hopefully the entertainment only dials up from from there. No, I'll quite happily take this guy uh, going forward uh, for all future uh, appearances. <laughs> Jaden Seals wanders back to his mark. So your four, your your four floodlights and your four sorry your four floodlights and your four the 10:30 starts. <laughs> Yes, you've pinned you've pin, you've pin me down to the key issues uh, <laughs> in, in, in 15 or so minutes, absolutely, yeah. yeah well, it's, well it's, you know, it's good to get views. In comes Seals around the wicket bowls and Travaskis' is forward plays into the covers. I, I, for, sorry, go I think on the floodlight issue, it's more about clarity and counties not making it, these things up on the hoof. I think everyone needs to be in the same... Um, everyone needs to be working off the same hymn sheet here. Obviously, we have some counties without floodlights at all who can't use them. We've got issues around 
uh, council and local issues as yes, well. So, in Cardiff, yeah. Absolutely. So, so yeah. they need to be taken into account. It's, it's more about Sussex deciding this is the way we're going to play Red Bull cricket uh, for seven matches of the season and you can't do anything to stop us. In comes uh, Seals around the wicket bowl. Short, Trevaskid pulls onto the leg side and gets a single to deep backward square footed way out in the distance there by I think that's Finn Hudson Prentice who gets in the throw. One more to the total, 300 and six for seven. Travaskis goes to 77. Just just while I've got you here, Nick, mm. the other thing we, we we very quickly discussed over lunch was also, uh, we didn't have long for our lunch today, did we, was the decision that's coming out, we think, next week about who the eight women's teams are going to yes. be. You know, Sussex are put in. We understand a very strong bid, a 27-page document. Paul Farbrace, we understand, was at the presentation. Sussex have put a, you know, a, a, a major... Um, bid forward what are your thoughts on the way that's likely to go i mean i in comes uh, seals and bowls and clipped away that's a lovely looking shot by tom scriven he's going to get runs here through widish mid wicket he's going to get a couple of runs probably three because bujara has to chase back towards the meat the building on the right hand side and picks up three good running by scriven he goes to five the total 309 for seven. And perhaps I should rephrase that slightly differently. What, what would it mean if a county like Sussex don't get one of these teams and, and, you know, the bigger counties, I hate that expression, do? I think what I'm really worried about, and we've written an awful lot about this, uh, both in the Cricketer magazine and online, is that I'm worried that the same, the same old counties, the ones that have 100 teams, the ones that host men's international cricket every summer, are going to be the ones that will also, from next year, host a tier one team now that might not be a bad thing as far as the development of that ge of the game is concerned I, I think it almost certainly won't be however Seals is in bowls and forward comes to Vasquez plays into the offside there is no run end of the over 309 for 7 5 to Scriven 77 to Travaskis listening to live cricket on BBC Radio Sussex uh, BBC Radio Leicester, myself, Adrian Harms, in conversation with Nick Halsman from the Cricketer magazine. But I'm concerned that it just stretches the gap between the haves and the have-nots. Mm. And that's that's a real that's a real concern. The tier one, the eight tier one teams will happen regardless of where they happen, right? So the development of the game is kind of secure in that way and there'll be the same amount of investment that will go to Sussex as would go to Kent or would go to Somerset or would go to Surrey or would go to Lancashire. But I'm worried that we're focusing all of our, almost all of our efforts into certain hubs of the country that, that perhaps might not be particularly healthy, but we'll see how that goes. There'll be some, there'll go be some really disappointed teams. And I do wonder what happens after the decision as well. Mm. In comes Ari Carvelas, comes in on bowl, short, pulled away by Scriven. More runs here, at least a couple of runs. Um, Richard is coming back in a minute, 311 for seven. Scriven goes to seven. And just a final question on that. Yes. Have the ECB boxed themselves into a corner by only having eight teams? Couldn't they have had 10? Or Ooh, 12? A, or? That's a, it, it's a really interesting question. I don't think it's a bad thing to start with eight because firstly, they want a, a tier two element. Um, yeah. And there will be a, will eventually be a promotion system whereby those teams can 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 be upgraded or can can go up into tier one. So I think that's really helpful. They, they, they've almost, they forward planned a little bit, but I'm not quite sure. I don't think there is a financial uh, framework in place beyond that. So that's a, that, I guess that is a concern. Could they have gone to more than eight? Well, I think they also want to make sure that it's sustainable and that it works before they go completely. Uh, they, they, it's only everyone's a tier one. Vegas comes running in, bowls to uh, Scriven, who works this one away through back. Well, it's a lovely shot by Tom Scriven. He's a fine player to be coming in at number nine. He goes to 11, 315 for seven. I know Rich has got an update to do, so Nick, I'm going to let you go. Um, great to have you on commentary, though. Thanks very much for taking the time to come and speak to us. Thanks so much for having me. Nick Halson from the Cricketer Magazine. We're going to do some technical jiggery-pokery here and bring Richard back in. In comes Carvelos, bowls to Scriven, whose forward plays onto the onside, and there is no run. Really good to have uh, Nick up on commentary for now, some really interesting views, um, not least Absolutely. on floodlights. Absolutely. Um, Sometimes we, we can become slightly subjective with spending yeah, so yeah. much time with our own counties, and it is always good to hear from, sure. from, totally. from the, somebody who's uh, arguably a little bit more objective than, uh, no. than, than ourselves. Totally. Less should have applied for a women's tier one team but without any real hope I think 
Cavalos in bowls to Scribble, who defends on the onside, no run. I think at this stage, I would say this is Leicestershire's day. You know, you're asked to bat in April, overcast conditions. I think when you're 63 for three, to finish the day, if they do finish the day, you know, seven down um, and over 300 on the board, I, I think it's been a very good day for Leicestershire. <laughs> yeah. The sun is now the brightest it's been all day. And the lights the are floodlights. on. <laughs> Don't. Carvelos in bowls, pulled away by Scriven. More runs here. Got at least a couple of runs. Well, I have to say, Sussex attack is looking a bit weary here. That was short from Ari Carvelos, and Scriven pulled it away onto the leg side. And we did rather wonder with the new ball. He goes to 13, 317 for seven. Sometimes it does favour the, the batting side, and, you know, it did this morning when Rishi Patel and Marcus Harris really set about the Sussex uh, bowling. And in this, um, the last few hours of the day, um, is Leicestershire who are getting the momentum. Sussex need a wicket. Carvelas running in. Bowls to Scriven. He's up on his toes and punches this one away through the offside. Picks up a single. He goes to 14. And Leicestershire at the end of the over. 318 for seven. And we've still got another seven overs to be bowled tonight. So it's going to be about, unless Carson bowls an over or two, 20 past, maybe 25 past seven before seven six even and actually before we're done yeah actually i'm just looking here since the new ball was taken it was taken on 265 for six so let's share have actually added 43 runs in eight overs 88.6 so, so in nine 89 overs. Nine, nine, overs. nine overs sorry yeah but so you know that, that, that yeah as you say it happened um with with the first new the original new ball didn't it mm. so that wasn't a great over from Carvel, that's, it's got to be said. It, it, just too short. Mm. Seals still looking for his first wicket of the day. 14 overs, none for 62. As he runs in and bowls over the wicket. Outside off stump well, to Tom Scriven. It's quick, but it's wide. Mm. Scriven goes for the drive, but it's a bit too quick for him and he misses it. <laughs> Was there to beat. Throw the bat out, really. Um, for a number nine, but as you've been saying, Scriven is rather better than a number nine rather might imply. He's, he's a genuine all-rounder, Tom Scriven. Yeah, very he good. He showed last week at Headingley with a very good half century, and as you say, he showed at Hove last, uh, last year. Seals is in and bowls. Scriven is working it away down towards wide third man he sort of every time he plays a shot almost Tom Scriven a, a certainly an attacking shot through the offside there's a sort of sort of flea, it's a it's a last second thing with him and it, he sort of um, almost flinches as he plays the shot yeah. sort of little spasm and it's <laughs> it's just a characteristic is you know it's just that just the way he plays but it's um, starting to get used to it now some players I've watched, obviously for years, like Lewis Hill, know exactly how he's feeling, how what form he's in, where he's going yeah, to yeah. play. Inevitably, round the wicket goes Seals and Bowles. Travaskis leaves outside off stump. Here comes the off, the uh, update for BBC Radio Leicester for the last time today. Six and a half overs remaining, and Leicester will be pretty pleased with their efforts. They were put into bat by Sussex half centuries from Rishi Patel, who made a very fluent 87. Peter Hanscom, who made a hard working 54. And now Liam Travaskis making his debut for the Foxes after joining from Durham. He's 77, not out. Have seen them through to 319 for seven. Now, if they don't lose any more wickets before the close and they can bat on tomorrow morning, they can really put Sussex under pressure. So a good first day for the Foxes in their second county championship match of the season. On stream and online and on commentary. Travask is 77 not out. His highest first class score, remember, is 88. Uh, Seals is in. Bowls to him and again. 
He takes his bottom hand off the bat, plays it down into the ground, and for half a second, as a couple of overs go, he thinks it's going to go into his stumps, and he, he jumps backwards and shepherds the ball away from his off stump. He's raised his average into the 30s now. Well, he's batted really well, hasn't he, Liam Trafaskis? I think, I think he's been excellent. You know, he's, he, 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 he's barely put a foot wrong. The point is coming in now to mm. conventional from the boundary, from the sweeping position, two point. As Seals is in to finish his over, short, pulled by Trafaskis. It's, it's a little bit of a swat that he almost plays off the front foot down into the ground. It rolls fairly slowly out to mid-wicket. Hudson Prentice was 10 yards inside the rope, so had a lot of ground to run in to get to the ball. He's going to keep running because he's going to take over the bowling from Carvelis and I'm not too surprised, Adrian, after a couple of overs from Harry Carvelis. They weren't great. 320 for seven, six overs to go. Yeah, it hasn't, hasn't quite been Harry's day, is it? 14 overs, two maiden, one four. Uh, 71, Finn Hudson Prentice, who I think has bowled really well. 18 overs, 5 maidens, 2 for 47. Um, we know that the, the ball is still a new ball. I mean, it's it, it's only 10 overs old. But these two have, and together with Ben Mike, have really put Leicestershire in a strong position here. With these 10, with these, what, seven, with 6 overs to go? I mean, if Leicestershire, as I said, Leicestershire go in just 7 down. I think if you've been put into bat, I, I think you've had a good day. And you've agree. Got, you know, they're going to be fairly close to 340, 350. Yeah. If that is the case, yes, it could could easily be 340 all out. So let us see. Lights are on. Travascus waits. In comes uh, Hudson Prentice bowls to Travascus, who defends down the offside of the track, and there is no run. I'm just looking at this Leicestershire attack. Um, you know, Mike Scriven, Curry, Salisbury is a decent seam attack. Presumably, Travascus will provide the spin. Um, yeah, it's it's a little bit inexperienced. Obviously, missing Chris Wright, who for a while was expected to be starting at Sussex this season. Yes, he was. Hudson Prentice in bowls. Travaskis defends down the offside of the track again. There is no run, but there's there doesn't seem to be an awful lot in the pitch. It's been a very good first day pitch. Nope. Sussex would have been thinking maybe it would do a little bit, um, but I. Uh, Sussex have bowled well in phases. I, I didn't think they bowled very well this morning. I thought after lunch they bowled much tighter lines. Yeah, they were, they were a bit, bit tighter this afternoon, weren't they? But Leicestershire have batted really well. In comes Hudson Prentice again bowls. Travaskis defends to mid on, fielded by Jaden Seals, and there is no run. But it is so often the way here, the pitch that can look as though oh, that might be something in it for us. Usually plays pretty well odd little bit of uneven bounce from the Bennett end, bowling down the slope so to speak. One or two kept low, Lewis Hill will say he's kept a little bit low perhaps but other than that it's been very good to pitch. Two slips and a gully go down, in on bowls, Travaskis is forward, plays to mid on and there is no run, well He's, uh, I'm loath to say that Liam Travaskis is, is batting for the close because often that can mean you get yourself out but he's he's batted like this pretty much all he day has, hasn't he? He, he absolutely has 180 balls his face for his 78 so yeah. he's, ne he's never hurried has no, he? he's he waited for the bad ball and why would you on the first day of a four day four day game and when the bad ball has come he's hit it Hudson Pratt is in again bowls and he lets that one go by outside the off stump taken by Simpson and there is no run He's got a real chance here. What a way that would be to mark your debut for a new county with a maiden first class century. Don't think it's going to come tonight if it comes. No. That's Prentice on his way again. Bowls and clipped away by Trassi. That's a nice looking shot. He's going to get one and possibly two, but no, just has to settle for. A single field it way out in the deep by Tom Haynes. And there is a single to Liam Travaskis who's pinched the strike. 321 for 7. Travaskis on to 79. Scriven on 15. And there are five overs remaining in the day. Hard overs these for the Seamers, aren't they? Coming back for a third or fourth spell at the end, yep. of, a, end of a day when you've bowled yep. 18 overs or 19 overs. That um, This is where all that fitness work, hopefully, oh. 
haze off, all that winter work. Jaden Seals takes off his sweat. He's young and strong and fit. And it won't be an issue for him, hopefully. 15 overs, three maidens, none for 64. Travaskis has kept a strike with that single. Two slips and a gully. And a deep square leg. About 80 yards from the back. Long leg. Extra cover. Mid off, mid on. Point boundary. In go Seals. Bowls forward. Goes Travaskis. Solid as ever. Defending out. Two extra cover. Haynes who throws it on to Pajara to do a spot of polishing. It being only still 11 overs old. The second new ball. Pajara tosses it to Seals. Footmarks from mm. the bowlers. The bruised grass as in goes Seals and bowls straight. Back foot defensive shot from Travaskis. Who's enjoying himself out there. There's just that little flourish after he'd played that. Yes. It's, uh, well, if you're not seeing it after 184 balls, you possibly never will. He is seeing it nicely now. Lime trees down Milligan Road coming nicely into leaf now. And the new ones are beginning to make their make themselves apparent now. They're new, they were planted about four or five years ago now. Seals is in. Bold Travaskis. Solidly forward and off stump again. Just um It'd be interesting to know what uh, I'll probably talk to Finn Hudson Prentice tonight, I think, because I think he's bowled very well. I, I, I just wonder whether this is a combination of is a combination of the Kookaburra ball, a good batting deck, or Sussex Paps. I mean I think I don't think Sussex have bowled badly, or just a very good batting display by Leicestershire. Um It's it's as you say, I think it's a combination. It's a, a good deck, it's the Kookaburra ball, it's a, a, a deep batting line up with a couple of, you know, really you good player international players up there. I think Rishi Patel will be an international before yeah. too long as well. In goes Seals. Bowls! Fending at that one. It just got a bit of lift and the West Indian turns. Oh, shoulders slump because that was a real good one. An effort ball that rose at Travaskis. Outside his off stump. He fended at it instinctively. Couldn't help himself. Went past the outside edge into the gloves of Simpson. Good delivery. At this late stage of the day. I say the ball is or should be still nice and hard. Seems still apparent. It's about now, as, as you said, Adrian, that began to do a little bit in the first inning. Seals is in. He almost rolled his fingers across that one, trying to hit the seam and get it to seam away. And it was a bit too full, though, and Travaskis went forward and defended it out into the offside. We were sort of, you know, it's, it's a long way off, isn't it? It's an awful lot of cricket to be played between now and Monday, but, you know, we are looking slightly anxious here at the Monday forecast. I remember that. Neil Hartley on the stream. Oh. He's talking about the floodlights at Hove, and he was saying when they first went up... Probably know what I'm going to say now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seals goes in and bowls, foolish, and rather strange little defensive jab from Travaskis. Almost seemed to lose sight of that. Actually... Although the sun is still apparent through the haze of cloud, it has got a little bit darker, and we can now see the shadows from the floodlights being cast by the players. Yeah, Neil remembers those floodlights going up at Hove, and they had eggs on top yeah, they because did. they were sponsored by an egg producer. They were a local egg company. And if a batter hit the egg or hit one of the eggs, there was a prize. There was. <laughs> You're quite right. That's, was a prize. that's some here. I mean, imagine you putting something on top of these floodlights. These are huge things, aren't they? It <laughs> would be a heck of a hit to hit. I've never seen them being close to being hit into the floodlights no. here. No, that's sort of Luke Wright territory in his prime. <laughs> what, was that prize Neil ever claimed? I, I think it was. Yeah, I think, I, I think they had, they had eggs. I don't think they were on top of the floodlights, but they were certainly on the outfield. And uh, yeah, I'm sure it was. What the prize was. 
Uh, as in comes Hudson Prentice, bowls to Scriven, plays into the offside, there is no run. Was it, was it a year's supply of eggs or something, <laughs> presumably? You'd be, you'd be sick of eggs by the end of Chickens, maybe, maybe. <laughs> the producers thereof. Chocolate eggs. Who knows? Well, that would be nice. That would be nice. Um, my emails seem to have disappeared, which is not very helpful. JR9 says they had to take the floodlights down. In comes uh, Hudson Prentice bowls and Scriven plays. Ball of good. I think he's done well here, Finn Hudson Prentice, in his 20th over. Figures of two for 48, including five maidens. I think he's, he's bowled really well. He has. He, he looks a, a tad weary. Yeah. Understandably. Yes, and I, and I think they were saying there's a little bit more grass on the outfield, so it's probably quite, you know, it's, it's hard work. You can see, as you were saying, the, the footmarks here at the uh, the pavilion end. I'm assuming it's probably the same at the, the Bennett end. Hudson Prentice in again, bowl Scriven's drive down the ground. Good bit of fielding by Pajara, who's very smartly round at middle to field. And there is no run. That was a nice sound, wasn't it? Yeah. A mellow sound off the bat of Tom Scriven. I don't know about Scott Curry or Matt Salisbury's batting prowess. Uh, they're both competent. Right, there we go. So Curry was promoted um, up the order at, at Headingley. Sussex with more work to do. Hudson Prentice in again, pull, pulled away and caught. Oh. And he rather gives his wicket away, does Tom Scriven. It's a third wicket for Finn Hudson Prentice. A catch at mid wicket by Tom Haynes. And the third and the um, eighth wicket goes down. And Tom Scriven had batting very nicely, has rather given that away. It was a short delivery by Hudson Prentice, and he pulled it straight to mid wicket. And he'll be disappointed about that with just three and a half overs left in the day. Yep. He played so nicely, so full of confidence after his innings at Headingley, I suspect. And he's shaking his head in disbelief as he comes off. 15 off uh, 18 balls for Scriven. And he looked, that's the first mistake he's made and he'll be bitterly disappointed. And Travask is now in danger of running out of partners. Um, and that would be a bitter disappointment for him to be not out sort of in the 80s or something like that 321 for eight though yeah interesting as well isn't it that, you know um nick Halson was saying from the cricketer magazine when he was in here on commentary was saying that uh you know he felt that leicestershire had lo lost wickets throughout the day perhaps slightly unnecessarily or, i'm not saying getting themselves out but kind of almost you know not good bowling necessarily um and that's a that's another example uh, Scriven is gone, fine young cricketer, he's uh, gone back another day, but he's out for 15. And Finn Hudson Prentice, who I think has been the pick of the Sussex bowling by some distance, actually gets his reward for a very long and hard day's work. Three for 48 of his 19 overs. Um, and if Sussex could just wheedle these next two out before the close of play, they'll feel that it's not been a bad day. I still think it's been Leicestershire's day. What can Hudson Prentice do? He comes into bowl to Scott Curry, who is forward and plays uh, to mid off, and there is no run. Uh, three slips in place now. Yeah, one or two comments. Uh, is Robbo injured? Says Robert Leahy. Not <laughs> allowed to play, says Matt Norman. Well, he is allowed to play, actually. Matt. He, yes, he is but allowed to play. Sussex have chosen, or he has chosen, yeah. to not play in this game. He was allowed to play five of the first seven. I think that was the correct. Yep, that's the what the, that's what the ECB have decreed. In comes Hudson Prentice bowls to Curry, who jacks this down in front of him and picks up a single, playing the ball into the covers. He picks up a single. End of Hudson Prentice's over. Yes, it is. Three twenty-two for eight. Curry will pinch the strike. Hudson Prentice. Very impressive figures. Uh, 20 overs, 5 maidens, 3 for 49. No, that's exactly the case. I, I must admit, I thought that Ollie would probably play here only because he needs to play cricket and he needs to take wickets if he's going to force himself back into the England reckoning. And Sussex do have the fourth route, the fourth week off. So here this week, Hove next week against Gloucester, mm -hmm. then a week off. So I, I, I thought... You know, but he hasn't played much cricket. He bowled 30 odd overs last week. So maybe Sussex are just being careful and thinking... Mm -hmm. You know, he'll play next week at Hove against Gloucestershire. Um, but, you know, the Sussex attack looks a different attack when Ollie Robinson is in there, uh, Richard. And uh, with all due respect to everybody else, you know, he's a, you know, he's a test match bowler. 
But um, no, Su it was Sussex's decision, not for him not to play. Or, or, you know, who knows? Maybe there was a slight niggle or something. But Sussex were just saying he can only play five of seven, and that's why he's not playing. Tom Clark back into the attack. In he comes from the pavilion end. Bowls to Curry, who is forward. He's going to pick up a run. Should get there as it's steered through a gully. Backward point runs across and fields. Gets to the ball, gets his throw away. But Carson misses the stumps. And I think, anyway, just... Travaskis had, had made his ground. I was just thinking for a minute there. Travaskis stopped it as he ran through the crease and just adjusted something. I thought for a minute he might just have done a muscle a little bit, but mm. no, he was just uh, checking his pads. He's fine. So Curry on to two. This Curry's just his uh, sixth first class game. 63 runs to his name. Now in goes Clark, bowls to Travaskis who is rather elegant in defence as he stood up to that one as it was in towards off middle, off middle and off even, played out towards mid-wicket, no run. But, um, well, if you are Liam Travaskis, I mean he won't know an awful lot about his teammates, I mean he's 21 short of 100, well if he thinks to himself I might just go chasing the bowling here, or he's really playing for his team at the moment. Clark bowls, he drives down into the ground, it bounces up into the air for a while before being stopped at mid-off by Pujara. He will have seen Messrs Curry and Salisbury get solidly into line hmm. at uh, Headingley. Salisbury was not, not out at the end but he faced uh, plenty of deliveries and didn't look like being beaten actually. As in goes Clark, bowls outside off stump. Travaskis lifts his bat over the line of the ball. So I think he'll probably keep playing the same way up. Maybe when down to the last man he might throw the bat a little bit. But I would imagine that while Curry is still there he'll, he'll try and play the same way. Seals comes in from the point boundary as in goes Clark and Bowles, good line. A little bit of in, in swing was there? No, not really, but it was a decent line to the left hander who blocked it out back down the pitch. One ball to go in the 94th over, so 2.1 overs to go today. We'll finish about 25 past. I don't think it was Sussex we were playing at the beginning of last season as Clark goes in. And bowls a little bit short on the legs, and so Travaskis can turn it comfortably down through the vacant square leg area and jog one and keep the strike, which will probably annoy Finn Hudson Prentice slightly. Travaskis on to 83, 2 4 for 8. Um, at the beginning of April, and we were still here at 7, and the sun had sunk so far it actually dropped behind those trees and it kind of went dark so I had to stop Wow! Uh, because the sun had set basically it was too low in the sky but uh, much much higher now 12th of April yeah well we've had a full day's play we're going to get whether we'll be playing without the floodlights is, is, is a moot point <laughs> it's hard to tell isn't it it is hard to tell I mean I, don't, you know, I mean club cricket yes oh definitely oh yeah yeah There'd be lots of cries that get on with it if they weren't playing. In comes Hudson Prentice over the wicket bowls to Travaskis, who nudges that one down to uh, third man area. A rather weary looking Ari Cavalos comes into field. One more to the total. He's, he's not worried about taking the single, is he, Liam Travaskis? He's obviously got a lot of faith in Scott Curry. Curry has uh, clearly got some ability with the bat. Yeah, but he's certainly got faith in him, so uh, three slips in place. This is would dearly love another wicket here. Curry waits. Tall man. Hudson Prent is in bowls. Curry lets that one go through to John Simpson. And there is no run. Thoroughly enjoyable day. It's been a game that's a day that's ebbed and flow, but I, I I still maintain if you you know, if you're sixty three for three, then you look at the scoreboard at the end of the day and you're three twenty five, if you're three twenty five all out. I think you'll probably think you've had a decent day, but 3.25 for 8, and you've got someone in on 81, I, I, I very much think it's been, not not by a country mile, but I think it's been Leicestershire's day. 
Had some practice in bowls. Oh, Curry rather stepped out of the way of that. That was a strange shot, wasn't he? He sort of bent at the knees and just let the ball go. That was a strange. Whether he thought it was going to come back in, it didn't really. But yes, that did look a little bit jumpy, didn't it? Yes. Hudson Prentice in a game. Bowles Curry is forward right in behind that plays into the offside. There is no run. Finn Hudson Prentice will be looking to put his feet up tonight, I'm sure. Don't know if any of the guys are golfers, a lot of them are, aren't they? So the, the Masters will be on. That, that's always late nights when the Masters is on. But they'll all want to watch Leicester City, I would imagine. Yeah, <laughs> playing at Plymouth tonight. Well, they might be. I mean, you know, considering where we've—I don't know what. I mean, I know Finn Hudson Prentice, for example, is a Liverpool fan, so he's probably feeling a bit sore after their result last night. It should be. <laughs> In he comes, bowls and curry up on his toes, steers that to mid on, and it's another dot ball. Uh, I'm not sure who all their teams are. Um, Tom Haynes is a big Tottenham fan. Shouldn't they all be supporting Brighton? Well, they should be really. Um, Hove Albion. Yeah. I'm not sure whether Cheteshwa has a, a football team. I'm not sure what Tom Clark is or Tom Alsop, actually. Or James Coles, I need to ask them. In comes Adam Prentice. Bowls, Curry again, lets that one go outside the off stump. That is the end of the over, the end of the penultimate over, 3.25 for 8. Travaskis is on 81, he's faced 194 balls. Scott Curry is on 2. One over to go in the day, and it's going to be bowled by Tom Clark. work it out really in, in terms of the balance of the day I guess it when you put in 325 is is a decent effort yeah you know, I think they're going to need it if they get past 350 then it'll be a, a really good show on the part of the Foxes Clark is in bowls to Travaskis and he goes past the outside edge he sort of plunges forward as he mm. did once or twice early in his innings it just holds its line a little bit pushed across him rather and he looks quizzically back down the pitch, Liam Travaskis, as it, as though it's the pitch's fault. But again, the ball is just 15 overs old, so it does do a little bit. Clark in again, Travaskis right in the middle of his bat on that occasion. Yeah, I think it's been a really good effort by by Leicestershire. What has there been? Uh, three half century partnerships of 49 and a 43 I mean there's been contributions down the order the skipper out for a duck but uh, I still maintain I think 63 for three you take 325 for eight <laughs> Neil Hartley thinks as in goes Clark and Bowles outside off stump left by Travaskis P perhaps Ollie Robinson thinks so actually I'll I won't bowl with the kookaburra again. <laughs> I'll wait till the tube's well, available. Well, that's a, that's a, fair, a, fair that's a very actually. funny point, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the other point here, isn't it? That the Leicestershire have chewed up 16 overs of this kookaburra ball. And Sussex already into the change bowlers. Clark in bowls. Chavaskis, oh, Ooh, just comes back a bit. Did, did it come off the thigh pad, the back thigh pad, it's running down towards the man, I don't think it was off the bat, let's see if there's a signal from the umpire there well, isn't was. a signal from the umpire, I'll have a look at the replay on that one, how that managed to squeeze where it did, whether it was sort of inside edge onto pad and shot through just wide of the slips down towards third man, so Travaskis picks up a somewhat fortuitous single, let's have a look what happened there yeah, I think it was a bit of inside edge and pad. It went wide of second slip along the ground. It wasn't a chance. Clark is in to Curry, who's forward, thick outside edge along the ground. Manages to put his back back down quickly in the crease. Really smart work there at, uh, at third slip. Mm. This picks up the ball, hurls it at the stumps, hits them. But Curry was aware. Who is that at? In the gully or um, third slip. At uh, third slip, it, I think standing that's fairly oh, close. I think that's Tom Haynes in there. I think there. it's, yeah. I knew you'd see him in there. Unless he's at mid wicket. 
In goes Clark and Bowles couriers forward, blocking the delivery out to mid on. And ladies and gentlemen, we are done for the day. Leicestershire close in their first innings on 326 for eight. A really good, hard fought day of county championship cricket. Three half centurions for Leicestershire. Rishi Patel, a very fluent 87. Peter Hanscom, a very hard working 50. What did he get in there? 51, 51. in the end. Yeah. Uh, and a few other scores. Ben Cox, 28. Ben Mike, 22. Marcus Harris, 24. So three 20s, and they'll all have been disappointed not to go on. The man who did go on, Liam Trevaskis, on debut for the Foxes, finishes 82 not out. His first class best is 88. So tomorrow could be a very big day in the first class career of Liam Trevaskis. If you want to hear how it goes, do please join Adrian Harms of BBC Radio Sussex and myself, Richard Ray of BBC Radio Leicester. We'll be here bright and early, quarter to 11 tomorrow, full commentary as ever on every ball bowled in county cricket from BBC Sport. But for now, from actually a slightly gloomy Grace Road now, the floodlights have gone off. I think we can say we definitely wouldn't have been playing without them. It's a very good evening to you all.